welcome to Serving Quarter. It's lovely to have you here with us this morning and we've got a great show lined up for you. So as you can see, we're tools, tips and techniques this morning. So we're covering all sorts of time-saving gadgets as well as some great fabrics and some different techniques for raw edge applique and also for some silk painting. So I'll talk you through what's coming up on today's show. And at eight o'clock, we have got time-saving gadgets. So we've got an absolutely incredible needle threader. We've got Irene Colesby here who's going to talk us through how to use that. I'm really excited to share that with you in a sec. Then at nine o'clock, we have got silk painting, which is with Tilly Rose. So some gorgeous scarves in that hour. At 10 o'clock, we have got bundles of fun. So we've got some premier fabrics, some launches of some fabrics, and also looking at that needle threader again, um, just to show you exactly what it does. And at 11 o'clock, we have got raw edge applique again with Tilly. So we're looking at some Amy Butler fabrics and some different fat quarters and design rolls and how you can apply that to some of your projects. So, a really exciting morning lined up. I can't wait to get over and introduce you to Irene. We haven't had her on the show before, so you're in for a treat. Let's go straight over and say hello. Good morning, Irene. Good morning. Hello. How are you? I'm well. I, you're thank all good. You. I am. Great. Thank you, I am. Well, we have got a magic tool here with us this morning. We're all really excited in the office when Irene got this out of her bag. So, let me get this right. This is the Infila. It needle is the Infila needle threader from Italy. So, it's, it's an Italian um, piece of kit. Yes. Designed from 1952, in fact. So it's a really, yeah. you know, it's a very... How long have you been working with I've it? I've done it for 20 years, in fact, yeah. So you believe in the product, you might say. I'd like to say so, yeah. <laughs> So this here, if you haven't seen this before, a lot of people might have seen I mean, a lot of the exhibitions and you know, you, you draw a crowd, don't you? At the sewing shows, yeah. That's mainly where we, where we show it, yeah. And that's where we spotted Irene. We've got Irene today to show you um, this little gadget. So basically, talk, talk to me a bit about how you, how you got involved with this and how you started using it. Well, I was working at exhibitions selling wine accessories of all things <laughs> and uh, corkscrews and bottle openers and all kinds of things. And I just saw, saw a lot of sewing products and happened to find this from Italy. And, uh, and here we are. Went, well, my husband's Italian, so that, um, helps. that, that, that helps. And uh, we imported, started to import it. And so here we are, 20 years on, and you know, it's gone so quickly. This is your baby then. So this is your 20 year old baby. <laughs> yeah, Irene's been been so good. We've got yeah. this taking it all around here, there, and everywhere. Um, so, well, let's just, let's crack straight on and show me how we use Please. it, what we do with it. So this is, let's just hold it up here so we can see. Just come, that's it. So if you can just see here, um, it's a really, you know, easy to, to transport around. It comes like this actually, in this little, um, so it folds down. So it's really easy to just pop into your sewing kit. But this is the one here that, um, that we're going to use this morning with Irene. She's going to show you the, it really is like magic, the, the tricks of the trade. If you're, you know, if your eyesight is going slightly or, you know, it just is a much quicker, way of threading a needle rather than all of that. It is, it certainly is, because we don't know, well certainly of a certain age, we don't know which direction we're putting the needle in, because we can't see the eye. No. <laughs> so we like to think that the tool finds it, and usually first time. And just, well, we were all so excited about this this morning, not only saving you time, but also just, it is, it is a fiddly job, you know, regardless of what your eyesight's like, it is, sometimes it does just take a while to get the thread to go through the eye, doesn't it? certainly does. I okay. did. It did, it did, not anymore. <laughs> so come on then, let's show us, show us how it's done. So look, it's actually just a spring-loaded uh, metal bar there yeah. with, with a white cap, that's for the smaller needles, and then similarly at the, at, oh, beg your pardon, from the base, um, the bottom one is for large needles, that's with the black cap. So you've got two size options, yeah. depending on what you're threading. Exactly. Yeah. Great. So health and safety, line the thread there first. <laughs> Needle, as I said, we don't know which way we're putting it in. And then as we slide the button, it actually nudges the needle and turns it around yep. and finds the eye. But at this stage, don't take the needle. It, it, it's left a little loop there, so you need to pull that through and only then do you take the needle. And let's just, we missed the magic. There it is, that's just gone straight through. We'll show you that again, just in case you missed that. But you literally lay the thread across you, you know, you press the, um, the metal through the eye of the needle exactly. and it just pops out the other side. Should we do that again with another? Let's just take that out so you can... Would you like to show us? Yeah, certainly. It's not necessary to put the needle, the thread first, you certainly can put the needle, but... Needle in, slide and release, pull the thread and take the needle. 
So what's actually happening when you do that is that the, the needle turns slightly. Yeah, to... it's turning it. You, you can actually see, because uh, I, I can't see which way I'm putting the needle in, but you can, <laughs> <laughs> I can't see much, to be honest. Um, you, you, one can see the needle moving. You so see? it's finding so it's, that. Yeah, it's turning it around to find the eye. So just show us once more. Yeah, just should we do case, something yeah. a tiny bit different? We'll do double let's, thread let's this time. Let's try have a go. Please. So when you pop it through, you put one side slightly I shorter. I leave one side shorter. Just like that. Yeah. Then you, you just would drop your needle in like this. So either way around, thread then needle exactly. or needle in thread. Exactly. And then just one thing like that. Pull the loop. Da -da -da. And take the needle. Ta-da! And then you've obviously held Pinch on the to thread, the, yeah. That's the one. Perfect. So in terms of different sizes of needles, and talk to us a bit about that. Virtually any needle. Uh, the limitations are down to a size 12 beading needle, which is very, Tiny, very, fine, very, yeah. very fine. That's for the jewellery making. And any large needle uh, darning, and it will not do a huge bodkin. It has to phys physically fit inside the, yeah, of course. Uh, the tool. Let's just show, so you can see here, this is just where the needle just drops into this tiny um, compartment there. And so, um, as I was saying, there's two sizes. So you, you drop your small needles into this white end or your slightly larger ones, you know, if you're, if you're using a wool or even a small ribbon um, into this thicker end here. And as it comes across, you can just see, let me move my finger, you can just see here, that's where that's going to push through the eye of the needle. But just show us, a, so we've got some different, um, you know, some need, different needle options and thread options for Certainly, you to show us. Yeah. Let's just show the double thread. Yes. Um, and for double thread, you don't actually need to, to lie it there double. It's a case of having the centre of the thread there. In other words, equal length on either side. Yeah. yeah. Again, same thing. It, incidentally, it always puts a loop through because that, that's how it works. <laughs> but because we've got equal length at either side, this time if we just pull the loop a little way, then we've got ourselves double thread. And the ladies who do cross stitch... <laughs> it's just it's yeah. so easy. Yeah. The okay. ladies who do cross stitch, they actually go through that loop to start, so they never use a knot. Oh, okay. So you're literally so ready to start neat. to, to yeah, start ready straight to go. on with your yeah. cross stitch. Just show us that one more time yeah. then with the double. So rather than if you're doing one, you have one shorter end that you drop over. If you're doing for double threading, you would do equal lengths equal on either length. side. Equal length. Yeah, please. That's it. Great. So we just pop that in. You said we go through once. Then we're just going to pull that a little way and a little stop. Way, and then you just pull it out. And look at that, double threaded, ready to go. <laughs> I just can't believe how simple it is. So also this morning you were saying, what, when the needle's in there, you have to check that it's, to check that it's gone through, there's a way of just... There is a way of, you don't have to, but no, it's, if you it, want it's to. very occasionally it'll miss, because uh, nothing is infallible. So if I, if I may just show you that. Of course. As that loop comes through, it doesn't necessarily mean it's gone through the eye. It has around 90% it's done it. But by holding that bar across, if the needle doesn't come up, then that means that the bar is engaged. So only then you release the button. And that is 100% threaded. But then it's gone. But each and other. But as you say, we've, it, we've yeah. not had one miss this morning. And not we've been doing it in the office. So. <laughs> not, not yet. And then um, different materials. Yeah, absolutely. So ladies tend to, or some ladies, I should say, use a lot of this metallic thread. And it, it is very, very difficult to thread. And of course, the end becomes raggy. So what I do with this, because it's springy, I tend to lie it there double. OK. Not necessary, but good idea. <laughs> and I hold that there so that it doesn't actually go back inside the tool because it's so springy. Pulling that through, and that would be double thread. Of course, if you wanted it single, you just keep, you then just, just keep pull leaving. one end. And that's that. Ta-da! Yeah. <laughs> For that, for that really springy, you can just see that here with that metallic thread. We were saying because it's got that sort of bouncy, springy feel to it, it is slightly harder to, to, to put through. Exactly. But you can see there that's just gone straight through. And with that one, we, you lay it over double and then you can either push it through, you know, as a single thread exactly. or if you wanted to keep it as a double thread, then you've got that option. And also, so what's, what's the purpose of this underneath? Obviously, you're using this main section. This is the body of the tool yeah. itself. It's actually, it's a, a means to um, support the tool so that when the thread hangs down better, I think, more than anything. But the main thing is that it stores in on itself. You fold it away and that's an integral needle case in there. Oh, let's just show that So there. you can store your needles inside. Great, so you can just pop your needles in there if you wanted to and just pop that little stopper on the end. There we are. But really, like you were saying, it's about just creating that drape. Um, let's just pull that out. Sorry, do you want here. to put it? Here, that's why. <laughs> 
Ari knows what she's doing. Um, once you've put, popped that in the top there, you've got that drape there for it to hang down. Yeah. Great, I've just popped that in the wrong way, haven't I? It's fine. Lovely. Okay, <laughs> so then we've got some other different um, threads that we can try it with. Yeah, I have the um, invisible thread. Okay. Should I is that okay yeah, to use no, it like no, that? No. It's a little bit lopsided. Oh, yeah. And we've both got hand works. cream on, haven't we? <laughs> <laughs> Let's just use this one. Do you want to use this one? Yeah. So, as well, you've got all your instructions so, in yeah, there. There as are well. full instructions, step by step instructions, literally five easy steps. So, if, you've, if you're not sure, you've got all those instructions there too. Exactly. But so, that, in fact, look, that just sits in the groove, which is oh, not, ob which is not obvious, but there we are. It is when you know. Now, can we find the invisible thread? I did. <laughs> this was the metallic one. That's there's the, the invisible, invisible one. Oh, yeah. Very invisible. Again, springy and jumpy. So I always lie there double any old needle. In That's there. a tiny needle. It is well. a tiny, yeah, and a very tiny eye. I'm kind of guiding that. And please tell me if yep, this thread is it there? It's through. So you can see invisible thread. <laughs> Eating my carrots. Oh, I love it. I really am having difficulty seeing it, but the main thing is That's that no, the tool has actually threaded it, yep. except I've got it caught in that little um, cap there, which gives me the opportunity <laughs> to talk about that cap. So yes. can we do that yeah, now? I can. mean, that wasn't meant to happen, but that's what happens when you do things live. Now, we, all we've talked about is actually a fresh piece of thread. Yes, right? so you're starting it's something. Starting with sewing. So the only little problem used to be that when you're in the middle of sewing and it comes unthreaded from the needle, it wasn't possible to thread that needle because for obvious reasons it's attached to the work yeah and then one clever customer showed us that by taking that cap off I must get rid of this invisible thread, invisible thread. so Your needle's thank just you there. that's with my glasses down exactly as we did before sliding pulling but then that's attached to the work yes However, when the cap's off, you're able to pull the two threads. I tend to hold the needle and the thread together. And it's re-threaded, it's threaded. attached to the yeah. material. So you're actually saying as well that you don't even you have the cap on there. There's not really I've any... thrown it away because, as you've seen, very occasionally with a very fine thread, it gets caught in there. So, so you don't need I, it. I encourage it's... the people to dispose of it, but aesthetically it doesn't look as nice <laughs> without <laughs> yeah, it. True. But it's a functional tool. It's not meant to look... Pretty, you know. And also, so just show us how that works. There's a. It's actually the tool is, me is made in two halves. It's mo obviously injection molding, and then the two halves are put together. Yeah. And there's a seam there, but that seam has not been actually glued, so it's open, and that's where to bring the thread. So just in there, you can see yeah. that tiny little channel, which just well, allows you to pull that thread yeah. through if you're attached to a material. Should we just show that once yeah. more then? So. And that was not a design, that really was a customer who found Figured that out. Figured it out, came yeah. and said, do you know, <laughs> you could did. also do this. <laughs> she did indeed. So everything the same until we get to this part. And that is actually just taking the thread and giving it a tug, but holding the needle so at the same time. So you put it through the top. You're bringing it through the gap. Should we just, uh, should Would I have like a go? Would you like to do that? Yeah, of course. So if your thread was hanging down like that, you pop your needle in. Oh. Attach it the to flesh. your finger. <laughs> Drop that through there. So we just do this as before. Then you pull, pull it that all until the, the end comes through. Yeah. And then you just pull this up all at the same time. Yeah. Or turn the tool on its side. I tend to like do that. Yeah. Perfect. Really simple. So also you've got that solution for re-threading once you're, because when you know quite often it's going to come off the end of your needle if you're in the middle of working. It's not just threading it at the beginning. Exactly. And then, go yeah. on, so I was just going to say, that is not in the instructions because the, the, that's even an the added, added, that is an added bonus. We've figured out over yeah. 20 years of, of selling yeah. something. Thanks to our customer. Perfect. So then this other end, you've got this um, black cap, which is for the bigger needles. Exactly. So this is working with a, is this a larger this needle? A larger. So it's lower down. So it's, a, it's actually a thicker blade and it's lower down inside the tool. So okay. naturally that's for larger needles. Permission to put this of back course. on? <laughs> 
not that we needed back on, having said. So this is only five ninety five, and ZBZI91 is your item number for this. Um, so you're getting your actual, the needle threader itself, it pops just back inside, folds in on itself, so it's really easy to transport and take with you, you know, to sewing classes or to pop in your sewing bag. And um, you've got that little needle holder at the side there, you can just um, pop some needles in. And it comes with full instructions, so you can, um, you know, you've got everything there that you need, step-by-step -step guide of how to get of how to work it, although it's it's very straightforward. It doesn't require I much so. instruction, does no. it really? <laughs> <laughs> Shall we show the largest yes, exercise? Absolutely. So again, thread or So this here. is quite thick. I don't know if you can see that. That's a much thicker thread. Um, let's just pop that I don't even there. know what we call it. I know it comes from India. That's, that's <laughs> all I know. About. Now with this, because it's bulky, I tend to just feed it through rather than just giving it one push. Yep. And then be very firm to pull that through and then take the needle. Oh. Yeah. Just, you have yeah. done this before. <laughs> a, a few times, yeah. <laughs> Similarly with wool, but naturally an appropriate eye needle, you know, size needle. What's the largest needle you could use? Or what, what sort of you there. Most probably a size 22, I should oh, okay. think. Yeah. So there's a fairly large spectrum. Yeah, as long as it, the di diameter, as long as it physically fits in there, it, it'll work, yeah. Right. And wool, again, just be really, really persistent because naturally wool could split. First Usually time, doesn't, straight through. But it could split. So we've done thread, we've done invisible thread, we've done metallic thread, we've done wool, we've done, well, we're not sure what this is called, but it's from India. <laughs> we've done a slightly thicker one. So you've got all these different um, thickness options that are going through your needle straight away, first time. And even with double threading as well, if you wanted to do that. Indeed. Or multiple threads, if you Show us care multiple to. threads. Let's show double Do threads to start with, um, in case anybody missed that, and then we'll... Um, any particular colour? Any colour, <laughs> you choose. <laughs> oh, that's a tiny bit bigger than I normally use. But it's so again, that's the double thread. It would naturally be a longer piece, but that's equal length at either side, and then yep. just pull that a little way. Double thread. Double thread. Straight through. It's just one action. There's no, you don't have to, you know, worry about putting the needle in the right place or no. putting it in. You just drop mm. it in, Fine, swipe yeah. it across, and it's and it's through. So there's multiple threads as well. Multiple if threads, that's not indeed. <laughs> Assuming, <laughs> but I, I, we mustn't joke about that because a lot of ladies do, when, when they're doing their embroidery, yes, they do several strands. So they need to split the skein. So I'm putting there. You've well, got an invisible I one. Think do you want I, a different one? Well, I'll leave it there for, yeah. for fun. <laughs> Give it a try. It wasn't meant, <laughs> wasn't meant to be them. Now, naturally, you would use a longer eye. The ladies who do embroidery, they have a considerably longer eye than that. But we're going to just we're gonna go for a challenge. Show off, aren't we? <laughs> now, usually only one will come through first of all, but we'll see. It needs to turn the needle around first of all. So just give it a push. That's it. How We've many have I got there? Green got... and yellow. Oh, guess. Oh, no, two. Oh, no, and oh, the look, invisible. and the yellow All way. All three in one go. Sheer fluke. <laughs> <laughs> no, but... So we'll do that again and see and if, if only one... And if it didn't all go through, exactly. you can, just, you can just pop, it, pop it across again exactly. until they, they've all yeah. gone through. So let's try to get one. Oh, I'm sorry. There's two. It's just going to keep working. That did green and That's yellow. Very, right, is that just one? That's invisible there, right. yeah. Well, he, Should I pull that one That would through? help me greatly. All the way through. So that's... The invisible. Yeah. Now, at this stage, it is important just to realign the thread because there's no point in hitting it again in the same position it's that it's just missed. Before, of course. So we do it again. Yeah. And have we got green? Green, please. Let's hope the yellow doesn't come as oh, well. Let's just hold that there. That's it. Right. Green and then re and then realign your thread again. And then your yellow. And there comes the yellow. Incidentally, I didn't mention that if you would like to check that it's 100% threaded, you, we can hold that bar across. Yeah. And if the needle doesn't come up, then that means that the bar is engaged through, through the, the, yeah, the eye of the needle. Exactly. So now I know it's definitely, definitely <laughs> threaded. And you're ready and to go. Yeah, and that's three strands in that tiny little eye. That's just incredible. You can see that there, you've got all of those threads have just gone through. Just three simple pushes through. Sometimes they'll all go through at once, two might go through at once, but just, you know, one time for each of those threads. So we've had a couple of messages in. Um, morning, Amy and Irene. Margaret here from Leeds. Morning, Margaret. Um, Irene, let's have a look. Um, 
Needle Threader is a godsend. I love it. So she's already got it and she's a fan. That should be good. Thank so you. <laughs> One customer out there somewhere. So, you know, but you have a lot of people that, you know, have used these for years. Yes, and they tend to come back to the same clientele, come back to the exhibition year on year. And usually they will be in a position to recommend it to other people. And they'll even stand at the back of the, of the um, viewing audience and, uh, and, and recommend it, which is really very, very satisfying. And must yeah, just didn't, well, yeah. as well, you're not you're selling something that works. Yeah. You know, it does have a functionality. It does every single time we've put that through this morning. It's threaded the yeah. needle, and it's taking out that you know if, if that fiddliness and all of that intricate. Exactly. You know, and we've had lots of people buying this this morning. So um, if you've got one this morning, great. Oh, I've just lost it off my screen. Here we've got. So we've got um, Lynn from Devon. Good morning, Sally, Denise, Ruth, Patricia. Patricia's bought two. Maybe she's got one for a friend. Um, Chris, Christine, Sue. Oh, we've got a whole list of names. I could go on and on, but. Lots of people loving this this morning, um, and rightly so, as we were, you know, we were all really excited when you came in with this. Oh, Irene actually has given me one for my nan, so if you're watching, morning, we've got a needle thread <laughs> for me to bring home for you to use. Yeah. So let's just show some of those. Well, did you want to show? Well, I was going to show when I said that most people will recommend it, and obviously we have many customers over 20-something years, but occasionally people will say either it doesn't work or they can't get them to they can't get it to work so i'd love to show you what it is that they're doing wrong okay if of I may. Course. yeah so thread there needle as we said <laughs> again and again slide the button let it go but many people have forgotten about that loop and they're very tempted to take the needle and they wonder why it hasn't worked ah so then we tend to give them an in-house um training session then <laughs> and we get them to do it there and then yeah. and then they usually penny they, drops they, yeah. and then you yeah so it's never ever to take that needle until we you physically pull the, pull the loop through so it's two simple stages really well three lay your thread lay your needle and then you push it across and pull the loop through. Yeah, exactly. So pull, <laughs> pull the loop through. I said through five the, earlier didn't I? <laughs> through the um yeah. through Four. the eye and then exactly. you, and then you're done yeah. you're ready to go so if you missed that before as well, we were doing double threading, we were doing multiple threads. Um, should we just show two threads again, how you did oh, that? Oh, yes. Which colour would you like let's this time? Let's go for... I don't mind. Oh, let's have pink, shall we? Total genius. <laughs> Diana's just messaged in this morning. Thanks, Diana. I would have to agree. I think, no. it's, um, I think it's a really, you know, handy tool. And at a really affordable price point as well, you know, it's just a great thing to add to your kit. Again, only one's come through, so we're pulling that one. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's my eyesight. But anyhow, they're both there. But if one only did come through, just move the thread. And do it again. And do it again. Let's just do that once more in case we missed it. So Sorry. we just do, no, that's fine. I'm just going to pop those back through. Just all these little, you know, these tiny, this needle is absolutely, I can't even lift it up off the mat. Oh, I've, oh, I have a it. little magnet here if you, oh, you manage. <laughs> oh my, no, just, I mean, no, that's the only way because <laughs> otherwise I can't see the needle. No, thank you. Look how tiny this is. That's you know, absolutely minute, that tiny eye there. To try and thread that through, you know, just by, by sight would be so tricky. That's a really fine needle and a fine eye there. And that's the one that we're using this morning as we just pop that in. And we were doing two threads. So let's just do this, um, the pink one there. So we're laying that across. And with double thread, you always do it even either side. Yes. That was the, how have I twisted that there? So would you do it like that? Yeah. Just yes, like that? Yes, indeed. So as you were saying, the box there just giving you that drape to check, I suppose, if you, that you've got... It's true, and it just makes... It, it, I tend to do it in the air rather than on the surface, and it makes the thread hang. hang. It gives the weight to hang down. For it yeah. to go through. So then we're just popping that through there, and you can see there the pink ones come through. So we just pull that all the way through? Until one end comes through, unless Until we want a double, of course. So we just I think pull we want that single, end. yeah. Let's just pull that. I ought to have said leave one side short, but I didn't. So that's okay, the, that's the one. one, and then just and then realign we just the realign thread. those threads there, so the blue there. And, and again, we'll if it wouldn't come through, yeah, usually will come now, but if yep, it didn't, the blue. we would just do it again. And then again, you would just pull one end. Let's have a look. Da, 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 da. That's it. So then we just take our needle out. Exactly. Like this. Double threaded. And, and that's that cap again that you yeah. said just get rid of. I you would take this, of Just it. take that off. So once you've got that off, then you've got your double yeah. thread there. That's double thread, yeah. And then your other end, for thicker threads, let's have a look at then, that, that again what then. What shall we have? Wool again. Would it, is it best to just take this off then? How would we do? Dig your nails. Like, we both put hand cream on just before we came on air, which is a really silly thing to do. Dig you your nails. Oh, that's yeah. it. That's and fine. You just pull it off. 
and you really do not need that no so we can just put it to the side so the large needle this time we can see which direction we're putting the needle in so why not put it in the right way yeah you can for devilment put it the other way and it will knock it but I think it makes sense to put it in the correct direction. Now there, look, I haven't caught all of the wool or it hasn't caught all of the wool. So I'm moving it and I do it again until I feel confident to... Give it a firm it tuck. Really, really. Yeah, and, you know, be brutal, really. Look at that, straight through. So again, if when we were... Um, we said earlier, if you're, thread, if you're sewing as well on your fabric or you're doing something already mm -hmm. and your needle comes unthreaded, you can also work with it with your fabric. Could you do that again with your thicker? I never have. First of all, because it, you would tend that tends not to come unthreaded because it's because got more friction, yeah. But in any event, I can take it off. But I'd be a little bit concerned that that could Channel. burst the tool, okay. really. But if it did, we would replace it, obviously. Yeah. But um, I, I, that hasn't happened in all the years that I've done it. No one's had a need say, to those, do it. Those thicker but tend not to come unthreaded. Great. So then there was another one as well. We had this um, this slightly thicker. Thread. Should we do yep. that one too? Oh, it's oh, already it's threaded. It's all a bit We've funny. threaded so many needles in about 10 minutes. It's just uh, easy peasy. Did you want another needle? I, I brought you a special needle. Oh, okay. <laughs> These are actually apparently for putting uh, eyes in teddy bears. Oh, is that specifically what they're for? But right now, yeah. They're... And look at that. Let's just look at that tiny eye there. Considering the thickness of the um, thread. So if we just pop that in, you said we'd pop it in that way. Yep. Are you going to do it? Okay. Yeah. You just push Again, but give it a couple of hits because it, like, there we are, I think that's And fine. then you just give it a firm tug through. And if you wanted that double, you could stop, you could but you, stop, I don't think you would you want could that just double. Pull it through like that. Yes. Oh. oh, and it missed. Oh, I'm dearie, dearie. <laughs> that's the first time that's done that all morning. Let me just let's do that again do to prove it, again. it doesn't and happen. And let's check it this time. Do you, then. Want, do you want to do no, it? No, no, it's fine. Okay. okay. Just let's lay that down. Right, now this time. Can I suggest that we hold that across? Yeah. And if the needle doesn't come up, it's oh, gone. look, it's missed it again. I'm sorry. So let's put that in the right way because, okay. but, as I said, we can see that one, you see. So if you put that perpendicular to the bar, because the little bar is really not quite strong enough to turn that needle around. Okay. So Because it's a big needle as yeah. well. Yeah. So if I put that in the right way, and this is now your third attempt. <laughs> okay. Oh, let's just throw it. And that needle. happens to me occasionally when I'm, no tension on the thread, incidentally. Right now, hold that bar across. Check that it's... Check that the needle's engaged and we know we're done. So okay. then release the button. Then we can that pull through. that through. Do, 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 do. And then we just pull that out like that. Look at that. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Third just attempt. like magic. <laughs> So we've got some messages just for Irene this morning. Let's have a look here. We've got this. Let's have a look. Da, da, da. Thanks for direct demonstrating this. Have seen these but could never work out how it actually works. Great gadget now on my to-get list. So that's from Carol. Morning, Carol. Um, yeah, absolutely. Add it to your add it to your to-get list. And also you can see um, on the live feed of today's show on the website, everything we've gone through in this hour will be just listed under there. Um, have we got another comment? Let's have a look. It's just, oh, well, that one's not come up on the iPad yet. Here it is. So, um, Evelyn, morning. Um, thank you so much for the tip on re-threading when thread is attached to material. So perhaps if you know you didn't know that your tool could even do that. Exactly. The, if, it's, if your thread is already, you know, up in the middle of a project and it comes unthreaded, you can use the threader there again. And then we've got Marcia as well. Good morning, ladies. What a fantastic demonstration. I've been using other brands, but I will try this one. Perfect. Well, I'm glad you glad you approve. Thank you this so is, much, Irene. Indeed. It's, it's Thank been you. wonderful and genuinely really love the product. Um, and you're back on at 10 o'clock. Show us again yes. another I'll demo of what we can do with our um, great Enfila, our Italian <laughs> um, needle threader. So um, I'm just going to head over and look at some other things we've got coming up in this hour, but we'll see you back Thank at you 10. Thank you very much. You can stay here and let me get I, you a I, cup of tea. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's Sounds good. good. We'll see you in a second. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Thank you, Irene. So, as I said, this morning is all about, we've got different tools, tips, gadgets, all different things. So we've got some different um, things to show you just coming up in the next half an hour. Um, the, you know, you might not have seen before, um, little tools that, and, and tricks to make things slightly easier. So we're going to start with this, which is really popular when this is on the show. So this is a Mary Ellen Best Press Spray. So this is um, a starch spray, it's scent free. You can see that there, it's just really great for adding that crisp, nice finish to white shirts or to, to any of your ironing. And this bottle here as well, because it's not an aerosol, so you've got that, it's really environmentally friendly. You can also see how much you've got inside there. So rather than, you know, not knowing what's in the can, you can 
really easily see when you're coming to the end of your bottle. So when we bring this on, this is always really popular. Um, it's just a, it is a really popular spray. And it's one that we would use on the show. And um, it's also used for, um, for quilting and quilters. You go actually recommend using this particular spray. So this is 170 milliliters. This one is 495 and your item number is NDEQ38. And it's just a nice um, pump spray there on the top. So really easy to use and no strong smells. And um, you know, just a nice scent free, um, easy to use spray. Now we've also got these, which I love. And Irene this morning when we got these out was saying, oh, I use these, they're great for splinters. So this here is a pair of tweezers, but it's got a magnifying glass attached. So again, much like with that needle threader, if you're struggling um, you know, with your eyesight, perhaps to see things more clearly, you can see there that you've got that magnifying glass over the tip of the tweezers. So if I just undo that at the back, as you can see, if you look from above, so if I try and do it this way round, you can see if you were taking something, it's just magnifying what's behind. So as Irene said, you could use that for a splinter if you've got something in your finger, but also if you're, um, you know, if you're trying to pick up really intricate and fiddly little uh, beads or uh, notions and embellishments off of your table, you can just see, it, it's probably better if I pop it in front of something, that it's magnifying that through the glass. It's a four times magnifying lens there um, with those lovely sharp tweezers underneath. So again, just great for those small fiddly little things. And these are the prim tweezers. So these are 545. JRPH67 is your item number for that one. I feel like it would be better if I could show you how, um, if we, I'll take them over so I, can, so I can show you something being picked up with it, just so you get to see how that magnifying glass actually works, rather than me trying to show you on the palm of my hand. That's not very helpful, is it? So let's have a look. Let's see what we've got here that I might be able to. We're not gonna have any beads or anything now, are we? Let's see, um, even just some, I'll just have to show you with thread. Um, so if you were picking up something off your desk, I don't know if we can see from above, um, but where that magnifying glass is just laying on top of the, of the pinch of the tweezers, it enables you to really see what you're picking up. So if we can just see this here, if we tilt it like that, and if you can see there the blue on the green, but that there just picking up our thread and then you can see there it is. You can see how that underneath the thread is just underneath that magnifying glass. I don't know whether there's a lighter thread. I feel like that's not showing very clearly what, um, oh, this is all wound up. Are there any little things we can pick up? Let's have a look. Let's just show you even with a safety pin. Just, and great for unpicking as well, because you can see, you know, those tiny fiddly things. But if we get the angle right, I want you to be able to see what these tweezers are doing underneath the magnifying glass. So you can just see that there. The safety pin is magnified underneath. So that's the size. That's the size with your uh, magnifying glass. And then you can just pick that up really easily without having to, you know, get your glasses out. I always said I live with my, you know, you get to a certain age and you need those glasses all of the time. I wear glasses anyway. But you know, the, and just to make those things slightly easier, um, you've got that nice accuracy there with your magnifying glass. So JRPH67 is your item number for that one. And that's 545. So lots of different gadgets. Let's show you some. We've got some ribbons. So we've got some gorgeous different ribbons. Um, going with sort of a red theme. This one's my favorite. So you've got um, this lovely sort of post box red ribbon here with a lovely white stitching detail on either side. So perfect for creating those bows, perhaps for, um, it's just a classic colors there. Great for perhaps a nautical theme or, um, if you wanted to add some detail to a patterned fabric. So you're getting four meters of this and it's one and a half centimeters in terms of the width of the ribbon itself. This is a Beresford's ribbon and that lovely stitch detail, as I said there, you can see just with that crisp white stitch on the edges. HBGQ26 is your item number for that one. Then you can just see peeping in behind, we've got a slightly thicker ribbon. And if you're wondering why we're showing ribbons, I'll, I'll, we'll reveal all in a minute. So you've got a gingham ribbon here, um, which is a cream and a red. So rather than that crisp white, you've got more of a natural feel to this. So it's perfect for some of those um, sort of linen texture fabrics or those natural feel fabrics um, or canvassy uh, sort of colors where you've got those neutrals and those sands. If you wanted to add a bit of color, the red's a really lovely way to do that. So you've got that stripe there, but it is a gingham. You can just see here with the uh, sort of lighter shading. 
So again, this is from Beresford's, three metres of this one, and this is two and a half centimetres in width, so it's a, it's a thicker ribbon. WTGQ50 is your item number for that one. And our last ribbon, so we're, getting, we're getting, moving through the family, this is a finer one that we've got here. So you can see this is more, um, this has got a lovely little boxed detail running through it. So again, that post box red, or poppy red perhaps we'll call this one, um, and you've got those nice little boxed white details there. Lovely to add a trim to something if you wanted to just add some detail. This is a slightly more affordable option. IXGQ04 is your item number for that one. And that one is just 3 95 and you get five metres of that, so even more ribbon in terms of the length itself. Beautiful. So three different ribbon options. I'll just quickly show you why we're, talk why we're talking about ribbons. So we've got this bow maker here this morning, which is, uh, if you have three different size options, and you know those beautiful bows you get when you get, a, when you get a present, usually at Christmas, that you stick on the top. They've got sort of a self-adhesive sticky on the back. Um, I love wrapping. I'm a bit of a wrapping fanatic. I like it all to be neat and, neat and tidy. Producer Paul just said in my ear, you're a wrapper. I'm not that sort of wrapper. I'm not about to throw some, some sing some beats and some music to you um, but no so I love wrapping presents and this is a really great way of um, making your own bows perhaps if you've got ribbons not just for presents but also to add to um, you know to your sewing projects and to your different um, you, you know different fabrics and to different um, to add different embellishments so you can see those three different bow sizes there and what you do is you wrap these ribbons so you've got those different thicknesses of ribbons there are three size options you can just see there if I lift it up and basically you simply pop the ribbon through the hole in the center and you wrap it around those triangles and you create a um, sort of a crisscross formation at the back of this star and then you pull the plastic out of the middle and you end up with a lovely bow like that to which you can add buttons or beads just to make them even more uh, snazzy um, but again you can see here a lovely option you could add them to hair clips you could add them to to bags to um, to cushions, to anything you like, and again to presents. Perhaps if you wanted to wrap with a slightly thicker fabric um, or you know a thicker paper, and you wanted to add a really beautiful uh, ribbon bow to that, the detail there. So three different size options in your clover bow maker. That one's four ninety five L M G Q fifteen. And on your back, the back here, you can just see some examples. You might be able to see slightly more clearly. So you've got a triangle bow there, and then you've got a five-point star and a seven-point star. So that's that traditional one that I was talking about that you quite often see with that self-adhesive on the back. And you can wrap your ribbon around the triangles once, twice, three times, creating different thicknesses and different, um, you know, creating a different depth depending on how much ribbon you use. But your instructions there and just showing you some examples of the finished bows. That's your clover bow maker. So that's why we've got the ribbons. It all makes sense. So because we were doing threads earlier, if you've just tuned in, you need to be here at 10 o'clock when Irene's back showing you that in feeler sewing, uh, the needle threader. It's absolutely brilliant. It's 5 95 really affordable. And you just pop your needle in the top and the thread goes straight through. You just literally pop the blade through the eye and it threads your needle for you automatically. So if you need some thread or needles, we've got some in this hour uh, too. So there are two different uh, size options of needles. And um, let's have a look here first of all. This is your sizes five to 10. So you've got 20 needles in here. You can see there just all those different size options, um, depending you know, what thread you're using or what projects you're using. 145 for these, so really great value. 20 different needles from Henline, PZGQ02. And they're your needles in sizes five to 10. So all of those can be used with the needle threader this morning. And then you've also got another option here. So these are your quilting needles. These are a size eight. So you can see that they're all the same size, um, but you know, a, a different option perhaps if you've got a quilting project on the go. Again, just 145 for those. LZGQ29 is your item number for that one. So if you're after some threads, and um, we were just using with the needle thread, and not only uh, just, you know, your regular threads, you can do double threading with it, you can do multiple threading. So we were putting through three threads at a time. We did metallic threads, we did invisible threads, we did wool, we did a really thicker um, sort of skein of fabric of thread as well. So, so many different options. It's a really versatile piece of kit. And it, every, every time you just pop that blade through, it finds the eye of the needle and it threads that thread straight through it for you. So making it so much, you know, pain-free threading a needle becomes a pain-free experience which is which is great 
So your thread options this morning, we've got two different bundles. So let's just, um, I'll pop, bring these ones in to start with. So this is your, um, well you can see on your screen there, this is your essential thread bundle. So your essential colours that you're going to be using all the time, you know, you've got your classic, your whites, your blacks, your navies, I'll just show those to you here now. So these are from Guterman and you're getting a hundred and you can just see here a hundred meters of all of these threads. So you've got your black, you've got a lovely sort of natural cream there, a nice royal blue with a sheen to it as well, your classic white, a nice slate grey there again with that nice sort of silvery sheen to it and a navy, a really smart navy. So you're getting 600 metres of thread here within this pack. So it's an essential bundle. So it's working out as one point... <laughs> so per metre, it's working out as 1.7p per metre, I'm being told. So it's really great value. Um, but this is from Guterman. So with those threads, you're getting a, a brand you know you can trust. They have a really... Um, what's lovely about them is you get a really even level of thickness. So rather than having a thread, you know sometimes you have sort of thin and thick sections and you don't have that evenness. Um, in terms of the thickness. These are just a really reliable thread that you know are going to go really easily through your machine, through your needle, and they've also got a really high abrasion rate, so you're not getting that sort of furry, fuzzy feel to them. And these will work perfectly with that beautiful needle threader. So this is your essential thread bundle, ITGC14, for this one here, and that's 1045. So your classic colors there, perhaps if you've got, um, would any product on the go, these are colours that are always being incorporated into your sewing kits. Then another option, if you want to go for a more bright bundle, again, great for those patterned fabrics or great if you want to add some embroidery detail to something. So we're doing some raw red applique at 11 o'clock with Tilly and some of these bright colours would work really beautifully with um, the designer fabrics. So again here, let's just show you those colours that come in this bundle here. These are really bright, vivid threads. So you've got your... Um, all different options there with your reds, your orange. Let's just look through. So you've got that lovely bright sunshine yellow. The picture didn't really do them justice to how bright they are. They're really bold colors. You've got that lovely sunshine yellow, just catching the light there. Then you've got your red, your royal blue. Again, 100 meters of all of these. Your orange, a really bright vivid orange there a nice punchy lime green. And then you've got your purple, royal purple. So this is your bright th thread bundle, again from Guterman, again, 100 meters of each, so 600 meters of thread in total. And again, that means that they're 1.7p per meter. So 10.45 for that bundle there. J JVGC28 is your item number for that one. So let's have a look now at another gadget. Let's just line those up on there. We've got lots of different uh, gadgets in this hour. Now, this one is always really popular on the show. This is your mini iron from Clover. So if you've not seen this before, or perhaps sometimes you struggle with those fiddly bits of ironing, if you've got intricate seams to work with, or you want to really get that accuracy with your seams, particularly for, um, for quilting, for patchworking and quilting, where you want that seam to be pressed open really, you know, and you've, you've cut and measured really accurately. You want your pressing to be accurate. I'm going to bring out... Um, this mat, which I'll talk to you about in a moment. If I just pop this on here so you can see. So the Clover Mini Iron is just great for getting into all of those um, fiddly little intricate nooks and crannies. So you can see here, this is um, one of the ad adapters that go onto the Clover Mini Iron. But you can see that really fine point there, just to get into those really, um, obviously the iron's not on or I wouldn't be touching it. Um, you can get into those really fiddly intricate corners. This is perfect for toy making. So Jo Carter, when she's doing all of her lovely, you know, her tilde animals and her monkeys and elephants and things, when you're making the clothes for those, this is really great to, to press the seams or to press those if you make uh, dolls clothes or, or clothes for different teddy bears and toys. This is perfect for that. So you do this, this just plugs into the main. So you've just got your normal 
um, normal mains adapter plug there that you would pop in. And the great thing as well is there are different heads that come with and um, that you can add to the mini iron. So there are three different um, adaptions you can add in for, you know, if you've got slightly different projects. But it's just a really easy handheld tool. It saves you getting out, you know, sometimes if you're ironing something that's really minute and fiddly, to get to, to justify getting out your whole ironing board and iron feels like a bit of a, a chore. So this is just a really simple way of, you know, turn this straight on, you can crack straight on with your with your ironing um, on a smaller sewing project. So that there is your um, the adapter that comes with your iron. Let's just show you the packet how it comes. So it comes like this. So you can see there just your mains adapter plug. Then you've also got your um, the top there and that handheld section of the iron itself. So also you can see that you get this lovely little stand. So it's a clover mini iron. You've got this lovely clover stand. So this just pops here like this. Then you can just pop your iron. So you just rest it on there really simply. It just sits in that groove of the holder. So it's not going to, to burn or touch um, anything underneath. So you also have the option to add a different adapter to that, as I mentioned. So there is a slightly larger, it's still mini. I mean, this is still so much smaller than a regular iron, but it's just a slightly small, uh, slightly different size option if you, perhaps you wanted to, um, if, if it's something a little bit larger. So you can just see there the size difference if I hold those size by side. This one here is your large adapter tip. So I'd say it's probably two to three times larger than the one that comes with the actual iron itself. And it's only $8.95 for this extra adapter. That just slots straight in the top. ECGQ48 is your item number for that one. Now, and I said, I mentioned about burning yourself and using the holder. This here is a really great little gadget for, um, it's an ironing mat. So if you don't want to, as I said, if you can't justify getting out your ironing board and you, you feel like that's a stretch too far or it doesn't really seem worth the hassle of, you know, pulling it all up or if you're sewing upstairs and your ironing board's downstairs, this is a great way of just, you can pop this mat on any surface and you can, you can do your ironing with it. So <laughs> we, this morning when we got this out, this has got a burn on it. So I'm not I'm not going to hide this from you. I'm going to show you show you the burn because look, it didn't go through to the other side. You can see that here. And this is why you need a mat. This is why you need a mat rather than uh, doing. Obviously, you don't want to. Thank goodness that that was on your mat and not on the table itself. But it's not gone through. It's protected the surface underneath. And so the lovely thing about this mat as well is not only can you, you know, you can just, it folds away and you can just, you can pop it in your cupboard or in your sewing room. But once you've got it out, you've got great measurements here and grid lines and markings. So you can do some, if you need to check your angles, if you need to check your actual measurements itself, those are all marked on the mat. So you can see here with these different angles and your grid markings there too. So this is 90 centimetres by 60 centimetres, so it's quite a sizeable mat, but it obviously folds down to a, um, a nice, uh, easy, workable size. And also we were saying what's great, a great function for this is that if you're, um, you know, perhaps you're ironing, you're not, you're not in your house or you're on holiday or you're ironing somewhere that's not, you're on, not on your table, you know you're going to protect it, you can just take this out, you can have this, um, you know, in your sewing bag. And again, if you are, perhaps if you're on holiday, if you're in a rental property, there isn't an ironing board, this is a really great way, um, you know, you can pop this on any surface and iron straight onto it. So great for that clover mini iron and just protecting from these burns to stop this happening to your table. You don't want this on your table, you want this on your mat. Let's protect the important bit. So um, this mat is 24.95, VGPH46. Again, this is from Prim, so lots of these gadgets this morning um, from Prim. And just really great, um, you know, perhaps if you want to, um, to check your measurements while you're doing your ironing or if you've got uh, different details that you just want to go over, you've got all of that there on your mat. So while I've got this mat out, I wonder if it would be easier to show you the tweezers on here as it's a white background. So these are again from Prim and these are a pair of um, tweezers but with a magnifying glass attached. So great if your eyesight is, um, you know, if you, perhaps you struggle to see those tiny little fiddly things. Um, great for picking up beads or buttons and notions but also for... Um, Irene who we've had on this morning, it's her first time on the show, and she said she uses these for getting out splinters because you can see so much more clearly, um, you know, what's, what's going on because of the four times magnifying lens. I'll show you this in action. So I've got a safety pin here, I'm just going to pop onto the blanket, let's do it here so you can see it um, on a blank section rather than a gridded. And then when you use the tweezers, they're just underneath the magnifying glass, so I don't know if you can see that there. 
So that's the, the um, safety pin. When you pop the magnifying glass on, you can see how that's making that bigger. And then just making it much easier to pick that straight up. And if it was something smaller, you know, a tiny fiddly bead, which I don't have to show you, but that would, you know, if it was something that was really tricky to pick up with your fingers and you do need to use the tweezers, again, it's just making it slightly, um, you know, more accessible because you can go straight to it with your magnifying glass. So you can just see that there if I put my finger underneath how that's making it. It's tricky to get the angle right there this morning, but you can just see how that's making it bigger. Perfect for splinters. I think that's a really great use for that. So that's your tweezers, JR. PH67 is your item number for that. Now, as well, on, sh on the show, if you want to get in touch, we love to hear from you. I love getting in your messages. A couple of weeks ago, we had some um, dog fabrics on the show, and people were all sending me pictures of their dogs, which I loved. So please do send me some pictures. Um, you can email us, studio at sewingquarter.com, or you can head to the website. So um, if you go to the watch page, underneath the um, live feed of the show, so you'll see everything that's going on today. You'll probably see myself and Irene, or myself and Tilly. And if you scroll down underneath that there is a message the studio box so that's where you can get in touch you can drop us a message you can just um you can see here that's the live feed i'm talking about so you just um type your message in there press send and say hello if you've got a question for any of our designers you want to see a particular product again or you've got um you know or send us a picture of a project you're making something that you've got on the go you can do that there and underneath you'll see this is like a shopping list of everything that's been on today's show so the star of this hour is that automatic needle threader from Infila um, but everything that we've had in this hour all listed there so you can add those straight to your basket so talking of messages we've had some in let's have a look this morning Karen from Staffordshire. Morning, Karen. Um, up bright and early, I like that, ready to go. So, uh, morning, Amy, just ordered the needle threader. Could have done with it on my cross stitch I've just finished. Um, brilliant little gadget I need. Loving the show. Oh, brilliant. I'm so glad you've got it. You'll have to do another cross stitch project now and see quite how much time you managed to save with that needle threader. It really is such a simple gadget. And it's, you know, it, it doesn't look, I haven't, I think we've, um, Irene's taken it with her. But you, if I pop the image up on the screen so you can see, and it's so straight forward to use you lay your threads across and you just pop that tiny little um slider across if you missed it we will repeat it at 10 o'clock but these are so popular at the sewing shows irene's been um selling these for 20 years you know she's bought these over from italy and it's just the accuracy she says 90 percent that it will go through first time and that loop just pops out the other side 5.95, which is so worth it for all of the trouble you go to th to thread a needle. ZBZI91. Did we have some other messages? Let's have a look. There's one other message. Oh, it's just loading, so we'll come back to that in a second. So we had some other um, gadgets. We've got a loop turner. So where's that gone? It is. Oh, have I lost my loop turner? Mm, let's have a look. Doo -doo -doo. No, I think we've lost it. We haven't got the loop turner. We will get that in a second. We'll come back to our spray. So this here is the best press spray from Mary Ellen. This is Quilts As You Go recommend using this. It's just a starch spray that's really great for using um, for your ironing to give you that really crisp, lovely finish, which is lovely for shirts. You know, if you want your collars and everything to have that, to, to have that structure and to stand and look really uh, crisp and fresh. Now, the lovely thing about this is it has no scent, so you don't have to, um, you know, worry about whether you, you like the smell of it or not. It's not going to add any, any sort of smell. And again, it's that lovely spray bottle, um, nice and clear, so you can see how much you've got left in there with an easy spray pump on the top. So this is 170 millilitres. Great for, um, for all of your ironing. And it's only 4.95, NDEQ38. And that's your best press spray. So that was the first thing we showed you in terms of um, sort of different gadgets. Then next up, we had our tweezers, which we just recapped. So that's your magnifying glass, which has a four times magnifying lens. And you've got your tweezers underneath there. So if I just open this to the side, you can see there you've got, this is your magnifying glass and your tweezers. So you'd obviously use it this way around, looking through the magnifying glass from above. And you can just see how that's magnifying whatever's underneath whether that's small fiddly beads and buttons. This is incredibly popular. JRPH67, 545 for that. And what's also popular this morning has been the thread bundles. So the most popular one at the moment is the Essentials Thread Bundle. 
So this one here, although the bright ones might catch your eye, and um, these are your essential colours that obviously you always need to have in your kit. So you've got your, um, it's six different threads from Guterman. You've got your lovely natural beige colour there, your black, your white, your grey, your navy and your blue. So aptly named the essentials bundle because colours that you're going to be using all of the time. And you get 100 metres of each of these threads. They are really lovely threads. You can see they've got a nice sort of sheen to them. Great for embroidery. And that lovely even thickness all the way through. This will go straight through that needle threader. <laughs> I'm obsessed with that this morning. I honestly just think it's brilliant. Um, it's producer Paul was just, just saying, shocked how great it is. You know, we, we have seen other needle threaders and this one is just, is so accurate, so easy to use and also really affordable. So that's your um, essentials thread bundle, but we also have the options for uh, some brighter ones. So perhaps um, these are for summer, these are great. So it depends what projects you've obviously got on the go, but you've got a lovely sunshine yellow. Then you've got a poppy red there, which is a nice bright red. Your royal blue. And then you've got a nice orange here. A bright lime green there. These are great for the uh, green and yellow, really perfect for those summery projects. And your royal purple on the end. So again, you've got 100 meters of each of these threads. So 600 meters in total, 1045, which works out as 1.7 pence per meter. That's what, I'm, that's what we've worked those out to be, so they are really great value. JVGC28. Now, in the next hour, I'm joined by Tilly Rose and we're going to be, we, well, we've got a really lovely um, silk painting show lined up for you. So this is great. We've got some different chiffon and silk scarves. We're going to be showing you some different techniques, how to do those silk, that silk painting with a whole spectrum of different colors and also your um, gouta to, you know, add that detail and to keep your paint in the right place. So Tilly's coming up at 10 o'clock and at nine o'clock in, in a couple of minutes and then at 10, Irene is back with that fantastic needle threader. So don't go anywhere, get ready for some silk painting and we will see you in three minutes. See you shortly. Follow us on Pinterest, search for our sewing quarter page and follow us to discover sewing work we create and love. There are many different ways you can buy from us here at the Sewing Quarter. You can order from us by calling our free phone number at 0800 112 4433 and talk to the team at our UK based call centre. Alternatively, there are other ways you can buy from us. You can go online and shop through our website at www.sewingquarter.com. You can even watch the show there and shop as you go. You can check out as many times as you like throughout the day and only pay a small fee of £2.95 postage and packaging for the whole day. We also offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all products excluding custom cut fabric. Our friendly UK-based team will help guide you through every step. Did you know there are multiple ways you can contact us even if it's just to ask a question our friendly team are always on standby you can call our customer service team at 0800 112 4433 email us at help at sewingquarter.com visit our facebook page follow us on instagram Follow us on Twitter at Sewing Quarter and even message us through our website and our presenters will answer your questions live on air. It's easy to buy the products you see on our shows. To buy any of the items featured on today's programmes, just head over to our website www.sewingquarter.com. Click on the video stream and you'll be taken to our watch page. Here you'll find the product that is on air right now at the top of the page. Beneath that, you'll find all the products demonstrated in this morning's shows. To add an item to your basket, simply log into your account or register with us. Then you can either check out or keep shopping. Remember, our flat rate delivery charge lets you shop all day and check out as many times as you like and only pay once for postage and packing. Only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78.
Sewing Quarter is at the very heart of sewing as we bring you all things sewing and quilting. The team behind us live and breathe sewing day to day. We strive to bring you exclusive offers, exciting live demonstrations, and most importantly, we will custom cut fabric to your specification in our very own cutting room. We will also be bringing you TV exclusives that you won't be able to find anywhere else. So come and join us today at the Sewing Quarter. Welcome to the Sewing Quarter. the lovely Tilly Hello. Rose in this hour. We haven't done a show together no, before, have we? No, first time. First yeah, time for everything. Exciting. So I've, well, I've added a scarf, so you might be wondering why. We're doing some silk painting in yes, this hour. Yes, we are. Yeah. So this is one that you made that you made earlier. Not literally earlier, but <laughs> yes, I know what you mean. It's dry. Yes, yes. It isn't a silk wet. No, 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 no. But it, no, is, a, no. it is a silk um, yeah. scarf that you did. It's a silk chiffon scarf. Beautiful. Um, Summer, you know, you kind of want just a little bit of colour, and uh, I thought, brilliant, yeah, we'll add, add that. a splash. Yeah. So we're going to have a play this morning. We've got some techniques. Learn all, I love all of this. It's like arts and crafts morning know, with Tilly and Amy. I know. So, so we're cool. doing um, silk painting, which, well, t tell me a bit about how you got into silk painting. Or, or so um, when uh, we were putting the show together, and they were mentioned about silk paints. Um, I haven't used um, this sort of silk paint for so long, and I'd forgotten how much I enjoyed it, if I'm really honest. So many, many, many moons ago, when I worked in a department store, um, it was in the haberdashery in the craft section, um, and I did a lot of demos for sewing machines and, and sort of threads and cloth, but then off that, um, there was lots of kits, and silk painting kits were in there. So that's how I kind of really got into silk painting, because I'd done it at school, and then I kind of did it as, um, you know, as part of my uh, job in this, in this role. Um, but I've dabbled over the years as well, but I've returned to it by doing, you know, for prepping for the programme. It's fab. I think it with just... all of these things, it's knowing about them or, you know, or having, like you say, those things, it sort of came into your life through yes. the department. So yeah. it's not necessarily something that you would have really thought to even do. No. And also, um, because I'm, I'm, I'm a textile artist, so I like to do lots of collage work, lots of designs. I do lots of workshops. But um, I have so many people saying to me, but I'm, and, and you'd said it this morning, I don't really, I really draw. draw. <laughs> that's I the, first draw. <laughs> the first thing people um, say. You don't need to. That's no. the joy. So if you, um, you know, you do want to draw a, a, a particular design, I'm going to run through how we do that with, you know, the products later on. Um, but you can just have a play. And actually, we're going to show the technique of how we created this uh, design on the scarf because there is no Which I can drawing. do because I can't draw, but yep. I could do so this. So we're going to get you working today. Yes. So let's see some different designs. This is the okay. Scarf Festival. We're, we're going to get to this. But this didn't require any drawing. So no, perhaps that's what's putting you off yeah, to start so with. Yeah, so this is the scarf that we've got on the show, the Chiffon Scarf, which is the longer length. I think, is it one... Uh, one this is 30, the long, isn't it? This is the um, longest scarf. Yeah, so it's 30, 130 centimetres by 35. And um, so you've, the scarf comes with the edges already uh, stitched. You haven't got to do any work at all. Like so that. even if you just don't want to do anything but buy the scarf yeah, just have and it embellish, as, you've you know, got, you know, the work's done there. That's that lovely. There. Um, but all I've done is actually then... Um, use the actual scarf uh, we haven't painted on it as such we're just dabbing and we're going to show that technique because it's so easy um, here it is so this is how it this is how it um, this is the one on your screens at the moment yes so this is 130 centimeters which is great i was saying wasn't i just before shall i tie it shall i have it hanging down because there are all different options you know you could just tuck it behind so this is your um the silk chiffon scarf so you can use all of your fabric paints on the silk paints on this um, but you've also got the option for a diff slightly different shape haven't you with your squares yes. so the other um this one if we just say just show this one while you've got it in your hand yeah, this is the same scarf um but i've actually drawn um a design on it so where you, you're great. wearing this as a free and easy design um this one's actually if i move that away so that it doesn't clash um and again, I'm going to show you how to do these techniques, but this is a, just a really simple little doodle using the gutter and the silk paints. Um, and you can see how it's just transformed this. Um, it's a beautiful scarf in itself, but then just adding a, just a tiny, tiny touch of colour. Yeah, you can embellish. And then once you've done your silk painting, you can then stitch, you can uh, hand stitch, free motion stitch, um, all sorts, all sorts. You of can just keep adding. Beads, buttons, whatever, you know, you, you just keep building on top. Um, and it becomes your own personal scarf, yeah. It's lovely as well because I think, well, the lovely thing about sort of chiffon is it has that drape to it, doesn't it? It feels, it is. it's really soft and it's not, it's not like a sort of a clunky winter no. scarf. It's no, and in summer, sometimes um, 
you know, if you're wearing a, a dress or a, a top like we've got here, you just might want just a dash of colour. Yeah. Um, or if maybe you're, you're going to a wedding or a prom. Um, or a holiday in the evenings and perhaps yeah, if it gets and, a bit chilly. Even just having something there. Yeah, and you just want that pop of colour. It's perfect because, you know, and the good thing is... Um, Everybody thinks, oh, silk chiffon is so delicate. You can literally just scrunch it up <laughs> and pop it in your and pocket. And it comes out, okay. And it's, you know, it's brilliant. It doesn't need ironing, doesn't, it's fab, fab. Brilliant. So there are a few different options. We're going to look at how to do some of these yes, different we designs. Are. Yep, yep. So you've got the um, this chiffon scarf. This is the one here, that's um, the long scarf that I've got on. Yep. But then there's also the option to do it on a Yes, square, on a square. Which is, it's oh, this no, one it's this one. It's this one. Oh, got so nice this bit. one is the one that I've done lots of samples on. Yes. So this is the size. This is, how, this is just in terms of the sizing. Again, that lovely sort of silky drape to it. Yeah, so it's almost like a headscarf size. Yes. You could, you know, do the lovely yeah. headscarf if you wanted to. Um, or tie it in your neck. You know, that, like that would be like yeah, like like a 1950s type, yeah. ball, that would be like lovely. Like a vintage retro sort of, how yeah, fab, that would yeah, be lovely. Great. Um, so what I've, what I've done here, just to show, I'll, I'll let you um, hold it of off course. camera. Um, these, this was where I was experimenting, and I, I brought this <laughs> in because I wanted to show viewers, um, you know, you don't have to make it really technical. Um, you can keep it very simple. But then if you do want to add uh, into your design, obviously we've got all the different colours on the show. Um, so the heart shows, you know, the variation in the colours. But I've done various techniques, and I'm going to run through that in a little while of little things. Um, I'm also going to show you, I've deliberately gone wrong. Okay. Uh, because if you've never used silk paints before... Something you um, might do. Something you might do, but also um, it's getting to know the feel of the paints. Um, and I can guarantee you're going to go wrong. Don't beat yourselves up about that, <laughs> yeah. because you, you've got to go wrong to find out how much paint you use. You know, you almost... It's like any craft, oh, isn't it? Error, it's isn't trial it? and error. And once you think, oh, okay, yep, that's fine. Um, so I've brought in a few examples of what might happen. Just It's like know, cooking. You have to add a bit too much or too little to realise It is, but I is. always say there are never any mistakes because even if you go wrong, you can cut it out and use it in another design. Um, if you think, oh, actually, I've got a blob of paint there and I didn't really need it, you know, <laughs> and you really, really don't want to, um, you could cover it up with, you know, a little embellishment on top. So there's no, no, definitely no... It, yeah, of course you can. change yeah. it. So this was here just where um, Tilly was talking about. I don't know if you can just see where that's... Where it sort of bled. Yes, that... so I'm going to go through that in a second, yeah, just to, to explain, you know, so what happened. If you haven't seen this before, the, you not only have the paint, but you also, if you're wondering what this outline is, talk to us a bit yep. about that. It's okay. gutter, isn't it? So, so the outline is gutter. So gutter um, is a medium that... Um, it's, it actually stops your uh, silk paints running onto the fabric. So it's creating so a barrier. It's creating that barrier, yeah. So wherever you do your design, um, I'm going to demonstrate in a second, but your, your silk paint will sort of almost run into that space. Um, so if you want a circle, or i.e. a heart, you do the heart in the gutter, you let it dry, um, and then you can put your paints in there. So all of these have been hooped up, I'm going to run through that in a minute to give it a bit of tension. And then, um, so I've worked in sort of small stages to do each design. Um, but if you were doing something like your, um, your scarf here, you could uh, use your silk paints, just free and easy, and then actually add a little detail with the gutter. So you use that afterwards, afterwards. to add so the Afterwards, so I've shown that here with the silver. All I've done, I don't know if the camera can, yeah, I'm in the right angle. Um, That's so right. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't looking the right uh, uh, race. Um, so these are just like a little squiggle, little stars, but because um, it's slightly raised from the silk, it'll actually give your, your scarf an extra texture afterwards. So it's, it just will potentially affect the hang of the, you know, the, the bottom of the, the drape a little bit if you're adding some um, weight to the bottom. Yes, not, not that much though, because if you scrunch that through your fingers, it's you can feel nice it's, it's very fine. So it's yes. almost like the lead in a stained glass window. Yes, it is. It's exactly, like, isn't, it's exactly perfect, like that. So yes, it's, you, yes, it's, yes. it's creating that barrier so it the paint you can the sit exactly yep. within it. Yeah. Great, lovely. Okay. So how do we use it? Okay, right. So to start Easy. with, um, I'm going to show you how to actually put um, a design onto a piece of silk, okay? Just for anybody out there who kind of thinks, well, where do I start? <laughs> okay. So the first thing you need to do, let me start right from the very beginning. So you need a hoop. Okay. Um, which I know we've got um, oh, on yeah, the website. Oh, yeah, that's just up on your screen. I'm using, and now I'm using one of the squares for this demo um, that I've actually cut just so that I can actually show you different techniques, okay? Great. So um, don't feel if you, 
because there's quite a large space of silk there. Um, so if you want a small project, it's perfect for cutting. And then obviously where you've cut it, you would need to um, do something with your frayed edges because obviously the edges would, this bit's been done for you. Um, yeah. But there's a lot of silk. So first well, you thing can even do, just have it in one corner. I think that's yeah, you you, the beautiful white scarf, yeah, just yeah. a splash of colour in the corner. Okay, so you lay your silk on your hoop like you would um, an embroidery hoop, okay? And then um, you lay your ho hoop over the top. Now, if anybody's not used an embroidery hoop before, um, the one that goes on the top has got this um, screw top at the top here that you can tighten or loosen your tension. Okay, so that just literally goes over the top. Now, before you actually tighten that, I'm going to turn it over. I'm going to give you a little tip. <laughs> so you tighten it slightly. You don't want it really, really tight. You then get your silk. Now, silk is quite strong. Everybody thinks, oh, it's really, you know, quite um, you think delicate. You it's all slippy and, and delicate. It's a strong fabric. So you pull very gently the edges in. You turn your hoop round, turn it in, turn in. And what you're doing is you're straightening the grain of your fabric. So you're pulling that tension. And yes, so we're making it nice and taut. Yeah, yeah, you don't want it too tight, um, but you do want some tension there. Then go back to the screw tighten it up again because it'll tighten it a bit more and then just very quickly go round it and do one more time and once you've done that then that gives you the base then uh, you know that actually you when you work on the silk it's not going to go anywhere and it's nice and straight and lined up and so I'm also going to say a little tip because um, I'm terrible at doing the washing up and then going putting hand cream on <laughs> my fingers I'm terrible because I've got um, sore fingers sometimes um, you need to make sure you've got clean hands because any grease, grease. or um, especially this weather where we're a bit, you know, sort of hot, um, <laughs> you need to keep your fingers off the, the area that you're working on because it will pick up that grease spot. Oh, so that residue might sort of yes. end up. So just before you start doing anything, just go and wash your hands so that they're nice and cool um, and then you haven't got any trouble. Okay. Right. So how do we get our design? So I've put these on to start with and I'm going to show you. You can do it two ways or this, this is how I do it. Um, if you're using, we've got a variety of gutters depending on how you actually want the outline. Um, so if you want a clear outline, um, you can't use a pencil because You'll your pencil design will come through. But if you're using a darker one, um, the black or you know the silver or something, you can either draw your design on with a pencil. So to draw it on, you would turn it back over. Um, I've put the silk in the wrong way. Um, but you would literally do a free design if you're doing a leaf, maybe, just for example, okay? And then you would turn it over, and with your gutter, you then just go over your pencil lines. On the, other, on the on right the other, side of the On fabric. the right side. Um, but this is another way, and this is the way I'm going to just show you going on to the design that we've this got here. This is where here. I got excited, because the first thing I said was, I can't draw, like, oh, I can't do this because I can't really draw. But you can get a template, or you could take something off the internet, or you, you could. could, or from a design yeah. from a book, and then you can trace it. You of don't course. need to be able yeah. to draw. You could use your children's drawings. You yeah, could use that's a lovely idea. The simpler, the better, almost. Um, so this is just a little doodle that I, I did, based on a Virginia creeper plant. Um, and... I just sit and doodle all the time, but you don't have to put the whole design into your um, your piece of fabric. So I'm going to just draw over these three uh, little leaves here okay. just to show you how to do it. So I'm using the invisible marker pen. Okay. Again, I've turned my fabric over. Um, what I've done to start with, I've put my design onto paper, and this is um, quite a thick black felt tip because you yeah, need to so you can see your it design. Nice okay. Um, don't worry if um, you think, oh, it's a purple pen, okay, because it's invisible, it's going to disappear in time. So this is air erasable? Yes. So uh, yeah. uh, over time it will disappear? Um, there are water-soluble water markers out there, um, and depending on what fabric you're using, you could use that, but you've just got to remember that um, if you use a water-soluble marker on silk, it may leave um, a, 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 a mark, a watermark. Yeah. So you're better off with an air erasable one. So we're going to go over these three little leaves here, and all I'm going to do very very loosely go over my design all you're doing is actually using that as a base so this is just your template and then you can use it as a guide to yeah and like you say you can you know download something off off the interest uh, uh, on the online you've got all the um you know design boards out there oh 
Mine's running out. So this is on your um, screen at the moment right now. This is the Hemline Vanishing Fabric Marker, um, SJGQ40. And there are all different tools, which I'm just going to go through the different tools that you need um, to do this silk painting in this hour. So not only have you got the scarf, which I've got on now, but you've got that lovely um, chiffon scarf. So that's your first one, which is 130 centimetres. That's 8.95 for that lovely um, sort of feminine scarf option. Then you've also got some brushes that obviously you'll need, um, you'll see us use those in a moment, to apply the paint. So that's a set of five different brushes, um, five assorted different sizes there. And that one again is 5 .95. And then we also mentioned the gutter, which is what um, we were just saying, it's almost like the lead in your stained glass window. So this comes in four different colour options. This is what you can use to draw your design on to um, act as a barrier to keep those paints in the right sections. So that's your silver one there, your silver outliner. Then you've, that, those come in four different colours. Then you've also got your paints, and these are all the same price, just lots of different colour options. So this is your royal blue. And there are nine different colours. So then you've got your violet, which is again $3.95. So they're all priced the same. We just want to show you the different colours that you've got. So as we go through, you can be aware which ones we have. Then our next one is a nice deep black. So perhaps you might use that and then you might use your beauty to add some um, embellishment detail on the top, like those um, lovely little squiggly stars that we saw on the example. Then our next one is that's your um, Guta outliner in black. So that's your option there if you wanted to use that to add embellishment or again to, um, to create your barrier detail on the outside. Then the next one is your transparent one. So if you don't want to see it, if you don't, or you know, if, if you just like the effect that that creates, I'll show you an example of that when we um, on a scarf in a, in a moment. That's your transparent guta. Then you've got your gold, which we've seen in action, and I'll show you that again on a scarf in a minute. The gold's really beautiful, actually. You've got some metallic detail in that. Then you've also got your um, cyclamen, which is that lovely uh, pink textile silk paint there. That's $3.95. Then you've also got the hoop, which is what you use to stretch the, um, the chiffon scarf across. And that they're just creating that nice taut tension. Then your other colours are, you've got your brilliant green there. So lovely if you're doing uh, perhaps a flower and you want to add some detail for the stem or the leaves. You've got another blue there, a nice soft blue. Then you've got your turquoise. That one there, three ninety five again. Then you've got a nice yellow, a nice joyful sunshine yellow, golden yellow, make you make you smile. This gorgeous weather we're having, loving the sun. And then you've got two other colours. So that's your golden yellow. Then you've got your orange, which is a really bold orange, actually a nice vivid one. And we've got that used actually in a couple of the flower details on these scarves. And your last colour there is your ochre, which is sort of a burgundy uh, colour. So that's all of our colours. We just wanted to show you those so that they're, um, you can see them in, the sh in those in the shopping list underneath the live feed of today's show. So there are nine different um, fabric paints there, nine different colours, and four different options with your um, gutters there for different, different detail or for creating your barriers. And they are $3.95. So if you wanted all nine colours, if you wanted to create that palette, you know, to do all of these different projects, yes. it's thirty-five ninety-five for all of those nine colours. Um, and it's not only those nine colours because you can... It's not, because we, you can blend. So yeah. I'm going to show you how you can blend as well. So different shades. Um, and I, I mean, I was sent the samples, so that obviously I've used starting from brand new. Um, and if we open a couple of them in a second, you only need the tiniest, tiniest of paints. I can guarantee they're going to go a really long way. Um, and because you can keep blending, you can mix them with water, so you can wa water them down. Um, you can also use them on different fabrics. So you might want, once you've tried on the, the silk sh you know, scarves we've got on the show, um, we've also got the cotton. Yes. You might want to um, try different ways of blending. And I'm going to show you a couple of techniques with some 
some salt and sugar, um, that also it broadens that horizon. So once you've dabbled and you think, yeah, I'm I ready like to that. go, I, I really like, what it. else can yes. I do? Um, it opens a whole new thing because you think you can um, add it to a pocket on a bag, you could put it on an apron, you could personalise little Just makeup pop bags, that detail pop in detail. It, like a motif. And you yeah, yeah. Through. And and going and also when when I was showing how to, if we go back to the uh, design where I've drawn that on, you might want to personalise your designs. Um, so I'm just going back to where I've been drawing on my little leaves. You can see while you've been um, chatting there, I've finished my uh, design so here. Just trace that on the back. Yeah, and you're going to go over that with the gutter. So I'm going to show you that in a second. But um, before I just do that, you might want to personalise your designs. And where we spoke about the gutter um, adding onto a detail, so you want it for a little texture, you might want to create your own scarf, but then put a signature on it. This is mine. So I did this. That's what you want to You can. Um, you can just go over if you want to obviously quite hard to do writing back to front isn't it I yes suppose, if you're that's tracing. that's the thing don't don't reverse it because it will be in reverse so just simply go over the top now if you're not comfortable writing on top of silk take it out the hoop and just write um because you're going to use it as a base for the gutter okay not yes. the silk painting so again you just sign okay um, and you've personalised. So that would make a beautiful, beautiful present of the chiffon scarf. You dye the colours, you add your little name. And you say, I know, and, and I did it. And it's a personalised, you know, it's perfect for weddings and proms and birthdays and things like that. Really lovely. Little so gift. moving on from here, how do we put the gutter on? So I'm just going to remove my little designs. I'm going to work in the silver. Okay. Uh, just to do a quick demo and then I've got one that I if I show you this while I just get this ready this is the design that um, I've prepped ready to oh, actually to use the that. paints on really lovely so the gold's really got a nice sheen to it beautiful. actually it's beautiful and in our sample if you look on the scarf with the gold that's the one I use with the heart let's just show you here here you can see it with yeah. the colors let's so that's the gold and the silver one that I'm using on the little leaf here is the one that I've done on the design on the bottom. Which is this one. But it's also on the little chiffon scarf that you showed at the beginning. And here. Yep. <laughs> I've dabbled. <laughs> it's almost like glitter glue, isn't it? It's sort of yeah, like it is actually. It's, just it's like in a tube. tube. So to get started, um, I'm just going to wipe the end off there where I've not been using. What you need to do is get um, a piece of kitchen towel or just tissue um, and you need to just get the air out of your tube so just make sure that's kind of a smooth coming out okay yeah um, if you start to do that on your fabric what you're going to do is have a big blob and okay an air bubble yeah um and if as a beginner i can guarantee you're going to get blobs okay so don't don't be you know too worried about that you've just got to go through that process of getting used to it so because you're on the frame that's resting on the board okay um i tend to sort of put my hands again don't touch the fabric unless you really have to um, and choose which way um, you're going to go. Now, I'm right-handed, and I tend to work towards the right. Yeah. Left-handers might go the opposite. Of course, because once it's wet, you, you yeah. can't get yeah. back into those fiddly bits. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start here. I'm going to go over the purple line so that the camera um, Richard's on today. Uh, <laughs> I hope you can keep up with me, Richard. Um, I'm going to try and go slowly so you can see. So I'm going to start on the edge, okay, and you just literally follow like your line. Like icing a cake. Like icing a cake. And actually, if you do ice a cake, you'll be very good at steady hands. So excuse my shaky hand, because I don't ice cakes. Talking of cakes, there's a lovely cake in our office from John's birthday yesterday. I have to say, that's going to be my breakfast when yes. I finish. <laughs> Cup of tea and some birthday cake. <laughs> okay, so here's my little vine. Now, on here, on this design here, if you wanted to actually um, make... I've made that quite thick because I wanted it just with the gutter. But you might want to do two channels and actually fill it in with a dark green or a brown to so make... So you could use different, yeah, different of course. ones there too. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is the joy of using a hoop as well is that you can turn your work around to suit so this is the important part when you start to add the leaf or the next section going back to the stained glass effect you need to start on the silver okay because you need to join that up so you've got to create that sort of firm outer barrier yeah but if you've got a, if you've got a gap the silk paint will find and it. it will run so come back and make sure there's a blob now if you think actually there's a little bit of a gap there join it up okay and we're going to then add um, a little line in the middle 
Now, my looking at that, my fear would be that purple pen, if we've not followed that exact line or that you can still see it, it's obviously bled through, that, that's fine, it's going to disappear. It will disappear. So It won't disappear while we're on air. No. It will take a little while. Um, and depending on how thick or how um, deep, you know, when you press the pen into the silk and how it's sort of bled into the silk, um, I can't say it'll be gone in two hours or four hours because it, it will be different. <laughs> it will go, I can guarantee. Do you usually do it just freehand? Would yes. you draw a design or you uh, just go for it? I have to say uh, I usually do freehand, um, but there there is a, an occasion. So like this, I actually wanted to do it in one continuous line so I actually did do it in the leaves first and then joined up to get um, that flow through yeah, the whole yeah. thing so I'm just going to add my it's like gold there. leaf it's just so it is, it's, it is. it's really beautiful I'm going to stop there because I want to move on next techniques but you get get the idea of what yeah, you've got to do with the gutter so, so at this stage you need to then set it aside to dry um, and I personally like to I know you'll be so impatient and want to get painting um, and the first time when I got the paints out I did do that and it all went blah, 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 into one big blob because I was so impatient but just allow it to dry um, in this Definitely heat it won't it take long it will you know uh, it depends as well the thickness of your gutter how thick you've put it on yes um, but if you put it in um, it, in the sunshine it will dry quite quickly so you know go and have a cup of tea come back in an hour or so have Slice a dinner cake, yeah perfect. come back off you go perfect. okay <laughs> if it's an intricate design like this i i did this and then left it to dry i would leave it overnight and then come back to it in the morning okay okay so i'm also just going to show um where's the best place to I put that, that. So okay so i just yeah. want to show a little technique going on the gutter going back to the chiffon scarf this was the first design that i sort of played with and if I hold this scarf. out, to <laughs> okay, so you can see that I, actually I'm on the wrong side, sorry. Um, you can see that I used the silver outline, like I've just done. Yes. So I did the flowers, let it dry, and then I've added the silk paints. Now, what I did is I, before um, it actually dried, if you want to take it to one step more and experiment, because I know there'll be lots of viewers out there who might want to, you can actually see I've actually blended some of the gutter in. I've deliberately smudged it in the uh -oh. middle to add this glitter can you see yes. how it's just going in so it's just a tiny bit don't do it a lot did you do that afterwards no i did it just before it was almost dry so, you so just yeah so I, I i went away thinking yeah like all of these were dry because they're like tiny little flowers yes this one was a, a bit thicker and i thought well you know let's just play so i just left it out thinking okay well if i have to do another one i'll do another one but then it dried with the, 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 the gutter on it which gives us this beautiful glitter because when you put your silk paints on top you've got that mix of glitter and, and silk you get paint. that sheen you through do. both of them so, it so you can see now with the chiffon staff can i throw something in as well of course you I, can because <laughs> viewers know me i kind of just you know throw everything out there i've brought in i was saying to pro uh, producer paul this morning this is the chiffon scarf we're selling um, on air. This is an old scarf that I had at home, okay? You might want, if you don't want this white background and you're not perhaps confident to add a whole background to it, yes. and you think, I've actually spent all that time doing that design, I don't want to muck it up, you can get, because it's so fine and so dainty, this is a, just an old cotton summer scarf, um, doesn't matter, or you can just um, get a piece of fabric, any of the fabric we sell on the shows. Um, and lay it underneath your scarf very gently sew around your edges oh, and it changes your idea. design completely that's a great idea or you may want to do it under lace so this is another so you scarf. Get a slightly thicker you'll get a slightly thicker scarf but also yes, you're you adding a design yeah and also on the back you've got you know but you've, got, you've got the got, fabric yeah so you've got a dual scarf so i'm just going to put this under the lace to show you so that. again it might be a mixture of um, you know, adding, but you can see how it changes the yeah, design so completely. Yeah, so you can layer that up, and as well, that's going to really affect how your what, what the silk paint looks yeah, like. You know, exactly. it can add a whole different dimension. Yeah. So there's a couple of ideas in there. Great idea. We've got okay. a question here as well. So, oh, okay. Uh, morning, Moira. Um, good Hello. Morning. Great show. This is on my must-try list. Is Yay. it washable after wash it after um, after? Yes. What, it's dry? what you do? Um, so the. Uh, on the back of the gutter, it um, gives you instructions that you need to set the gutter with an iron. Okay. Okay. And once that's set and your silk paints are set, um, then it's a very, very gentle hand wash. So what was the order for that? Once it's dried, do you iron that to set that before you do the silk paint or you do it at the end? It depends what you want to do with your gutter. Yeah. Um, I wait until the whole design's finished 
and then I set the whole, pro, uh, you know, whole process um, with a, a gentle iron. Don't have it hot because if you've got extra bumps in here, you don't want it anywhere near that gutter, uh, you know, because you've got a little bump. It's only going to touch that yeah. tiny bump. If you're it, yeah. a bit nervous about that, get an old uh, sort of a, an old tea towel or an old piece of cotton and just lay it over your design because I know I've had ladies say to me in, uh, <laughs> in workshops, I didn't even iron it now that, you know, just in don't, case. Don't it to me. So pop a piece of cotton on top. Um, it can be, you know, a scrap piece of fabric in your stomach. Uh, just so that you break break up that sort of um, barrier of you're not just, putting the yeah, hot iron on there. Sense. Okay, so can we get painted? We can. Okay, how are we doing for time? Um, we are, we're halfway through. So okay, we're, perfect. We're right, okay. So um, I'm using these lovely paint brushes we've got on. These are a fab set. Um, so you've got all different sizes. Well, yeah, that's nice. a really brilliant set. Because look at this, I've got to show. Can we show that to camera? Look at the tiniest, tiniest detail. Which if you've got a tiny little I know, so like I'm going to get them out. Actually, and then I can, because I know viewers like to see. There we so, are. If, Shall yeah, thank you very much. Right, you thank can, you. You can uh, say what... So, we, if you're doing a bigger design, you obviously use this lovely big brush. Yes. But you might want that such tiny, tiny... Really lovely yeah, little fine brush, detail. Fine brush there. You might want to put an eye on a butterfly or something, you know, whatever. Okay. They've got nice and sort of a nice They tip. feel beautiful. Nice, yeah, they do. Really great. So um, what we're going to do is I'm going to put now. I'm going to tell you a few so a few things that you'll need. You will need housekeeping. Yes, housekeeping. housekeeping. Silk painting. Can we, I'll just move this out of the way because yes. I don't need that to, just now. Um, right. So you will need um, an old china plate or an old tile or something that you can mix your paints on <laughs> preferably one that you're not going to have your toast on in the morning no <laughs> maybe not <laughs> just wash it carefully um so an old jam jar or glass or something with a, a drop of water in uh you'll need some kitchen towel just to um put your gutter on like i've, I've yeah, shown but also to, to take yeah i was going to say take off the excess um water with your brushes so if you you know just loosen them up and then take out that water then put them in the paint. the paint. Okay. So you would never go with your brush straight into the paint. You can do. But you, it's you can do. Um, you'll find your happy way. Yeah. And if you prefer to work like that, that's fine. There's no, there's no rules. So I'm gonna dabble. I think with what colours shall we mix? Ooh. You choose. I do love this one actually. Yeah, Simply. the pink. Yeah, it's I beautiful. Think that's really lovely. Okay. Now, if I, I'm gonna shock a couple of viewers or a few viewers out there because when you get these home, give them a shake before you start. Uh, I'm just going to move that away in case I do the obvious and spill it on. <laughs> spill it on. Spill it all over. No. So um, I'm going to tilt this. Is it best to show it that way? To, yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Can you see? It's a really vibrant, bright pink, but it is not going to come out this bright. So if you just hold up that one here, yeah. where I've used um, a little dabble of pink, you wouldn't say that this but that is that. that. No. no. So. Again, it's a matter of finding what colour you like. You can have it this concentrated. So it depends how, yeah, exactly yeah. That, how concentrated yeah. you use it and whether you blend it. Exactly. So um, don't think, well, I, I'm not going to, you know, purchase that because that, that's not my colour tone because it will, water, you know, really calm down. And if you want it to be very, very a gentle colour, uh, just put some on the paint, uh, onto a plate. I'm going to show you before we get started. Okay, so you dab your brush in. Okay. Could I just get you to move that yellow paint? I've put them in there and I haven't got a spare hand. Okay, so. It's quite liquid. It's very liquid. It's not sort of a thick. It is. It's not like an ink or anything like that. And you can see how I am keep adding the drops, okay, how it's getting much more of an intense yes. colour. Now, if you think, actually, no, that's way too bright again. Okay, dip your brush. Take a bit out on the side. And you can see the difference yeah, in the colour. But also, it's a really lovely way to create shade. It you is. Know, you, tonally, you can it, move it all the way through. It certainly is. A, yeah, if you, you just wanted is. one colour, you could move through a spectrum and have yep. a gradient of colour going you can, through. You can, you um, can. I'm just going to pass you this one while I'm just putting some out on the plates because um, you can show viewers. This was done with the pink, the orange and the oak. Like a really lovely sunset. This yes. Just working and... Really well. um, I actually went over, once I've done the initial bit, I then went over again to add a bit more intensity. But you were saying about the clear gutter, um, and you can actually see Here. where I've put the clear on against the paint. It really, really brings it out. Um, when it was dry, I then went over with a silver gutter. So I have two oh. gutters on there. So, so you used the silver to initially act as that barrier to stop that section? No, no, the clear was the first one. The clear, sorry, that's yep, right. Yeah. Yep. Um, to initially stop the paint going into that section and then yes. you added the silver after. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay, so those colours work really well together. They it do, is like, aren't it's they? Just, yeah, it's, it's like a Hawaiian. Yeah, you've like got, it's got it. A very Hawaiian feel. Okay, so we're going to add a bit of orange. I promise I'm going to get going in a minute. Yeah, it's all good. Okay, so there's some orange. I'm just very conscious. I work in such a mess at home, and I'm putting the lids on because I just <laughs> do I have know. To put it all neatly. Do you want no, the yellow? Yes, please. Thank you. Okay, and we'll put a bit of yellow on the plate. So you can see, I'm not hardly taking anything out of these bottles. Um, you're going to have absolutely yeah, that's last, loads. Yeah. The one, a little tip is, um, don't so don't take something out of your yellow, then put your brush in the red or uh, not the red, sorry, the orange, um, and then into the pink because you're going to blend your colours in the in, pot. Do it on so your wash plate it out each time because you don't want to ruin your um, paint. Okay, so we've done our gutter, we've done our paint, we've got everything ready. We're ready let's to go. go. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> okay. So make sure it's on a flat surface. Um, one little tip that I did learn from home, don't do it with the patio doors open and there's a gust of wind and suddenly it's so light. Oh, it yeah, of course. Up. It's just so if, if for any, any reason you think actually it's going to move around, just anchor it down with a, you yeah, know, you a pot of paint or something like that. Yeah. Okay. Because <laughs> I, I, I just learned. imagine you in the garden I, trying I, to catch your shipboard oh, scarf as it goes My husband was down. sat there reading the newspaper and all, all he could hear was like, oh no, there's my silk <laughs> paint, there's my sample, don't you, you know. <laughs> yeah, mad woman. Okay, uh, let's try, well, shall we go for the pink? Yes. Okay, and we'll, end, we'll add a little bit of uh, yellow in there. So, am I at the right angle? Perfect. Okay. Great. So, what we'll do is we'll start off, uh, let's try it on here. Okay, I'm literally going to put the paint brush onto... Ah. Okay, I'm not painting, I'm just dabbing. And you can see how the paint is just very gently sort spreading. It bleeds through there. Yeah, so it works up. And once you think, oh yeah, I'm all right, I know where I'm, where I'm going, just to allow it to sort of run. Okay, so we're going to put on our pink first. I'm going to get you to do some of this. No pressure. <laughs> no. <laughs> I reckon I could do that. I think just you about, could. even of though. Of course you could. <laughs> Anybody can and do it. And so when you get to that end bit, you know, where you just left that, yes. would you. That will eventually go oh, okay. into the end. It will move through, through. Yeah, it will. If you think, actually, no, it's going to stop there, you just add a little bit more paint. Okay, and it will filter its way. Can you see? Oh, yes. Yeah? Okay, and if we. It's, it's gradually getting there. Now, if you wanted to do a very gentle um, end, you'd dip your brush in and put uh, water on there and it would just merge the two. So, let's just try it. And I love how, I know it sounds a really obvious thing to say, but it, the Guta really is effective at keeping that in place. Yes. As long as you've, as long as you've, you know, it's like a herd of sheep. Your, yeah. <laughs> just keep them keeps in the pen. It keeps them all in, it does though. So. As it long does. as you, you know, you've, you've um, joins the gaps yep it's going and completely that's the vital, yeah. vital thing if we just go back to the sunflower um i i do a lot of work with students um and when i had this sent through i i, I was actually doing one of the samples um and they were like oh can we have a go can we have a go so i said we can have a go but i, I want you to deliberately go wrong yeah um and they were like, oh, how do you do that? <laughs> <laughs> so here you so can see there's no you can see, join. Yeah, and, and where we left a tiny little gap, you can see actually the orange has then come out of the um, end of the leaf. I actually don't mind it, though. No, I love it. It's funny, isn't it? Because I think it just... It's, it, it, it's, no, it's homemade. Well, I'm just going to say, anybody who knows me, um, I, I love the fact that actually you can go wrong, and I just love it. Um, but I know, obviously, if, you, um, if you're a perfectionist and you're thinking, no, that's... But what I would say is don't throw it away because you can cut around. Well, of course. You we're could just we're doing it. raw edge applique in my next show. Um, I'm, I'm going to cut that out and actually show how we can rescue something that you think actually have gone wrong. You think so, a, a goner. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We can rescue it. So how, if you wanted to... You know, you were saying that that's gonna, it makes its way through the fabric. Yeah. So if you don't want it to get right to the end, like, I think that looks really lovely. Okay, you just leave it then. You just leave it. Yep, you just, just don't leave carry it. on adding yeah. colour. So going on this one here, um, I'll let you show it to camera. Yeah, of course. Um, I, this design started with an ombre effect. So I literally did a great big broad line. I, I put the silver gutter design on first. Yeah. Then I went over with nothing but purple. And I did a real intense purple on the line. This one on the bottom, all I did was a very tiny line and let that bleed down just to do the bottom. Just do its own job. Yeah, and it stopped. Um, and you can see I went over just to finalise it. But where the purple's gone up, I don't know if you can capture it on camera, there was a gap at the top where it didn't quite reach. 
So the next morning, with my students, I came back and we put the pink on the top to, to really test. To join the other way, yeah. almost. And you can see where it's gone over like a cloud effect. Yeah, so if you're not happy, you can nice. keep you going can, back. You can always add. So I'm going to just... So can you blend colours I'm just well? going to say, I'll drop a little bit of pink on there and I'm going to put some orange and some yellow on now. Okay, which one should we go for? Oh, let's go orange. Orange, okay. That looks, I, it looks really cool. And against the gold, it's beautiful. Yeah, it, it, is. it just works really so well together. So this time, I'm going to come from this end and move that down. If you put on too much paint, what, yeah. what's the worst that can it happen? It will soak into your fabric. Um, you can blot it off if you think that's really, really not what I wanted. Um, be careful you don't almost blot it back onto the silk over the gutter. Uh, yeah. You don't want to overdo it, okay? Um, but you can just go over it and just think, no, actually, I wish I'd have put a bit of yellow there or we'll put a bit of orange there. So you there. use so little, you really are just adding a you're tiny... You're not painting, you're no, just literally you're just dabbing. dabbing. Yeah, yeah, you're dabbing. Okay, so what we'll do now is if I do a bit of orange... And I'm going to lose that last bit of pink. Okay, and then we're going to add a little bit of yellow. Okay, so we've got kind of a goldy orange, which is a bit more intense. So you can blend your colours also, not just on your fabric, but you could blend yeah. it here and then take, of course you know, you can. so you can customise yep. what shade yep. you want. You, and you're in charge. Okay, so can you see where the orange and the purple have now blended on this leaf here? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, so I'm going to put a bit of a colour wash over the top because I kind of want a bit more of an intense orange. It looks really expensive, doesn't it? It does. I think particularly the gold, but that just looks so... The gold and silver, I have to say, really, um, if you want to make something, say you're going to a wedding and you just want a little extra something special, um, you could you know, do one of these on a scarf and actually people will be like, where did you buy well, yeah, that? Where did from? you buy it? And when you sit there, well, actually, I designed it. <laughs> I designed it and printed it myself. And if you look on the bottom, it says Tilly Rose Designs. <laughs> even better, even better. You can say, look, it's my own designs. Okay, so you get the idea. So let's put, but don't feel that you've got to use those colours. So I'm going to go into that beautiful yellow, trying to get all the colour off there. So all our leaves are orange and pink. So let's do a couple of leaves that are now yellow. Well, if you wanted to add, just it's saying that tiny bit, you just use a smaller brush and just go straight into that. Yeah, those that looks... have, shall we, sh I'm just going to, unless, I don't think I've ever had a brush so tiny. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's like a lip liner brush, so that's just really okay. thin. Okay, so you can go right into the very, very fine little bit here. And actually, can you see how that detailed. detailed that is? And that's going to blend in. And actually, when you go back, can you see how we're going to add a little bit of vein yeah. of the leaves and there that now? detail is what yeah. really sort of takes it to another level. So, that's the basis of starting, okay? And I tell you, honestly, you're going to get so hooked because you're <laughs> going to be like, oh, like But this. also, once it's set, that didn't take... It doesn't take a, a long... If you, you know, think you can, how long I've just done that... Yeah. It, it, it fills in very quickly. And, and my concern would be, as someone, you know, that isn't necessarily... Wouldn't call myself particularly artistic in terms of drawing and painting, but my concern would be, oh, I can't shade or blend things well, but it does it itself because it bleeds through the fabric. OK, I'm going to give you a brush and I'm going to make you do it. <laughs> She's going to make me do it. Right. But so. so, no pressure. No, it doesn't feel... So, it, you know, you've got your paints really here. Well. So you just literally yeah, add you colour. choose choose what you want so to you do. So you can pop some, tiny dot some yellow here. So just like that. And this and this is to show how easy it is. You just got to remember keep your your wrists on the sort of hoop and don't touch the fabric or don't touch any of the paint that you've just done. That's just going to bleed in. Yeah. So bring it over onto the pink. So you'd bring it right down. Yeah. So it's like, that's how you get it to blend. And more. then it will blend in. Now if you think oh that's not blending, you can add a tiny dab of water and let it expand a little bit more oh so you could put water onto the would you a put tiny water bit on your brush uh, you can That's on the you do yeah that. yeah you'd put it into the jar yeah. and then blot it off you don't want a lot of water okay and then, and then, then just you could just blend that over and it will start to come through I love as well that it doesn't, what you've done straight away isn't your finished thing. No, it's, it's not. It continues to sort it's of not. grow a bit itself. It has yeah. its own. And the joy is, if you think this is a quarter of the square of the, the scarf, um, the one that I've used. Now, I you can leave that to uh, dry and then hoop up almost, almost on top of your design. So you just literally move it along and then repeat the process. And what you could actually do, I'm going to use a pencil just to demonstrate. When you put your design on, I'm going to put it here. 
<laughs> I just I know what I'm like. I'm just <laughs> I'm gonna knock it for six. Um, when you put your design on, you could almost then filter it through and do it. So it looks like it's all one, so yeah. it's a whole piece. Yeah, and you just keep building up and building up and building up. So that's good. So what we're using this morning, if you've just tuned in, we're doing silk painting and you've got the option to do that on a couple of different fabrics. So um, not only have you got, well, this is the, the chiffon scarf that I've got on at the moment. So there's one long scarf, which is lovely for, um, as we were saying, just adding a splash of colour, you know, as an accessory. So this is the um, long chiffon scarf that's on your screen at the moment, which is eight ninety five, And you can, you, you know, you've got the option to just add that tiny detail on one end. It's all been finished beautifully for you, so you've not got any fraying um, on your edges, and it's got a really nice sort of drape to it. Um, but there are different sizes, so there's not only your uh, long scarf here, but there's also a square one, which you were saying would be really lovely for sort of a retro thing. You could yeah, it would. fold it this way and do that'd like be a fab neckerchief. Yeah, or neckerchief. <laughs> yeah, that'd be cool. Um, so that's a nice square one there. So that one is slightly more affordable. That one's five ninety five. Now, if you go on the website, you'll see all the different colours that we've got on today's show. So there are nine different colours, but within those, you can obviously blend them to create different shades and tones. So your nine different colour paints, and then you've got four different colours in your Gucci. So you've got your transparent, your black, your gold, and your silver. And then that brush set, so just using there those different, five different assorted um, thicknesses of brush so you can add detail or if you want to use it in a bigger section to help it bleed through. Yep. Now Tilly can't help but add some, I know, add some more detail as you're... I've just, I don't know if the viewers saw that, but I just shook the, the um, paint and I literally just said to you, I'm really messy when I, and I've just like dabbled all over. <laughs> so when Amy comes to clear the set, she's really going to be like, don't have that Tilly Rose back because she's just a nightmare. Don't be daft. I'm, a, I'm probably <laughs> it's all over the a place. messy painter. <laughs> but you can see, I've just gone back while you were talking just to show how you can keep on adding. So out of interest, up. if it was finished and it was dry and yep. you came back to this tomorrow, yep. you, could you add again? Of course you can. So you can just keep, keep going. going? Keep going, keep going. So you could have it for six months and go, do you know what, I want to change and it up add a bit it. now yep. and then add something yep, yep, else. Yep. How are we doing for time? We are, we've got about ten minutes. Fab. Can I show some other techniques yes, to do with absolutely. it? absolutely. Okay, so I'm going to put that to one side. I'll take this one. I'm going to try and not wreck We're the trying set. to do it, we want to cover as much as we can. Because there are so many lovely things that you can do. So this is uh, hooped silk again. Okay, simply because I just want to show you. So we've got the whole square yeah. scarf Ooh, on, on that got one. Got a bit of pink on there already, look. <laughs> <laughs> I did Doesn't tell you. Don't worry, I'm we can do Right, I'm going to move this pink out of the way because I just... Sorry, there we go. Right, uh, let's choose a different colour. So let's... Should we go uh, blues? Yeah, shall we go blues, blues and, and purples? purples? That's fab. So uh, if I just hand you to this to show of viewers... Uh, where's my other one gone? Oh, this is like a tie-dye effect. It is. So what I want to show is uh, there should be another one as well that I brought in with the... Um, so this is with sugar, and then I had a one that we had with salt. Really lovely sort of those colours blending don't there mind. in a tie-dye. I don't think we've got that other one. No? They're so It did so many for us. Okay. Let's do that one, and we'll, we'll go from there. I'm just wondering, could we get another bit of... So, oh. again, this is a way if you want to to start with to perhaps steer clear of the drawing side of things. Yes, yeah. So, you could just do let this me explain what I've done. I've hooped it up. So, this is on cotton, but you can do it on silk because I'm going to demonstrate on silk. And all I've done is actually... Um, I did the gutter, that was me, the first time I'd used the black because I wasn't sure how deep the black would be. And then I just left it in the frame thinking, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it. Um, but it was over the background. I'd done the background first. So, you, so it's kind of in reverse. You yes. can add that yeah. afterwards. Yeah, you can. So there's no, you know, no rhyme. And then there's no stitching you're... detail. So perhaps if that's where you're more confident, yes. you could just embroider yeah. or you could... Yeah, so to add the, the, the background, okay, this is where I'm going to get you to play. Okay. So you literally paint it on. Just anywhere? Anywhere you like, Okay. So be careful of your top because <laughs> oh, right, I've got a feeling I'm going to go home with pink bits on my top Probably shouldn't have worn a white top. I know. I, did, I had an apron and I, I forgot to bring it in. Um, right. So that's the pink. Uh, sorry, the blue. And then we're going to put some purple. Okay. Now I'm going to put a tiny, tiny bit of here on here. So I'm going to. Very gonna, therapeutic. Oh, it's fabulous. Go out in the garden. Cup of tea. A little bit of suntan, do a bit of paint. The water does a lot, doesn't it, as well? It, it does. It gives it that mottle. So, sort of can thing. you see where the water is blending in? Yeah. That's oh, one it carries technique. on. Move, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, here's our blues. Okay. 
Okay, so would you add the water and then add, you can add paint over the top of the water? You can add all of that, all of what you've just said. There's no, no rules at all. And I'm just being very, very random. Okay, because what you're doing is you're creating your own surface. So, I'm just going to leave it there, just because what, while it's wet, because this technique I'm showing you now is, you've so this got is to do it while you're wet. Sugar? Uh, yes, with sugar and with salt. So what, do, what does that do? Right, so on this design here, can you see these white blobs? Yes, okay. sort of like circles. Yeah, so this is my sugar. So ordinary, everyday sugar that you have with your tea and coffee. Okay, you literally sprinkle some on to your paint. Wherever you think. So this is going to affect how those paints move through the fabric. Yep, because it's, yeah. And you leave it and you go for a cup of tea and you... I don't oh, know. Red, like here, you start to get... Yeah. So, if you think, actually, no, I want it to move a bit quicker, you just add a bit more water in amongst the sugar. Okay. Now, we haven't got time to leave oh. this and show the view, but can you see yeah. how it's changing already? Absolutely. Okay. So, so, that's sugar. You do exactly the same thing with salt. And what's the difference? Right, the salt... I, I don't know where my little sample went. Oh, yes, I can. Can I just dip off camera for a can. second? I've just realised. So, we just add... <laughs> Don't go too far, we're just adding no. sugar and salt. I've got it. I knew I brought it into the studio. <laughs> oh, that's a very different effect. Yes, that's what I wanted to show you. <laughs> so, the salt gives tiny, tiny little details, little dabble details, but the sugar gives a bit more Sorry of a, that way, actually. Um, a rounder, there it is. bolder effect. So, this is the salt. This is, this yeah, is the, that's this the is, salt. This is the salt that you can see yeah. here, and this one and that's is the, the sugar. sugar. Yeah, so I'm going to add some paint to my design and add salt for viewers to see okay i love how those colors are not as we said it's not just that color that you see in the bottle there we've got so many colors out of that one shade yeah. and if you was at home to be fair my water is very murky now where i've been mixing colors so you'd have fresh water um, but you can see mine's quite murky but actually then it'll add a different tone to yeah. it so just go with the flow. If you're doing something like a textile art piece and you want a sea background or beach background or a garden, you know, with the Sky green, or yeah, anything, anything, like anything like that, like that um, this is perfect because it, it just adds that extra flavour. So this salt. is adding texture too. Actually, I'm just going to put a bit more colour. So actually, you ladies and gentlemen. Just a quick heads up. If you've got these in your basket, there's not a lot of stock of the silk paint. We're quite limited on that now. So um, if it is in your basket, just make sure you check it out or give us a ring um, 0800 114433. Don't miss out. No. <laughs> I've got a feeling. It's a nice popular. summer project. Right, so, so this is the salt. that's the salt. Now at this stage, um, I don't know if the camera can zoom in. Uh, whether um, can you see where it, the salt has already taken? Oh up, yes, here. Up, it's like crystals. You know the crystal rocks. So you can see what it's doing. Where it goes up in the salt, it's going to make a very, very sort of dabbled look. If that makes sense. It's, it it's it's terrible sort of English. No, it sort of <laughs> separates the, the it colour does, here. It does. It does. If I use the back of the paintbrush. So can you see how it's also producing lines where it's drawing it from the edge? Isn't it amazing how that changes the behaviour of the paint? I so love it. It's just I that, absolutely that absolute love putting it. Putting in that extra um, element is just totally changing how it behaves within, it is. within the fabric. It is. So this is the tiny effect of salt. And you can see I actually hardly used any no, paint there you whatsoever. you just use it in a, in a small section. Yeah. And then this is the sugar. So this, you get a bigger effect with the sugar. Now, when allow that to dry... Um, you just obviously brush that off. Um, there's going to be a big mess in the studio, I think, <laughs> when I go out. Um, right. But you just literally brush that so off. So completely dry, then you just sweep yeah. it off. And so you can use it at that stage, um, press it with an iron to set your colours, and then you can stitch on it, you can put it into a project, or you can cut it up and use it into the, the applique like we're going to be doing in the next show. Um, but you can leave that. Because we're on this big um, scarf, if you think, actually... Right, I've done enough for today. Like you say, unhoop it and then come back tomorrow. And, and then you could do you, another you section and maybe you might add different colours. So with this design here, um, I actually did the blues and the, uh, I think there was a touch of uh, lemon in, uh, the yellow in there that went lemony um, because that's a satiny silk. And uh, I then went back on it the next day with the purple and the pink. So you could add on top of this blue if you yes. came back to it and you could think, oh, in this section And you I can keep adding salt and more sugar. So you could layer Just that keep up. layering it up. And you can see how it's sort of giving that 
um, dimension around the edge. Yeah, and then you get these sort of, these, uh, this would be, as a, you could go all the way through this oh, as gosh, a whole. Oh gosh, you could. You could just layer it yeah, up and you sort could. of have, a, you could really build it in the middle and keep the corners yeah. more, more empty or there's just so many options. There is. Yeah. So in terms of the actual scarves themselves, so you've got this square one that we've been working with at the moment, which is um, 55 centimetres by 55 centimetres. So that one's 5.95. Then you've also got this long um, chiffon scarf, which I'm wearing, so I hold it like, that's a funny thing to do. But um, that's, the, that's the length of that scarf, it's 130 centimetres, um, which is more of a traditional sort of scarf shape, really, isn't it, for adding yeah, some colour? Yeah, but, but again, it, you know, you can have it plain or you can really jazz it up. I mean, I know there's lots of people who love beading and with their sequins, and you could go down the edge and just add a sparkle. Some embellishments yeah, somewhere. Yeah, you could do all sorts of things. Um, can, have we got time to just very quickly yes, show that technique? Have. Because I'm going to get you to work. Okay. Okay. So I'm using two, um, about two minutes. Yep. Yeah, cool. Okay. <laughs> don't worry. Um, I'm using this uh, piece of chiffon here, but I did it in this technique of the the actual and chiffon scarf. scarf. So I just went along the scarf, and all I literally did, so easy, so so easy. I tied lots of knots in it. I did this in textiles at school with tie dyeing. Ah, fab. Now the joy well, of you this with is, hairband, with yes, you could, you could. Yeah. I'm going to just move that, but I'm conscious I don't want to turn the um, table blue. So. You get um, a little jar. Actually, would we be better doing it in Should front? Yeah, let's just move yeah. that. Just be careful because that's wet. I'm okay. just conscious of it going on there. everything. Okay, so you literally put your scarf, so you'd have the long chiffon if you want to do it in there. You get your paintbrush. Okay, so you just put a little dab of water on. Just, have I got to tip it up? Quite sporadically, be just yeah. Because yeah. I'm going to get you to do this. Okay, so that's add just a tiny bit of water. Um, what colour do you want to go for? Should we go for blue? Yeah, why not? Okay. So that there's your paintbrush. That beautiful with the sugar. I really love that. <laughs> so a very, very tiny bit. And you dab. How I was doing the golden leaves, you just dab on. Just dab on. Yep, just dab, 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 dab. Okay. Just any way you yep. want. Now what's going to happen is where you've tied the knot, because the paint kind of can't get through the same as it would as a, a piece of fabric laying flat when you are not that and we can show it in your chiffon scarf some areas actually if I just pull that yeah, out while course. you're painting <laughs> I'm kind of carried away now <laughs> that's fine that's fine um I don't know if I'm holding it up but um so you're going to get sort of stronger areas where this is going to be quite dark and then you're going to have the white where it was tied and then um so you the dark and you layer. can Let have different you yeah you can have different shades so then you would just leave that to dry and then untie it. Yes, you it. would, yeah. yeah. But you can just see there, I don't know if you can see very clearly, but you get that sort of effect going all the way through it. Yeah. And you can see exactly again, where, the, where those knots have been. Allow it you? to dry on a washing line, just very gently in the breeze. Um, and if you think, actually, it's not enough colour in there, I've, you know, my dress has got a bit more blue, whatever, then just do it again. Go you back know. and add yeah. some more. Keep adding, that's fine. Perfect. Yeah. Well, thank you for my silk painting lesson this morning. You're welcome. I'm very, very I, I hope really I've got that. some tips there, and I hope <laughs> you know it's going to inspire people to really have a go. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And you're back in an hour. We're doing some yes, raw edge something applique. very different. Raw edge applique. Yes. Perfect. Yes. And I really coming back in just two, just three minutes. So don't go anywhere. We've got that automatic needle threader that we had this morning. If you missed it, you won't want to miss this. It's absolutely well takes it's all the chore out. Fab little gadget. Isn't threading it? a needle. Yeah. Really simple good. and straightforward. So, and we'll see you in three minutes. You can go and get some birthday cake. Thank Thank you, I will. <laughs> we'll see you in three. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Join us on Facebook. Simply search for The Sewing Quarter and like our page for the latest news and more. There are many different ways you can buy from us here at The Sewing Quarter. You can order from us by calling our free phone number at 0800 112 4433 and talk to the team at our UK-based call centre. Alternatively, there are other ways you can buy from us. You can go online and shop through our website at www.sewingquarter.com. You can even watch the show there and shop as you go. You can check out as many times as you like throughout the day and only pay a small fee of £2.95 postage and packaging for the whole day. We also offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all products, excluding custom-cut fabric. Our friendly UK-based team will help guide you through every step. When you spend £10 on your first purchase, you will receive this free sewing kit from the Sewing Quarter worth £14.99.
Tune in on Thursday the 22nd of June when talented dressmaker Jennifer Taylor will be dropping in to share with us her sewing secrets. Jennifer's debut book, Girl with a Sewing Machine, is packed with tips, guides, inspiration on all things sewing. Following its successful launch last month, Jennifer returns to give Sewing Quarter viewers an exclusive look at her favourite projects from the book and plenty of advice on how to get more from your sewing machine. We'll also be giving you the chance to get your hands on a signed copy. So join us and the girl with the sewing machine for a fun-filled technique tuning hour on Thursday the 22nd of June at 8am. Only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78. Follow us on Pinterest, search for our Sewing Quarter page and follow us to discover sewing work we create and love. Did you know there are multiple ways you can contact us even if it's just to ask a question? Our friendly team are always on standby. You can call our customer service team at 0800 112 4433, email us at help at sewingquarter.com, visit our Facebook page Follow us on Instagram. Follow us on Twitter at Sewing Quarter and even message us through our website and our presenters will answer your questions live on air. Follow us on Instagram. Search for our Sewing Quarter page and follow us to get our latest posts. fabrics in this hour and also Irene Colesby is back with the fantastic needle threader so if you missed us at eight o'clock this morning uh, you're in for a treat there when, when we show you how to use that in just a moment but as I said we've got these premier fabrics that we've never had on the show before so we're launching these today and these are from Lewis and Irene and we're, I'm really excited to share these ones with you they're a um, they're a family run business and they're based in Hampshire uh, just on the outskirts of the New Forest and what's lovely about this is well Lewis and Irene are three generations ago so it's very much a, a family run business that's now run by the granddaughter and Lewis and Irene were sort of at the top of the family tree and now it's worked its way down through the family and so threaded with love is their motto and it's also the name of this collection that these fabrics come from today. So there are three different options. I'm going to start with this lovely cotton reels one here, which is on a cream background. So let me just show you that. These are really lovely, playful prints for, you know, if you're, if you obviously love sewing and you love, um, love your haberdashery and your, your craft room, some really playful cotton reels there in all different sizes and a lovely color palette with those yellows and blues and pinks. So this is brand new today. This is the threads on cream and we're selling these by the half meter. So these are all being cut to measure. So we cut these off the bolt for you. You can have as much or as little as you, as you want. So if you wanted a meter of fabric, that would be two units. Then the middle one, this one's my favorite. So this is on a lovely slate gray background and you've got some scissor details and almost um, a pinwheel made out, of, made out of pins with your lovely little glass heads on them. So again, it's got that classic haberdashery um, sort of motifs there if you like but with your splashes of uh, coral orange and yellow on that gray background so that's your pins and needles which we I hate pins and needles we don't, I don't like pins and needles but I love the fabric um, and then your third one is again those cotton reels but this is on a slightly different colored background so here you can see it's um, more of a sort of a creamy sandy background there so this is threads on gold, but again, you've got those beautiful um, magenta cotton reels, your powder blue, your avocado green, and those lovely sort of stitching uh, details here too. So again, that one is $5.95. That's your Lewis and Irene threads on gold. So I just wanted to show you those quickly so you've seen them because we're launching them uh, on the show today. And once, once you've seen them, then you know what's on offer. So um, you've, you've got those there if you want to add them to your basket. But this is the exciting bit. We can go back over now and introduce you to Irene if you missed her this morning. So we're back. <laughs> so did you get a cup of tea? I did. Thank Good. you. Very nice too. Good. So we're ready to go with our needle threader. 
So if Indeed. you haven't seen this before, tell, tell me a bit about how you got into, into this. Well, I've worked in the exhibition world for many, many years, and I used to sell wine products. <laughs> and uh, a friend of mine saw that something similar to this and thought that might be a good idea for me. And there I did, and 20, the years ago, yeah, 20 years ago, yeah. So how long has this been going? It's, it's not a new product, is it? It's no, it was designed by the family Martinelli, and their name is proudly stamped oh, yes. on each and every one in um, just north of um, Florence in Italy. And uh, yeah, a chap called Stenzo uh, Martinelli, and he and his family just saw a need for it. I don't know the history uh, of it exactly. 1952, I forgot to say. So that, that's right? a long, yeah. you know, it's yeah. a long, long time ago. It there's still a is. need now, and there's still a need yeah. now to for threading your needle. You know, you don't escape yeah. that if you're sewing. It certainly is. Uh, or, or yeah. you know, doing anything where you you need to do stitching and mending, or whether you're patchworking, yeah. quilting, you need a needle and thread. So it's 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 a timeless piece of kit, really, isn't it? It is, and they pass through generations. All the way uh, through. We've seen people find them in you know, they've they've inherited them, and they don't know what they what on earth they are. <laughs> I mean, that's another issue. Show me what <laughs> it is. Then. What on earth is let's it? Let's do, see let's now do in action. It. Okay. This so. honestly is just it's magic. Here we go. So, just two spring-loaded bars which is actually the, 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 the part of the tool that finds the eye of the needle, or does the threading, basically, is what I should say. <laughs> so isn't it easier just to show you, I think. Line the thread on there, and then when we drop the needle in there, most of us can't see the eye, yeah. especially ladies of a certain age. So just drop it in, not knowing which way the eye it's is facing. facing, that's the word. Sliding the button actually turns that needle or nudges the needle and kicks it into place. And at the same time, it uh, pushes the thread through. So you, then we need to pull the thread through and then take the needle. And that took a long time. Done. <laughs> but look but how quickly really, really you, can, you can do I that mean, so I quickly. Do, I do it without even realizing I'm doing it. I do, tend <laughs> not <laughs> to look. <laughs> but I wanted to explain how it works. But it, it's literally a second. Just straight through yeah. like that. And usually first time. And when you're doing it with one thread, you just hang it over. Obviously, you've got this slight height there to give it the, the drape as it goes yeah, through. Yeah, that's useful, I have to say. Yes, just, it's not necessary, but it's a good idea to leave one side shorter because we need to pull one side through in order to get single thread. So when that comes through, that's then single and thread is ready to go. you just straight out. But also, um, we were saying earlier, you can check, you can double check that it's gone through before yes. you put it out. Um, although it's, it doesn't really fail, does it? But you just pop that through like that. And once it's through, let me put that in. Once you, oh, I didn't put no, it down, it, did I? It's just the thread's quite thin, so it, it maybe makes that's it. That's it. That's it. But once it's through like that, then you just check your needle is in place. If you wish, so that's, yeah. If you and want to. And then release it. But it's not really necessary. Yeah. And look, that's just tight. Oh, it sneak back in, look. I didn't pull it through. No, that it's, one. Yeah. it's not that. It just actually went back in. So if it's only a tiny bit there, look, you can scratch it down just rather than trying to pull it. Yeah. And that's it. Easy peasy. So, so come on then, show me what else more. we can do with this. It does more than just one thread. And not only yellow thread. <laughs> <laughs> it uh, double thread. This is just the same thread but halved. Yeah. yeah? Or doubled. I've uh, purposely had... The, the center of the thread on the actual tool. So in other words, equal length at either side, yeah. Exactly the same thing, exactly the same loop, but this time pulling it halfway or a little way, just enough to make it secure. Yeah. And then ready to go. Then it's double threaded. Yeah, that, that's double thread. And the ladies who do cross stitch, they use that loop to actually start their work. They go through the material, through the loop, and then you don't need a knot. So it's just creating that security yeah. as you go yeah. through. So when you're double knotting, when you're double threading, all you have to remember is that you're pulling that thread not all the way exactly. through. Rather than exactly. feeding it through to one end, you just pull it through it's together. Yeah. Should we just show that once more yeah. in case? Just so we can see that. Half needle slide, always the same action, but it's just the pulling that's a little bit different. So this time we're stopping. And then we are and then we take the double needle. threaded. Look at that. Just so straightforward.
So you've got double threading, you've got normal threading, but it's not just, we've got two needle size options as yeah, well. We have, we so have. If, you, if you've just seen this, you've got on this white end, this is for slightly smaller needles, and on the other end where you've got the black cap, you can use it for, you can see here we've got some wool, you can use it for, um, for thicker needles and thicker threads. So what's the, what sort of needle sizes do, can you use this for? Most needles, in fact. It's just nothing smaller than a size 12 beading needle. Which is which tiny. Is very, very fine, but mm -hmm. it will cope with them. And the good thing is that it will work on round, round eyed needles as well as oval eye. Oh, okay. Whereas many of the needle threaders on the market will only work for At round. One type. One type, but usually only for round. Well, of course, most of the needles are oval. No, so that's not. So um, that's why this is. It's a really we like versatile. To think it's it's very just, good. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So it also it comes not to, it doesn't come like this, does it? It arrives like this. It's like so in its little so case. Let's have a look at that. So it's just in, you can just see here it's just been taken out and popped on the top. Let me move that over so you can see. And also at the side you've got this here, haven't you? Which is great because you can pop your um. I'm gonna get my hand in there. Do you want to do? You, I know. Um, you know it more than me. Just get your finger in there. So you can just pop your um, needles in here, so you've got like a needle holder, isn't it? Yes. At the back. And again, that depth that you're creating by standing the needle threader on top, just giving you the height there to hang the thread down, um, which makes it easier, particularly with that double threading when you want to have it. It does. It gives it more weight. Hanging yeah. either side. Yeah. And also you've got your instructions in there too. Step by step, step instructions. Step by step instructions. In English also. <laughs> <laughs> so these are here, yeah, just as a step by step guide. Um, obviously we've just shown you exactly how it works, but it just talks you through how you do that, You're laying your thread over, popping it across, the slider across, and then pulling your thread through the other side. So we've done single thread, we've done double thread. Let's look at thicker thread, shall we? Shall we? Let's have a look at a thicker <laughs> option. So this is on the black side. And the bar is lower down and thicker. So naturally, that's for the larger needles. So the needle there, the, the um, slider there is sitting underneath? Yes. It's, OK. And incidentally, it doesn't matter whether you're left-handed or right-handed. Oh, I great. meant to say so that. Yeah. You know, some, people think, some people think one side's for left-handed and some one for right, but that's not the case. Rather a large needle, I know, but just to show you that um, we can put larger fabric. <laughs> just make that look so easy. Just go straight it through. Easy. Wool? Yes, let's try wool. If you notice, I'm looking at the needle here because we can see the eye, so I always suggest to put that in the right way. Yes, then, if then you can see it, why way. wouldn't you? Yeah, it just yeah, makes exactly. it even simpler for the machine. But with the, with the other side, most of us can't see, so you just drop it in. And this with the wool, is you really need to feed it through. Look, you see, I haven't. it looks to me like I haven't caught it all, so I'm going to move the thread rather than keep hitting it in the same place just ah, be that was like, yeah, yeah. to be really firm with it and then so a couple of pushes yeah until you're pretty certain that it's all come through and then you just thread and it that's straight the through wall. yeah so it's just, it has the wow factor doesn't it it just it, you know it's you lay it across and it just does it yeah very, and, very quickly. And it's very yes. popular. To, you know, talk to me a bit about how people, how people receive this and the people that have used it. Well, it's just a case of almost a one-on-one one -on -one demonstration at exhibitions. I do the sewing exhibitions all around the country mm -hmm. and just show the people, invite them to use it themselves, of course. And once you've used and, it. And once they've used it, we hope we've got them hooked, but they, they usually do. And then we give the name and address normally of everyone and people tend to buy them for gifts. Because it, cause uh, cause it works. It, it's a little tool that works and a very, very durable. And also just, uh, and it's also great value. You know, it's, it's 5 95 so it's, it, it isn't going to break the bank. It's, going to, it's something to add to your sewing kit that you can exactly. just, and because you can just pop it away like that, it's really um, sort of easily transportable and take it with you to classes or workshops or if you're going on holiday and you, yes. you, know, you don't want to be exactly. fiddling around threading your needles. It's, it is really straightforward. So we also, you can thread more than just two threads. Yes, how many shall we do? Let's, let's see. <laughs> show, me, show me what we can do. This is actually for the ladies who do, not ladies, I shouldn't be sexist, should I? <laughs> the people who do cross stitch and yes. embroidery. They use more than one strand. So we'll put three. Now, ordinarily when, you, when we do uh, cross stitch or any kind of embroidery, we have a longer eye needle than yeah. we would have here. So this so is really, let me just show you how small that is. I don't know if you can see here. It is a really tiny um, eye there and a really tiny needle, actually. So we're just going to drop that in. Thank you. So again, we don't know which way we're putting it in. Now, because the eye is so tiny, mm. and I'm attempting 
to put three strands. I don't always, in fact, I don't often get more than one through, but we'll see. You can actually hit it once. <laughs> All three. <laughs> and there they are. But the eye is actually so tiny that I'm making a point of stretching the material, straightening it, because it's really, really tough. So just put right? it through. But shall we do it again and try to get only one through? <laughs> you didn't want so the three. That did actually thread all three at once. But if it didn't, you could feed those. You exactly. could keep the needle in place. Feed through one, two, three, and then we can it. do it that way. Yeah. So there. He's done it again. No, it has. He's done two. Oh, oh, sorry for moving there. For <laughs> two, two out of three. So our pink and yellow have come through there. And then we move the thread. And do it again. Yeah. You can see there those three different colours yeah. all threaded straight through. straight through. Or the kiddies in school, they tend to put one thread and thread that. Oh, excuse me, where did it go? Yeah. Oh, I'll take another one. <laughs> so, slide, missed it, so I'm going to do it again. Pull that one through and then add another one. So you can do them separately. Oh, so you could layer it up that way. Yes. So then now we could add the yellow and then the green. I've missed it there. Do it again. There we are. Yeah? Yeah. Release that. And you notice I'm hanging on to this button for a reason. Yes. <laughs> Why is that? Because I want to make sure, I want to just, like you said earlier, I want to quickly just test, yes. check that it's gone through before I release, release the button. Release it. Straighten it out. Forgot the green one, but there we are. Then you've got double thread there. Two threads. And so we've shown how you can thread your needle when it's just like that, you know, if you're about to start a project mm -hmm. and you need to do your initial threading. But also you've discovered that you can use this to, to thread your needle if it comes undone while you're in the middle exactly. of the project. Yeah. So I, I've actually got a piece of material there as if we were sewing. Yes. So it's come unthreaded. That and nuisance. <laughs> and it is a, a curse, really. But using the tool the way we've shown you, I, I don't think I need to demonstrate that it won't work because it's not physically possible to pull that through. No, right? Because it's obviously it's attached. You'd have to pull the material. Yeah. yeah, so you couldn't. But a clever customer worked out that by taking that tiny white cap off, we can. <laughs> so needle in there, everything the same, sliding same, releasing the same, pulling the same. But the difference is this time, we're pulling the thread and the needle together and it's actually coming through a gap there. There's a tiny is, channel. Yeah. If I just tip that that way, you might be able to see that more clearly. I don't know if you can see here, it's just that tiny little gap. And by pulling it through there, you can free the needle and yes, the thread. exactly, when it's attached to the work. So then now we've re-threaded the needle that's attached to our work. So rather than having to, to do unpick, that by hand yeah. or to unpick, to you can do it that way. Exactly. Should we just show that once more, how we do that while it's in there? So also, we, we said earlier, you don't actually need that white cap there if you don't want to. You can just take, obviously, aesthetically, it looks nice to have Precisely. two ends even, but it doesn't serve a purpose. No. You could just take it off. I throw mine away some time <laughs> ago, I have to say, because it, it doesn't really serve any purpose apart no. from looking slightly better. Like yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So you can just use it for, for this. Yeah. So let's just show that once more. We just pop that through. So thread there, needle in the hole, slide, pull, and then I you tend to take you. it on it. I can do it towards the camera. Then. Tend to lie it flat and then pulling the thread through the gap. And we are threaded. Threaded, attached to the material. Perfect. So let's have a look. So we've, we've done those different thicknesses of threads, but also there are different types of thread, aren't there, that you Very might want to use? So. so it's not just about those simple cottons, you know, if only it was always that straightforward, but sometimes you've got a metallic thread or... Let's have a look at that. Shall we show the metallic yeah. thread? Shall we do gold? Or because this behaves slightly differently, doesn't it, in, it when, in, when you're threading it? Yeah, it's quite springy. So shall we, with or without? It's up to you. No. You, you, no. you don't, you're not I a fan of the white cap. I just don't get care for the white cap. <laughs> Anyhow, with this one, I tend to put it there double, just to give it a bit more weight, because it, it's springy. It is very light and bouncy. Yeah. So needle in there, everything the same. Doesn't always catch it first time. Lucky I said that, um, because it's so springy, you see. There we have it. Yeah. And then before I let that go, I tend to pull this through because it 
because it is jump bouncy. Back in, because bouncy is the word, yeah. Now that's double thread. So naturally, if you did want single, just keep pulling pull it through. And many ladies want to add that to another. Uh, another oh, so we could add then the yellow, especially for Christmas. Um, to add that sort scenes, of sheen. scenes and things, yeah. Should we add this yellow? So you could just pop that over and do exactly the same again. Just through again. Pulling through that yellow. Like that. And then we just take it out and we've got our... Oh, I've missed it. Oh, did, did, did we? I miss it? Um, I was... Not you missed it. It That's missed it. it. I think we've only won there. So again, we maybe should do that check, that test. So we? if we were doing that again and that's already threaded, you can, so we, <laughs> just, we can just pop that you straight can, in actually, like that. Yeah. You can. Just like that. And then we just pop... Slide it, but when you see the thread coming through, it's, it's, it's tricky because... The, the eye's almost full. It's a tiny With that eye. Thread, yeah, 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 but we'll, we'll get it to work. So we, can I just move that of thread? Of course you can. So right. there's our yellow. Now holding it there and check. You ah, see again see, it's listed. No. So drop it in again and we'll move the thread. But the needle's not far enough down. Like Maybe. that? Yeah. Still further down. It's a tiny needle. I know, but it really is. Okay. Let's hope. Has it got it this time? No. No. It's <laughs> funny, isn't it? The eye is so so small to get the second one in, but yeah. Finally, now really see about yeah, and then pull and it then through. Just pull that through. But quite frankly, it would be easier just to unthread the first one and um, do it again. Oh, I've just pulled that all the way through. Should that was my one? fault for putting it through. So then it pulls out like that. I forgive you. Lovely. It actually makes it easier to pull it through without that white cap on as doesn't well. Because sometimes it catches it, doesn't it? So it is better exactly. to just so to take that off. Tangle, yeah. And then the other thread was an invisible thread, just to make your life even harder. Can we find it? <laughs> There's one here. Is this it? Or is, is it a hair? No, it is. That is an, it invisible, is the invisible, hair, an invisible thread there. Now, we'll try it singly, if you wish. But I... Oh, no, do what you, do what I you normally want. do a double, but let's, let's try it single and see if it... Picks it up. Just out in being planted. I can't so see it. So hard to see it's invisible. <laughs> there it is. Okay, so that's single, and you then <laughs> attempt to pull <laughs> it one there. through. <laughs> it is there. And then it's yeah. threaded. Great. But again, you could we could double it and if give it more to weight, thickness, yeah, and just to help yeah. it to lay down, like yeah. the metallic. Exactly. So with the needle threader, this is if you've just tuned in this morning, this is an automatic needle threader. So it's just you just slide this across, and it's threading your needles for you, not only with single threads, but with double threads, or with multiple threads, even Indeed. you know you've got three or four. Um, also, but with different thicknesses. So we've done it with wool, we've done it with these sort of thicker metallic threads, and with your invisible threads. So there are so many different options, and in terms of needle size, you could go right down to probably what needle size quilting I, we didn't uh, mention quilting actually down to an 11 quilting needle oh, with okay. ease and 12 a size 12 it need, might need two or three attempts but it will do a size 12 quilting needle also and they're the really tiny ones really sort of for yeah. intricate work yeah. and in terms of the in how large you can go with a needle if you're doing it with wool you can go to a fa fairly large size anything too. that physically fits in the into the Tool. little contraption. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and also, we were saying that you can do it with an oval um, eye, but also with with, two, with different variations round to eyes. that, with a round eye yeah. as well. So it's not just, you're not limited exactly. to one, depending on which type of needle you're yeah, using. So again, so this is 5.95 ZB ZI 91. Lots of people buying this this morning. Some people multi buying. Perhaps you, you've seen it and you, you can't help but get one as a gift for somebody else as well. Um, but just a really lovely gadget um, and a really sort of simple thing to um, pop into your into your sewing kit. Lovely. Well, thank you so much, Irene. Thank it's been you. lovely to have you on this morning, and I'm very impressed with your with your gadget. Do you think we'll do another 20 years? Yeah, right, at least. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very Perfect. much. Perfect. No, great. We'll um, hopefully we'll see you again soon. So Appreciate go and have, it. A, have another cup of tea. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Thank Ari. You. Okay, so let's have a look back with these um, premier fabrics that we've never had on the show before. So these are launches, and um, as I said, they're premieres. So we'll start with my favourite one. These are from Lewis and Irene, which is a family-run company, and it's from the Threaded with Love collection. So this one here is on a really lovely um, slate grey background. We've never seen this on the show before, and of the three, this would be the one that, that I would choose. 
So it's a the pins and needles fabric on that slate gray background. But what's lovely is you've got those splashes of color here on the glass heads of these pins on that pinwheel effect. So you've got um, a nice burgundy, a lime green, a coral. Let's open this out. So these fabrics are cut to measure. They're cut for you off the bolt. So you can have as much or as little as you want. This here is a meter of fabric, but when you see it held up, you can see a little bit more sort of the drape. And it's a really lovely soft fabric as well. Um, really lovely and easy to work with. Let's just have a look at those different colors you can see within it, the different pattern, and, and those classic um, notions that you would find in a haberdashery with your scissors and your pins there would make a really lovely cover actually for a sewing machine or perhaps um, any accessories for your sewing room, perhaps a storage caddy or a, a hanger for the back of your chair or to go on the back of the door or even a sewing bag, why not? Or a pincushion. Ah, yeah, you, if you had any fabric left over, you could make a pincushion with those little pinwheels right in the center. So that one is 5.95. Again, if you wanted four meters of fabric, that would be eight units. If you wanted uh, two meters of fabric, that would be four units. So it's um, sold in half meter increments. Then we've got two different options on our cotton reel fabric, again from Lewis and Irene. So I'll start with this one, which is cotton reels on a lovely cream background. So it's a nice, crisp, clean finish. And then on top of that, you've got these playful cotton reels um, in all different colors. So that nice coral there, then you've got your yellows your powder blues, a nice bright magenta, and also these nice little, little stitch marks which just add an extra detail. And those cross hatching details there on those other little parts, just giving that texture. So this is Threads on Cream, um, RQLW16 is your item number for that. And again, that one's 5.95. If I open it out, you can see a little bit more um, what's going on in the fabric. Let's have a look. Again, this would be lovely for, um, for cushions and for sewing room accessories. I think these really lend themselves, would be great for uh, bags, you know, a sewing bag or perhaps a cutting mat bag or, um, as we said, a sewing machine cover or mat even to stop it sliding on your table. And then our last one is the same design, but it's on a different color background. So this is on a gold. It's kind of a, um, a sandy gold, if you like. And it's, so it's got a more natural feel to it because of the color palette, but it's got those similar, they work, they work really well together because the cotton reels are the same colors. Again, with your greens and corals and pinks and blues. Again, this one is being sold by the half meter. JQLW83 is your item number for that one. Let's open that one out too, so you can see a little bit more. So these are all brand new today. We've never had them on the show before. And they're all 5.95, so the price point is all the same, just different designs, different options from that Threaded with Love collection from Lewis and Irene. But it's a very, it's a nice playful um, sort of spin on those cotton reels. So let's take these over to the other side. We've got some bundles that we've put together um, to, to team with these, so solid bundles and also thread bundles. I'll take these with me. My favorite one on the top. <laughs> okay, so um, we've got two different solid bundle options to go with these, um, just teaming those color palettes. So if you want to blend in some solids for, um, for binding or for backing, or you know just to combine with them in different combinations, then we've picked colors that we think would work really beautifully with them. So let's start with this lovely bright one that goes with my favorite, um, my favorite fabric, which is the pins and needles. So I'm going to open this out next to it so you can start to see how they work together. But this one here is your solids bundle that we've chosen. And these are picking out the, uh, the pin heads. So imagining that these pins have sort of got a glass head on them. You can see here you've got that uh, magenta, a lime green, a really sort of peachy coral. So we've put together a solids bundle in those three colors. You've got your sherbet, coral, and your deep orchid. So this one here is your deep orchid that you can see there. I think um, you're with a lovely deep pink and gray, that's a very classic co color combination. I think they work really, really well together. Then you've got your sherbet. Let's find those. That bright yellow there. Again, picking out that color in the pin. And then finally, you've got that lovely coral color there, which is a peachy coral. 
And those three just adding a really, sort of adding a nice bright feel to it. But interestingly, if you took the, uh, the pink out of the equation, it changes the whole feel of that fabric. It sort of makes it feel softer. Or you could just back it with one. I think the peach works really well. You see that there like that. So that bundle there is the needles and pins bundle. So you get three half meter cuts. So you get half a meter of your coral, half a meter of your sherbet, and half a meter of your deep orchid. So you've got a meter and a half of fabric in total. And that's 9.45 for those solids. They're just a really rich uniform color. HOGC46 is your item number for that one. And it's called the needles and pins bundle as it's, we think it would team really well with that Lewis and Irene uh, fabric. So our next bundle, is to go with our cotton reels. So this works with both of the cotton reels on cream and the cotton reels on gold because the uh, cotton reels are the same colors across both of those fabrics. So let's have a look. Let's pop one of these out on the table. So again, you're getting three half meters in this bundle, a meter and a, meter and a half of fabric in total. That's your cotton reels there next to it. And you can see here, we're just picking out those cotton reel colors. So we've got, we, I'll start with this nice dusty pink which you can just see there. So that's vintage pink. It's, it's got a nice, um, it is definitely a dusty pink. That's how I would describe that. Then you've got your vintage blue, which is this one here. That's sort of a, a duck egg blue. If you, were, and it, if you can just see this main cotton reel motif that's coming up through the pattern, this big one, I don't know if you can see there, but that color works really well together. I'll move this along. And then you've also got your mercury, which is um, it's sort of a bluey gray. It's, it's not, I wouldn't call it completely a gray because it does have a, a blue tint to it. And that works really well with that dusty pink as well. So you can just see those three there with that cotton reels. So on your cotton reels complementary bundle is the one, your main graphic on the screen, LGGC40 for these three. So half a meter of this, half a meter of your mercury and half a meter of your vintage dusty pink. And that's 9.45 again for that bundle. And then on the bottom is your threads on cream, which is the one I've got laid out on the table. So which is the most popular at the moment? Let's see. Oh, my favorite one's the most popular. So the pins and needles at the moment is winning the race, which is that lovely gray one here. These are really soft fabrics as well. I sort of have to be your, be your hands for you because um, obviously you can't feel these, but these are a really lovely soft fabric. And I can just show you here. Um, what's really lovely is on the selvage, all of your colors are listed and you can just see that color palette more clearly if I show you that there. But that slate gray feel in the main body of the fabric and then introducing your color with your pins and on your scissors. Perfect for all of you lovely sewists, I'm sure, are watching us this morning. Don't forget, you can send us a message as well. I'd love to hear what you're making and what projects you've got coming up. Perhaps, you know, beginning of the week, you've got a new project in mind, you've set yourself a challenge. Send, send us a picture or send us a message and let us know what you're doing. So we've also got some thread bundles to team with these. Let's just move those other solid bundles to the side. So the first one, which is to go with that pins and needles. Again, this works really well. If I line this up, let's get organized. Let's move these to the side. So in this complementary bundle where we had the um, orchid, the sherbet and the coral, we've, paired, we've also got a thread bundle to go with that. So if you can see here, You've got that lovely deep um, sort of purpley pink there and it works really well with the deep orchid. Then you've got a nice soft lemony yellow, which works with the sherbet. And then you've got that peachy coral there too. So this thread bundle is 4.95. These are from Guterman. And again, you're getting 100 meters of each of these threads. So 300 meters in total. And you can just see how they work really well with that complementary solids bundle that's on the table. But also if I bring in the fabric, which is the most popular at the moment, your pins and needles. If I hold that there, you can just see how that works with the thread colors and a really lovely way if you wanted to embroider, we're doing some raw edge applique actually in the next hour, but you can just see, let's try and get that a bit smoother. Let's fold it in half. 
you can just see there how they um, the colours work together and how you could add that detail with your applique, with your embroidery, um, picking something out if you, perhaps you wanted to do some freehand um, embroidery on that. Those colours working really well together. So 495, GKGC85 is your item number for that lovely complimentary thread bundle. Then your other thread bundle is to go with your cotton reels. So if I move these solid ones to the side, where we had our dusty pink, our mercury and our vintage blue, you've got this cotton reels one here. And the thread bundle that goes with that is here. So we've got this nice um, sort of slate grey that works really beautifully with that mercury colour, bringing out that grey feel to it. But then if you teamed it with the blue, it starts to make it, you can see how it does have that um, tint of blue in that hue as well. Oh, we're rhyming now. <laughs> and then you've also got your pink in that bundle as well to tie in with that dusty pink. So if I hold it up with the cotton reels, you can see how those tonally have just been matched perfectly to pick out the reels. Funny actually that I'm holding up reels on a cotton reel fabric. It's sort of got exactly in my hand bringing, bringing the fabric to life there. So these ones are LGGC24 for these three, fab, these three threads. Again, you get 100 meters of each of these, so 300 meters in total. And that's 495. So, Something that was actually popular earlier um, was the, uh, a pair of tweezers. It was a little gadget that I was showing you in the first hour this morning. And it's a pair of tweezers with a magnifying glass on. So this is perfect, just like with that needle threader that Irene's just shown us. Perhaps if you struggle to see um, intricate little beads on the table or pins, this is perfect for making them more um, visually obvious so you can pick them up. Also, Irene said these are great for uh, taking out splinters. The magnifying glass um, is a four times magnifying lens, so you can see there how it's magnifying the tweezers. And just great for picking up little details. If I pop it on the table, I wonder if I've got something I can pick up with it. Um, let's do a safety pin. So if I just pop that pin on there, you can see you've got these nice sharp tweezers underneath and your um, magnifying glass is just attached so you can fold that down and keep that nice and neat and tidy. So you can click that into place. So you've not got that um, exposed sort of point just sort of freely in your bag, you can just click that in. I don't know if you can see that there on a close up. And then from there, there we are. I just wanted to show you how you can click that into place. So it's, it's nice and, um, and secure. Then you take your tweezers out, you've got nice, uh, they are nice sort of sharp tweezers. And then your magnifying glass here is sitting on the top. So from above, if you can just see, if we take the tweezers and we want to pick something up underneath, it's just making it much more obvious. I don't know if we go, here we go. There it is. So that's the side of the safety pin. That's it with the magnifying glass, allowing us to just pick that up really easily and simply. And obviously, if it's something smaller than a safety pin, I think we've got some little buttons in here. I wonder if I can take one of these out. It'll be perfect if you're doing beading and um, you've got lots of little beads and perhaps they're scattered all over the table, you want to just add it to a certain section. Let's undo this, just so you've got the button. Here we go. <laughs> so I'll pop the button on the fabric and I'll show you just once more how you do this. So you've got the magnifying glass there and you can just, I just want you to be able to see the difference in the size of the button. Obviously it's on the, let's, hang on. Pop it on a different colour. Sorry. That's it. If we see there, that's your size. You can just see how it's making it easier to see, <laughs> slipping around. And then from there, you can just pick up your button. Oh, here we go. Got it. So, um, 5.45, that's a really sort of valuable piece of kit for your, um, for your sewing room. Uh, JRPH67 is your item number for that one. And again, that's your prim tweezers with your magnifying glass, a four times magnifying lens, and probably slightly easier if you're not trying, I was trying, trying, if you're trying to lift the fabric and hold it and get the right angle for the camera. But I just wanted to make it so you could see more clearly um, how it does make it, you know, much more obvious from with that magnifying glass there. Here we go, the button's slipping and sliding around. Doesn't want to stay still. That's it. Perfect. So, the most popular fabric so far is the 
Let's have a look. The grey one, my favourite. Excellent. Let's have a look at that. Let's open it up. Okay. I'm going to lay this out so you can just get more of an idea of um, how the fabric looks. Sometimes it's nice to see it in a bigger section, so visually you get an idea how, it, how you know how it makes an impression. So you've got this, these lovely little pinwheels here, and then you've got details on your threads of your scissors, all coming out of the, um, the handle of the scissors, and your scissors in different colours, with that darker grey and your lovely creams there. And actually, interestingly, it's a sort of pattern that from, from a distance as we see it like that, those pins actually look like flowers. And what's nice about that is as you look more closely, you can see that it's a, it's a slightly different detail. With your scissors and pins. DULW96 is your item number for that. That's the grey pins and needles. And that's 5.95 per half metre. So then teamed with that, we've got a solids bundle that um, has just been matched in terms of your colours with your threads and also your solids. So let's just pop that over like that. So the solids bundle to go with your pins and needles is this one here. Let's move these. So you've got your um, lovely deep orchid colour, which is just picking out the head of the pins. Then you've got your sherbet and you've got your peachy coral. So you can just see how they all work together. And this bundle here has been teamed specifically to go with the pins and needles. So these three, HOGC46 is your item number for that. And it's a half a metre of each of these fabrics. So a metre and a half of fabric in total there. 945 HOGC46, peach, sherbet and deep orchid in that bundle. So next in the race, which one's next in the lead after our pins and needles? It's the cream. So we've got cotton reels on cream and gold. The most popular at the moment is the cream. So let's show you that one first. Again, this is being cut to measure. I don't know if I've got a box here, but when we send our fabrics to you, if they've been cut off the bolt, they're delivered in a really lovely sewing quarter box with some tissue paper and a sticker um, as they're cut for you. So you can see this one here, you've got really playful cotton reels within the fabric. You've got that stitching detail. And also you've got different types of um, sort of spools and cotton reels. So you've got that lovely um, sort of yellow there, your powder blues, your avocado greens, your nice, bright, vivid, bold magenta pinks. So you could also fussy cut these and add them to little projects. And then that stitching detail and this cross hatching here, which is really lovely. Look, that sort of almost looks like it's been appliqued on. But when you see it on a larger scale, you can just see how those cotton reels all come together. RQLW16, that's your Lewis and Irene threads on cream. And again, that one is 5.95 per half metre. So all of these fabrics are sold by the half metre. They're all 5.95, just some different designs. And this is from the Threaded with Love collection from Lewis and Irene. It's a premiere. We've never had them on the show before. So this is a launch this morning. And what's lovely about this is they're a family run business. Um, they're three generations in. Lewis and Irene were sort of there at the beginning. And now their granddaughter is, is designing fabrics in this particular collection threaded with love, which is also the, the company motto, is really about um, you know, bringing, bringing those things that you would find in a haberdashery and in your sewing room and incorporating those motifs into fabrics. So that's your cotton reels on cream. That's it. Oh, a little update on the needle threader. Oh, a few people are finding it hard to find on the website. Um, so it might not, if you're struggling to see it on that uh, shopping list underneath the live feed, we've just brought it in again on the screen. So if you want to give us a ring, ZBZI91 for our piece of magic this morning with Irene, showing us how you can just automatically thread those needles with different, uh, different thicknesses of threads, but also with um, multiple threads in one go. So you can do two threads, you can do three threads if you wanted to do, um, you know, for cross stitch. And it's only 5 95 which is really great value. So the best thing to do, if you do struggle with, if you ever do struggle to buy things on the website, just give us a ring. Um, it's a UK-based call centre, and they'll be really happy to answer any questions you might have. If you don't have the item number, you can just describe what the item is, and they'll be able to figure that out for you. But the item number is on your screen, ZBZI91, and that's 5 95 for the Italian Infila needle threader this morning. <laughs> 
So our next cotton reel fabric, another premiere, is our set the same cotton reels but on a different background. So this is on gold. It's a nice sandy gold colour and um, that natural feel in the background. And this would team really well with some of those natural linens or canvasy fabrics because it's got that neutral tone uh, to the background. But again, all those different um, reels there and spools. So it's a lovely fabric. It is a really soft one. JQLW83. Let's just look at them side by side so you can see how they also work together. Perfect for your sewing room. You could do a reverse, something reversible here with these two different ones. Perhaps if you had half a meter of each, you could do a reversible cushion, a reversible bag. I think a, um, you know, sort of a hanging caddy for the back of the door to hang over a chair would be lovely in these fabrics. And again, also a sewing machine cover, a sewing machine mat to stop it sliding on your desk or to stop it making a racket. <laughs> You've got those options. Or an ironing board cover would be lovely in any of these as well. So this one here is on gold. This is your threads on gold. This one here is your threads on cream, two different options. But the winner in the race at the moment is our pins and needles. And I'll line this up so you can see. Again, this would work with your thread, threads fabric um, because, that, because that color palette is all the same. But this is your scissors and pins, which you can just see there um, adding those different notions. But when you see them side by side, if you just look, you can see how well they do work together as a collection. DULW96. This is the pins and needles fabric here, which is your grey one. And this is by far, I'm being told, the most popular this morning. Send me a message. What are you making? Studio at sewingquarter.com. What have you got in mind for this fabric? I'd love to know. So we've got one more bundle to team with those cotton threads, um, the two different fabrics. So this one would work with either of these because it's picking out the cotton threads within the, within the design. So this one here, you've got three different um, solids. You've got your mercury, which is a lovely um, sort of, sort of grey blue with a tint of blue. So half a metre of that one. Then you've got half a metre of your vintage blue, which is sort of a duck egg blue there. And then you've got half a metre of your dusty pink, vintage pink. So this spectrum here, half a metre of each of these, and this is called the Cotton Reels Complementary Bundle, just because uh, they're complementary colours to that fabric you can see underneath from Lewis and Irene. LGGC40 for these. Let me just show you how much you get of each. So it's half a metre. So you get, this is how much you'd get of your vintage pink. And the same for your mercury and also your blue. Now to go with that, if you want to finish the, um, finish the family, so you've got the whole collection, we've also got some threads that we've teamed with it and um, that just would go really well, again, with that colour palette. So the thread bundle to go with your mercury blue and pink is this one here. Let's pop those together. That's it. So again, you've got a nice um, sort of slate grey there, which works beautifully with the mercury and also with the blue. Then you've got a blue thread and also your pink. So it's half a metre of all of those. Oh, it's a, it's a, sorry, it's 100 metres of all of those threads and half a metre of those fabrics that you can see on your screen at the moment. So this is your pink one. All of these with a nice sheen to them. And these are from Guterman. So a nice... Um, reliable thickness of thread and also that you've got that high level um you know of, they're very resistant to abrasion so they're not going to be all fuzzy and furry they just are really nice and simple to work with so that's your solids bundle there and your thread bundle and then your other solid bundle option is peeping out underneath let's have a look let's move that if you are having any problems placing orders on the website, please do just give us a ring. As I said, um, it's completely free of charge and they'll be happy to answer any questions you've got. So our other solids bundle was this one here with your peach, your sherbet and your deep orchid. And this is to go with the needles and pins. So again, you've got half a metre of all of these and it's 9.45. Just a nice, rich, uniform colour. A summery feel, I think, with those, um, particularly with the peach and yellow there. Great to add to your stash for your um, binding, for backing, you know, perhaps if you want to have it peeping through on the inside of a pocket. HOGC46 is your item number for that one. 
a metre and a half of fabric in total, and that's 945. And that is to pair with our winning fabric of the hour so far, which is pins and needles, which is this lovely one here on a grey background. A premiere today, we've never had this one on the show before. And let me show you the thread bundle that we've also paired with this. So you've got a peach thread, um, a lovely uh, deep love, uh, purple there, and also your lemony yellow. So those work really beautifully. You can see there with the pin heads on the um, pins and needles fabric. So GKGC85 for the threads in my hand there, 495 for all of those, and your pins and needles fabric, which will be popping up on your screen in a moment. Now, if you've never placed an order with Sewing Quarter before, and um, the first order that you place over $9.95, um, you actually get sent a free sewing kit from us as a gift from us to you. Um, so this is was what I was getting the buttons and safety pins out to demonstrate with earlier. Um, but this is worth $14.95, and we'll add this to your order. It's just a really lovely, easy, transportable sewing kit. I've taken a few bits out of there this morning, but you've got nine different thread colors. You've got um, a, a seam picker. You've got your needles, your scissors, your buttons. You also had your safety pins and a great one to take on your travels, to pop in your bag for any, um, any little amendments that you might want to make, or perhaps if you're on the move, it's a nice, a nice little gift from us to you. So, um, this was the box as well that I'm talking about. These cut to measure fabrics are all delivered to you um, in a box, beautifully wrapped, almost like a present. So inside there's some tissue paper and a lovely little sticker and all of your fabric will be bundled up in there um, as it's cut off the bolt for you. So, let's have a look at, is this, which fabric's still in the lead? It's still in the lead by a long way, our pins and needles fabric. And we also had some different needles. If you bought that needle threader this morning, um, there are three different needle options, um, depending on what size you need. So we've got some embroidery needles, which are a size seven. So these are from Hemline. And in there, you've got lots of, um, you can just see those needles there. So that's for embroidery. Then you've also got, next up, we have got different size needles in this pack here. So this is needle sizes five to 10, you get 20 different needles. A really useful project for hand sewing and um, obviously nice sharp points and a, a small eye, which would be perfect for using that new uh, needle thread that you might have got this morning from in feeler. So that's £1.45 for those. And our last option is the quilting needle. These are a size eight. So again, you've got all of those needles there of the same size and 145 for those ones too, LZGQ29. Perfect. So, let's just recap these Premier fabrics from Lewis and Irene this morning. So three different options, two of them are cotton reels, one on a gold background, one on a cream, and then you've also got that pins and needles fabric, which is in the lead. So let's look at the other cotton reels as I just keep, I keep showing you my favorite one. I need to, I need to show you the others. So our cotton reels on cream, this is a lovely, it's actually, um, it's a very white cream. It's a very clean, crisp background there with that white. Um, and you can just see those different cotton reels all moving through the fabric in different colors. Oh, that's lovely in a close up. You can just see those beautiful reels and how they're all threaded round with your powder blues, your yellows, your greens, and also these nice little stitches there, sort of straight stitches adding that detail. And you could fussy cut these and you could um, you know, add them to different projects. I think a sewing machine cover is definitely, is definitely screaming to be made out of, out of this fabric. RQLW16, again, that one's by the half meter, 595. And if you wanted to team it with the um, other option, you can, you've got it on gold as well. So these work really well together because your reels are the same colors um, or on its own. So this is the other option in gold. So it's a nice sandy um, background color fabric there. So just adding a slightly different feel to it. Where on your white, you've got that crisp, the, um, the sandy gold color adds more of a natural feel. JQLW83 is your threads on gold. And I really must just reiterate the quality of this fabric. It is a really soft, um, sort of lovely thick cotton. It has a lovely feel to it. So you can see those two together there, just how they work beautifully together. JQLW83 is your threads on gold. 
And to finish that collection is your pins and needles. Let's just lift that one up. My favourite one. <laughs> so you've got your scissors and your pins with your pinwheels that we were saying from a distance, from a height or from far away, they almost look like flowers. It's like a floral pattern with a stem with your scissors. But as you go in closer, you notice that it's actually, um, you know, sewing notions, which is really nice. Now remember as well, the fantastic thing about sewing quarter is we only charge one uh, postage and packaging for per day. So no matter how much you buy, um, you know, even if you were buying a sewing machine, which is obviously a really heavy um, piece of kit, it's $2.95 per day and it's capped at that. So if you bought, um, perhaps you bought the needle threader this morning at eight o'clock and then this in this hour you particularly like this fabric, if you add that to your basket, you won't be charged um, postage again. You'll only be, it'll be capped at midnight. So you'll just have one charge of $2.95. That needle threader is on the bottom of your screen, ZBZI91, um, and Irene was just demonstrating that. She's been using it for, for 20 years. She actually imported it over from Italy with her husband, and it is just a really, it really does draw crowds at the sewing shows. It's um, something that people have used, and they go back to use, and they recommend to their friends, and Irene sort of said in the crowds when she's doing her demonstrations, other customers will, will you know, will, will sell it to other people because they tell them how, how great it is and how effective it is for threading your needles. So it just sits beautifully in the top of that little plastic container on the bottom and those two different sliders um, threading through the eye of the needle and you can use it for oval eyes and for round eyes, which is quite unique to that needle threader. A lot of them don't offer, um, you know, the versatility for different shapes of needle. But with that particular one, if you've got an oval or a round eye, that thread's going to go straight through and you just pop the slider across. And even with multiple threads or with thicker threads, whether it's wool or... Um, metallics or invisible thread. It works with all of those and it just slide it across, pull it through, easy peasy, really simple. If you missed that, remember you can catch up on YouTube as well and just see how you use it. But full instructions in the kit. So um, 5.95, give us a call 0800 112 4433 um, if you don't want to miss out on that one because I know we're having a few problems with the um, website. Apparently this means website, that's what I'm doing if you're having problems with the website. So, oh, we've had a change. The cream is now in the lead. Cotton reels, keeping me on my toes. Here we go. So this is our um, cotton reels on cream. And it's a, it's, a, I would call this actually, to me, this is more of a white. It's got a much crisper uh, white feel to it than a cream. Just a, a slightly off white. But those nice um, sort of bold reels and spools and bobbins as well, actually. And the gold option to, as well, on a different color background, you can just see here. Let's see. And you can just see how they look exactly like a real, if I hold one in, they've just been really accurately, accurately copied, but they've got a playful feel to them, which is really lovely. This is actually the thread bundle. The thread bundle that we've teamed with this you can see here you've got your grey, your turquoise and your pink. Just picking out those reels there too. And also there's a solids bundle to go with that where you've got your dusty pink, your vintage blue and your mercury and that's teamed with those cotton reels as well. Now, Tilly Rose is back in this next hour. If you missed at nine o'clock, we did some silk painting, which was great fun. I even got to do some painting myself. Um, but in this next hour, we're doing some raw edge applique. So we're looking at, oh, we've got some gorgeous fabrics from Amy Butler, and we're um, fussy cutting those and adding them to some different designs. So don't go anywhere. We'll see you in three minutes with Tilly and myself for raw edge applique. See you in a sec. Join us on Facebook. Simply search for The Sewing Quarter and like our page for the latest news and more. It's easy to buy the products you see on our shows. To buy any of the items featured on today's programmes, just head over to our website, www.sewingquarter.com. Click on the video stream and you'll be taken to our watch page. Here you'll find the product that is on air right now at the top of the page. Beneath that, you'll find all the products demonstrated in this morning's shows. To add an item to your basket, simply log into your account or register with us. Then you can either check out or keep shopping. 
Remember, our flat rate delivery charge lets you shop all day and check out as many times as you like and only pay once for postage and packing. Only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78. Tune in on Thursday the 22nd of June when talented dressmaker Jennifer Taylor will be dropping in to share with us her sewing secrets. Jennifer's debut book, Girl with a Sewing Machine, is packed with tips, guides, inspiration on all things sewing. Following a successful launch last month, Jennifer returns to give Sewing Quarter viewers an exclusive look at her favourite projects from the book and plenty of advice on how to get more from your sewing machine. We'll also be giving you the chance to get your hands on a signed copy. So join us and the girl with the sewing machine for a fun-filled technique tuning hour on Thursday the 22nd of June at 8am. Only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78. There are many ways you can watch Sewing Quarter. We are live every day on Freeview Channel 78 and online at sewingquarter.com from 8am till 12 noon. But if you've missed a show, don't worry. There are two easy ways to catch up. The first is through our website, www.sewingquarter.com, where we repeat that morning's shows throughout the day. On the homepage, you'll see our video stream. Click on the video to hear sound and see a list of the products that we have shown in that day's shows. The second way to catch up is on our YouTube channel. All our shows are kept on YouTube, so if you buy a product and want to see the demonstration again, you can. Go to www.youtube.com forward slash sewing quarter, where you'll find all our shows listed by date. Select your preferred date, then using the description beneath the video, jump to the hour you want to watch. Then you can pause, rewind, play and skip your way to the bits that you want to watch again. Only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78. Hello, good morning, welcome back. It's lovely to have you here with us at Sewing Quarter this morning. And we're joined by Tilly Rose again in this hour. So we're looking at some raw edge applique, so perhaps a new technique if you've not done it before, or some, some helpful hints and tips from Tilly. Perhaps you have done it and she might do it a slightly different way. So we've got some different fabric options for that. And we've got some gorgeous different, um, well, different cuts. So depending on what, what takes your fancy, whether that's design rolls, fat quarters, fat eights, we've got different designers and different sizes of fabric so you can you know customize that depending on what you need so I'm going to start by looking at these Amy Butler fabrics because what we've got left in stock of these we won't be getting this back in again a really popular designer here at sewing quarter Amy Butler is sort of um, queen of color so some really lovely and um, colorful designs lots of florals inspired by nature and some really lovely fabrics for dressmaking but also for uh, different projects and this works really beautifully with this raw edge applique this morning so this one first is my favorite of the three. This is um, Coco Bloom from Amy Butler. And you've got a really lovely color palette there of your lime greens, your blues, your pinks, your reds, and your khaki greens. And this is the Coco Bloom fabric in bisque. So this is um, from the Bright Heart range. And this is 6.95 per half meter. Then you've also got another colour option of that. So it's the same design, but a different colourway. So this is more, um, it's sort of, it's got a blue and green sort of aquatic almost colour theme to this um, with your slightly darker greens and turquoises. This would make a beautiful summer dress. Again, we're not going to have these back in stock uh, once we've run out of these on the show. So if perhaps you've had your eye on this for a while, we've only got 10 meters of this one left in stock. So this is the Coco, Fab uh, Coco Bloom in Pine. Again, 6.95 per half meter. And then our last Amy Butler is a more traditional floral. So this is on um, a sort of a rich burgundy background, almost a wine-like color um, with some purples and pinks coming through in your traditional flower print. So this is the Natural Beauty fabric in Carmel. And this one is from the Bright Heart range. But you can see that rich wine colors in the background there, which is really beautiful. TMRW24 is your item number for that one. 
and all of those Amy Butler fabrics are 6 95 so as I said, perhaps you've had your eye on those for a while and, and that might be now, now might be the time to, to get it because we won't be getting it back in stock. So we've also got some fat quarters and some design rolls. I'm going to start with the, uh, well, let's have a look at this design roll to start with. This is a Tula Pink design roll, a really beautiful collection here and a great way to have a, a little taster or a snippet of all the different prints within the collection. So there are 40 pieces in this. Look at that rainbow of colour as we go round and all different designs let me show you some different ones so you can sort of see some of the different prints but you've got your florals your stripes some lovely details there in different shades of blues and navies lovely little playful ladybirds there oh let's try and move another one back sort of aztec-y prints then you've got some nice pinks coming through as we move around the roll and you've got some darker options. So great for adding different depth to projects, perhaps for um, patchworking, you know, if you're making different blocks and you want to have, this is a really lovely way if you're cutting lots of strips, that work's done for you. And, and all of the edges have been pinked, so you're not going to get all of that fraying. That's a lovely white one there. Then you've got your ladybirds in red, and then we come around to the other side. We've got lots of different pink options but 40 different pieces. So all different tasters from the collection and all different color options that you could that work really well together as a team, but also you could tie these in with some different solids and introduce those to add some different splashes of color. So 57.95, that's your Tula Pink design roll, 40 pieces in there, and they're really lovely long strips. So, you know, you've got those there, easy to use. You don't have to get your rotary cutter out and do endless cutting and, and, and straight lines. That's all done for you. So there is another um, design roll option here. Um, this is, again, this has got a slightly different feel to it, slightly different colour palette. It's less um, vivid in terms of the colours, but you've got more sort of pastels coming through. So this is your Amy Butler design roll. So you can see here how it would work really well with the Cocoa Bloom um, fabric there. But let's have a look at some of those different designs. So you've got your polka dots as we're moving through in some different colourways. All different colour options there. And sort of mixing and matching those colours so you could, um, you know, reverse those. Then you've got some more um, intricate patterns in some of these other fabric options. Trying to give you a peep of those. Let's turn this around the other way. Then you've also got some reds. So again, you've got your polka dots. Lots of dots and spots in this bundle. Classic dots. So there are 30 pieces in this one. Lovely pastel tones. And let's just look at those. You can see there with those Amy Butler fabrics, how they work really well together. So UFRW53, that's for your Amy Butler design role. And these are lovely. You just, you just want to have keep it in your hand. They're really gorgeous. So let's, let's, I mentioned Tilly, we're going to do some more Reg Applique. Let's go over and get started with that. So we're back. Hello. We've, and we've added the apron, which I love. Thank you. I should have had the apron in the first place. And then <laughs> if I'd have been the filth inks, I wouldn't have been, yes. Not on a new dress. We don't want to do that. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> so we're doing some um, raw Reg Applique. Yes. Now this is my, one of my favourite techniques in sewing because it is so forgiving. So if you are a complete beginner, ideal. Um, but if you're, you know, more advanced with your sewing and you want to kind of, you know, dabble in a few more um, techniques, this is a brilliant way to add uh, texture and then colour, uh, pattern, surface sort of prints and things onto your design. So you can put it into home decor, you can put it into uh, textile art, but equally you can then put it onto quilts. So you could make a lovely patchwork quilt with the jelly rolls that yes. we've got there, um, or, you know, or make up a patchwork with like um, the tilde packs. Um, as a patchwork throw and then add in your design um, using the fabric. So on our previous show, we were talking about, um, you said, oh, I'm not very good at drawing, <laughs> you know, and, and I know with sewing, um, a, a lot of the time people sort of say, I, I don't know where to start with the design because I'm not very good at drawing or I couldn't draw that. Or, it's you know. if you don't have a picture in your head. No. I think that's what you, where you struggle. How yeah. am I going to translate that to exactly. this? And actually, this is a lovely technique um, that you can use your fabric. So they've done the work for you. That's the beautiful designs of, you know, whatever piece of fabric you're using. Um, I'm going to be using in the demo the Amy Butler, um, did you say this? Cocoa Blue. Cocoa Blue. Yeah. yeah. Um, and 
so going back to applique as a technique, applique just means putting two pieces of fabric together. Applying. Applying. Yeah. yeah, you've got it. But uh, most people, we've got on the show um, both options. So we've got bonder wear, but because most people think of um, applique where you put a piece of the fusible um, webbing onto the back of your fabric. So you would put um, a little piece of the bonder web, iron it on the back, then you would cut out your shape. Yeah. And then iron that shape onto your design and go around with a satin stitch. So that's one form of applique, and that's kind of the common form of yes, applique. Yes, so that's one that springs to mind. Yeah, sort of um, raw technique. edge applique is what it says in the respect that when you put bond web, uh, the fusible webbing on, and you go over with a satin stitch, no raw edges are shown. So it's a perfect finish. So it's tightly finished. Yes, yeah, that. Yeah. yeah, and it's got that beautiful satin stitch edging. Uh, raw edge applique is so completely the other end of the spectrum uh, because you want to see the raw edges, you want to see the stitching wobbling off the ends of your design, and that's part of your it design. It gives it a natural feel. You it know, does. It, it makes and it, it adds it texture. Human. <laughs> yeah, but it also adds texture by uh, the fact that you haven't got anything securing your fabric underneath. So you haven't got this bonder web underneath. No. It's just fabric on fabric. Um, and then sewing over the top. If I just take off these and show you the design that I'm going to show, because I can explain a little bit more about. What also, I'm doing. with raw edge applique, over time, that's going to ch it will change slightly because yes, it's it will. not, you know, it isn't completely fixed no, in place. No, so it can. So um, what I've done here is I've used is um, the designs. Thank you. Um, this piece of fabric here, and I've actually kept it because um, I was. Uh, I think it was you and Wendy who said, "Oh, you know, you've got you've got holes in so your fabric." <laughs> Lots of fabric I've, left I've over. brought it in to show viewers just how much you can actually, if I just put this out, this is the half meter um, cut piece. Yeah. Um, and I've, I, this is what I've used for my demo, but you can actually see looking at it, if you look at the um, motifs in the design and the leaves, how many projects that can there go are into. So, if you're fussy cutting, there are a lot yeah. of now, motifs Fussy it. cutting, I'm just going to go over that because we say it all the time and we assume people know what that means. Yes, absolutely. Fussy cutting simply means you get your scissors or roto cutter, whichever you prefer. I, I'm going to use scissors today. Um, you literally cut out whatever design it is on your pattern on your fabric to get that piece of um, particular piece of fabric. So you cut so, fussily. Um, you cut fussily, <laughs> that's a good word. Um, so even though sort of on shapes of flowers, you might not want the whole flower, you might actually want just the green centres. Yes, so you could just take a, a smaller yeah. section. Or you might want, you know, sort of a half of a leaf with a particular design on there to put into your design. So they've done all the work. So it's really, it's a bit like scrapbooking with fabric. You just yes. put it all out and that's you're putting really it back. That's a really great analogy, actually. And, and as you said, I think if it's, if the design element is what perhaps puts you off and you're thinking, oh, I couldn't, I wouldn't know how to draw that or how to create that shape. If you've got a fabric where you've got a, a print that's already done for you, yes, the design and it's has done, done it all work, for you. Exactly. You just take that and, yeah, and yeah. you know, and, and going on, on on that idea, don't think it's just got to be flowers. Um, I, I love flowers, but um, in the tilde, so I've just, just for an example, we've got this lovely print of the deer. Um, um, I think this is called Oh Dear, this fabric. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, I love that. I love that. Um, but again, you can fussy cut it. So you could actually cut around um, part of the design and have just that small piece yes. and add that little tiny design into a picture, into a collage or on the edge of a cushion. Uh, but use the same technique as I'm going to show in a minute um, with this technique here. So it's fully washable, even though you've got raw edges on, uh, you know, showing on your design, because you've stitched it down, it's not going to come away. Um, and I'm also going to talk about how you can secure that using stitch and tear, tear away backing, because I know probably some viewers out there might not have used that before. Yes. Um, so where do you want me to start? Do you want me to start demoing or are we going to yes. just go well, through Yes, so stitch and tear, yep. just talk to me a bit about how that works. Okay. So stitch and tear comes in your little packet. Okay, and what it is... This one here. Okay, I'm going to get this one's been cut, so yours is going to be <laughs> pristine. <laughs> um, it looks like the fusible web interfacing. Yes. Or the interfacing that you would use for dressmaking. So it's a very fine sort of paperweight. Um, it's not fabric, but it's it, it feels like tissue, uh, a stable yes. tissue paper. It's like... Um, 
sort of like the tissue that you sometimes find in the thicker, yeah. you know, heavy stuff. You know the first thing that springs to mind? Go for you it. know those pulled out, I can't believe I'm about to say this. You know when you're in a, um, in a, in a toilet yes, somewhere and know. you have that pulled down, um, what's it called? Like the, the towel that the comes towel up the wall to dry yes. your hands. It feels like that. You see, I was thinking serviettes for a picnic, but, but you're thinking slightly more glamorous. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's probably not a great choice of explanation, but <laughs> that's what sprung to mind. What it is, it's... Um, it's designed to stabilise your fabric. So obviously stitch and tear is, is called a stabiliser and we would use it. So if you do any kind of raw edge applique, you can use it. Mm. You can use it behind um, hand stitching if you do hand embroidery. If you find uh, you don't like using a hoop and your stitches are a bit wobbly and they create that texture, you can put this behind and it just sort of almost calms it down. Um, it's a bit like when you put your foundation of your makeup on and you want that, fur, you know, sort of, firm base that everything else on top will sit on top that's the same so this is your foundation so it's giving you some structure and that's your, your top yeah but the fabric you're going to be putting on top because you're adding stitching um, with this technique is going to be quite textured and all this does is add a little bit of stability behind it gives it a little bit of strength um, I'm using obviously the Amy Butter cotton um, but you could do it with the silk. So going on the silk the show that we had, the yep. chiffon, you could cut. Do you remember the little sunflower? That, yes. Yes. Okay. That bled through. Yes. And I've forgotten to bring it into the studio. <laughs> I apologise. But you could fussy cut that out, um, put a bit of stabiliser behind whatever fabric you're going to, you know, sew that on. Um, and so you'd have silk on top of cotton with this at, at the back. And the reason it's called stitch and tear, I love this because it's just a bit of magic. I, I love showing children this because they go, oh, my goodness, old. yeah. Um, okay, let's do it on this one. So this is my finished design. Um, this is on an old curtain. Um, I had this piece, and I just kind of liked this wavy line just to it add just the design. It just looks like the stem of the It does, yeah. it does. So, um, but if you are doing something, say, like in um, a cushion or a pocket or something, you don't necessarily want the stabiliser, the whole panel. So you just put the panel behind before you start stitching. Okay, and it's designed to literally tear away. So, so out of interest, could you leave this in place? Yes, you can. You could just leave yeah, it you can. if you yeah. wanted to. But if I, if you look at how much I haven't used, yeah. you've wasted that yeah, piece. Absolutely. You might and, as well and if tear you're it going off. on to doing a small design, you can use it. You can reuse that little bit. So all you literally do is um, you get the end. Okay. Oh, that is so satisfying. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a bit like you know when you get your t-shirts. Um, and they've perhaps got motifs on or something, or, and it's been on, done on the machine. Yes, um, and you can sit on the back on the back. sometimes. Yeah, so as I'm pulling this away, um, I should have done it on the other side because you'd have perhaps seen it because it's white on white. But you can see where I'm going around the leaves, and I'm literally just tearing this away. I'm not going to take it all off because you get the idea. But the stitch really does secure, you know, it's, it keeps it yes. in place where it needs to be, where yeah. it's been stitched, and exactly. then you can tear. And it's so the... So now we've, we've torn away the design. This is still quite fluid to mm. work on, but you've got a little bit more stability. If I just turn that over. Um, so you can't see it from obviously the but right it gives, side, it but gives it, it some just gives depth. it some structure. Yeah, yeah it does. And Definitely. then these pieces, for goodness sake, please don't throw them away. Stash, Keep them, them in <laughs> Because if you do something, this is another design. If I just lay that on the top, I'm in the white row. Yeah. Yes, okay. Um, okay, so for these little flowers, these are the same fabric. I just did a different design um, and I, what I've done is I've used the cottons that we've got on the show um, to, with a zigzag on this lovely machine um, to use for my design. So I've used the flowers but I've used the cottons as a, a adding extra texture there. Um, and to do a small piece like that you, you could, could just then use... just put that behind your little flower. You don't need to cover. I did, if I just turn it over and show you, I've actually covered, and what I've done is, you can see, I've put a white bobbin in just to show you. This is where I had it on the actual flower, and then I've deliberately come off on the fabric because, I don't know if the camera can pick this up, but where I haven't used, so this is a flat stitch, yes. where I've used the stabiliser, but this is all bunched with the stitches um, without the stabiliser. So if you didn't have the stabiliser, that's what would happen. Your stitches would all sort of clump together, mm. and you'd get in a bit of a knot. Um, so it just so it actually helps it with evening out yes, it does. stitches yeah. as well. Yeah, it does. And what I've done here is I've used, so this is from our Tilda pack, but uh, viewers will probably know, I use fabric a lot of the time back to front because I like that karma. Um, so More I want the design. Sort of tones, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, but I want the design of the fabric. I just don't want the bright side sometimes because what I'm designing on the... the this is the, the bit that you're this interested in. This is the one in. that I want to pop. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, so that's another little tip. So um, you would then literally just sew on the next piece and keep going. And you'd take off what you don't need. Great. Okay. So stitch and tear, that's the, um, well, that, that graphic will pop up on your screen in a moment, but just a really easy way to add some extra depth and structure and, and, I, yeah, and, and making I'm, the actual process easier as well by the sound of it because it is. of with your stitching. It takes away the focus. It's almost like somebody holding your hand with the, the machine, you know, you think there's somebody else there. Help guide it through. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, just keep it in your stash because it's invaluable. You'll, you'll use it in loads and loads of different projects. It's not Probably just... Probably one of those things once you um, have it, you think, oh, I could use it there. Yeah, could, yeah. yeah. Um, it also, if you do free motion embroidery, you'll use it in a hoop um, doing your stitching but um, hand embroidery I don't think it's just machines because hand embroidery you can use it as well fab yeah great okay so how did we start this right then? okay so with my fabric um, I've just explained how if I just get this here what I've done on this design of this fabric um, my starting point were the blue leaves and all I've done is literally cut out the blue leaves which I've got here yeah um, and then I've pinned them in place but I'm going to unpin them because I'm going to put some stabiliser behind. That was just to bring it into the studio so I didn't <laughs> drop it. Um, right, so I'm just going to work out. I kind of just want to cover my flowers. So let's cut it along here. Can I so you just work scissors? out a rough coverage yep, of your... Yeah, yeah. So I'm just going to cut here. You can tear it. You don't have to cut it. But we'll just use that bit again. And then all you do, um, I've cut out the centre. So that's ready to be stitched. I'm just going to put that to one side. That's so I don't lose it. <laughs> I'm trying to be organised and professional it all rather right than place. dropping everything like I did on the last show. <laughs> <laughs> you, did, you, didn't, you didn't drop anything. I did. <laughs> the camera, Richard was very good, obviously, at uh, hiding the pink, pink ink everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> We're all tidy now. Good. We are tidy. We are tidy. Yeah, Mrs Mop. Right, so all I've done is literally put them onto, um, this is the lovely white cotton fabric that we've got. Um, that's a really beautiful fabric to work because... Um, Sometimes when you're using these really bright colours for a design, you don't you don't want a really fussy background no. because you, you well, you're going to lose. Away from, this is what you want to pop. Exactly, exactly. Um, but also, if you imagine this is maybe a quilt panel, um, you've got some of those beautiful jelly rolls in there. You could actually use all the bright colours around it, um, and then obviously because this is such a bright colour to pop, it'll actually all blend in with you know, the overall design. Well, as well, if it's from the same designer, so, as you were saying about the jelly roll, there was an Amy Butler um, jelly roll. Yes, so those, yes. those designs are designed to work together in terms yeah. of the colours. And, and actually, as you were going through one of the jelly rolls, I can't remember which one it was, it had lovely little ladybirds. Yes. And I thought, two, actually, I'd love to cut out some little ladybirds you and them. you can add them, yeah. really fussy cut round there. So, uh, yeah, no, that'd be perfect. So what I'm going to do is... Um, I'm going to just start, actually, can I just change the colour thread before I get started? This machine we've actually got um, a, as a bundle on today's show, oh, so um, with some scissors. So this, well, Elner is actually our home sewing brand, if you don't know, so all of the machines we have on the show are from Elner. Um, our designers sort of love working with them. You can see it on your screens there. It's the 540X sewing machine, and we've also got some scissors with that. But well, talk to me a bit about why you enjoy using you know, this machine, I have Lee. to say, I've not... Um, I've not used Elna before, um, as in, uh, you know, demonstrated Elna. I, I know of Elna. Um, and I used a, a sewing mach an Elna machine on a previous show. And they're just delightful because, actually, they're so simple to use. If you um, are wanting to maybe update, you yeah. know, maybe you've had a sewing machine for a few years and you just want a few extra stitches, um, they've got a lovely reference library of stitching that you can put into decorative stitching or maybe... Um, you know, your applique, um, what have you. Um, but it's so easy to use, and it's, it's got... I'm just threading up here. We've got this automatic needle threader, which I have to say, I do need in the studio as well. Yeah. <laughs> I've got very focals. And Lots just of needle threaders today. Oh, yes, I know. <laughs> Wasn't that a lovely gadget? It is really lovely. I was just talking um, before the show. Right, just bear with me, because I'm, I'm, it's because I'm stood up doing it. I'm not sitting down. But go. these are the machines, just very intuitive. They sort of... It, they're easy to use, as you said, function, they're very functional. And also you've got lots of options. There are 50 different stitches built yes. into this machine. And we were just saying before um, we came on air that it's 820 stitches per minute. Sorry, just bear Quicker with me. Quicker than I could go. <laughs> I should have just left the blue cotton in. Right, just bear with me one second. Don't worry. Um, it's because I'm not at the right angle. 
I'm just going to have a quick look at the fabrics actually that we've got okay. um, in this show. So we'll come back in a second when yeah, you've sure. threaded your needle. Yeah, no, I'm all Let's threaded. Have a look. So, and we've got that Amy Butler fabric that Tilly was using and we're using to fussy cut. So I'll start with that one, um, which is your Cocoa Bloom from Amy Butler. Now, all we have left of this in stock um, is all we have. We won't be getting it in today. So um, if you miss it, you, you miss out on these Amy Butler fabrics. Um, so this one is being sold by the half meter. Really lovely colours with your pinks and reds there and your blues. We've actually got a beautiful dress that one of the designers made out of this um, oh, in wow. our offices. And it's a really lovely vintage tea dress. And this pattern really lends itself to some of those sort of feminine dresses. So that one is $6.95. Uh, the next one is also $6.95 from Amy Butler. It's the same pattern, but in a different colour palette. So you've got um, your turquoises, your greens and your blues. Again, this would work really well, fussy cutting these leaves and flowers for this raw edge applique. So that one's $6.95. And then you've got a much more traditional floral here. Amy Butler sort of quite renowned for um, her florals and, her, and being inspired by nature in her designs. So this one's on a wine coloured background. It's a nice deep burgundy. And this is the Natural Beauty fabric in Carmel. That's from the Bright Hearts range. Now, we also had some Tilda. You might have seen that Tilly was using that for the background of some of her um, raw reg applique. So, um, and turning it over so we don't have such a bold print. But we've got a fat quarter bundle. So um, lots of different options in here. This is from the Autumn Tree collection. So it's got a really whimsical feel with those classic um, sort of Tilda flowers that we know and love from Tilda. And you can see those autumnal colours there with your rose pinks, your dusty pinks, and your avocado greens. Always popular. Your lovely stripy ones here. A floral. You've got another uh, lovely striped one there with your cream detailing. So all different options in that fat quarter bundle. That's from Tilda, your autumn trees. Then you've also got a fat eighth bundle. So there's three pieces in this one. This is a really great way to have a taster of the collection. And this particular one is the one that Tilly's used. So it's that lovely, um, almost denim colored blue polka dot on a cream background there. Oh, this is fat quarter. I apologize. This one I've got in my hand now is fat quarters. And the other one was fat eight, so apologies, I got mixed up there. So this is um, your oh dear fabric on your greens. And then you've got your dusty purple there with the whimsical flower. So this pack of three fat quarters is $13.95. The one I had here in my hand before was fat eights. Then, oh well, I think Tilly's ready with her needle, we're threaded, we're ready to go. Let's just head back over there then and crack on with that. Thank you. No worries. Let's give you a breather to get your needle threaded. Um, okay, so um, you were just saying about this beautiful fabric. Um, I'm using the one uh, from Amy Butler of this design, but there's nothing to say that you can't cut out, you know, because they're so similar in design, they, they, work, know, together. they work together. And the colours, I'm just going to hold this together because sometimes when... Um, people in workshops sort of say to me, I don't know how to put the colours together. Mm. So although I buy the fabric, would I buy a purple with a bright blue? Because I wouldn't actually wear that together. No. Um, and if you kind of get away from what you would normally put on um, and think of it sort of like a cottage garden, anything's going to go in that cottage garden. So all of these are similar design. So you can use that lovely vintage sort of floral but with a, a, a modern take on the on the design. So don't be afraid to, to mix. To incorporate, to mix and match. Yeah, yeah. But also then you get a, a different feel to it. If you've got a vintage you flower and then you've got a, you know, yeah, yeah. a pop of a contemporary yeah. modern flower there as well. You it's, you're giving it your own twist, which is really nice. nice. Okay, so while um, while you were just over the other side there, um, uh, what I've done is I'm, I've put my machine on a straight stitch. Now, I'm just gonna just show a couple of things on the machine because when I came to it this morning, um, We've already mentioned that it's got 50 stitches. Um, and I stood there and I thought, oh, OK, I'm gone from running stitch. Now I need to go up to zigzag. And actually, the machine was on number 45. Straight stitch is number one, and zigzag is on number 10. So I thought, have I got a troll all the way back? <laughs> then I saw the little buttons at the bottom. So these are the everyday stitches that oh, you would use. Oh, perfect. So you just literally go from running stitch to zigzag, running stitch 
zigzag and you don't have to keep going through the whole stitch and that's real real absolute bonus because if you're chopping and changing doing this technique um, you don't that's want to be scrolling through. absolutely, <laughs> especially if you're on a roll, if you're in that creative yeah, flow yeah. where you're going, oh, I just want to move now to, to exactly. change it, you, yeah. know, you don't want to be and fiddling can around. Can I just say as well with the machine, I'm really impressed because uh, not all instruction manuals are like this, uh, but the instruction manual you get with the book, I was looking through it to, to you know, check um, a few things, um, and I don't know which is the best way to, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to go through the whole book, but I just want to show you this because sometimes if you're not sure with um, feet, when you've got your machine if you upgrade or you perhaps you know your machine didn't have a particular foot you sometimes don't know what stitch to use with that foot and how to yes. you know the settings and in here it's actually telling you which foot which stitch and what you use it for so it's really really helpful um Quite and a I think comprehensive it, guide it is but it's not difficult no so it's, it's not heavy reading you haven't got to sit there and think oh there's three <laughs> hours worth of reading but it's a really good little base to, to just get you as into a reference more than anything it is to just as a reference point yeah, to go yeah. to no but I, I was really impressed with that this morning so I thought it's worth just mentioning and so also you it's can, just it's a very capable machine in terms of it can handle all different it, sorts of yes, materials yes it, it prides itself on handling you know it, right up to denim and heavy tweeds to down to chiffon it, it it will cope with any fabric you've got the option of twin needle and uh dropping your feed dogs so you can do free motion embroidery um and then and an over, there's an overlocking stitch yeah the, there's an overlocker foot with a zipper foot a satin stitch foot your automatic buttonhole as well so you get you know a few feet with them along with all those stitches so it's yeah it's brilliant brilliant so that's on machine. your screen at the moment 449 and you get some free scissors in that bundle with that yeah. today as well so a little cool. bonus <laughs> and your postage and packaging doesn't change if you're buying something bigger or heavier or bulkier it's no, still only 295 really which that is, is big good because i've had to send sewing machines um out or, you know through the post and that's been quite it's a price, lot of yeah well, it's obviously it's a, it's a yeah, yeah. big piece of kit it is so yeah psgc 65 is your item number for that one Okay, so to get started with the raw edge applique, now I've pinned these on. You can keep your pins in while you work if you prefer. Um, I've just taken mine out just for demo purposes, but all I've done is just start at the top of my leaf. I'm not doing um, free motion embroidery, so I've not dropped the feed dogs. This is purely just a straight stitch, okay? okay. And it's a really good technique to get your, um, to get to know your machine. So at the side of your machine, you've got your balance wheel. Okay, now for anybody who's new to sewing and actually thinks, I'm not really sure what that does, this wheel, when your foot isn't on the pedal, um, if you turn this wheel, if I turn it one way and the other, you are controlling the sewing machine, all right? So I haven't got my foot on the pedal, we're not moving, but actually we are stitching at a so slow space. Doing it, so doing if you did hand. no, I was yeah. going to say, you could actually sit there and stitch the whole thing just by turning your balance wheel. So it tells your machine that um, you're in charge of the sewing and not the sewing machine. Yes. The minute you put your foot on the foot pedal, then the sewing machine takes over. So that's also giving you the option to start up or down. Exactly. So and to pivoting and yeah, things like yeah. that. It's but also it, it calms your sewing down. So when you're going around a leaf and you want to, you're almost sort of on a straight stitch, that's fine. Put your foot on the pedal because you can go a little bit faster. When you're going around the curve, you want to just calm things down a little bit. Mm. You have the speed control on the top, this little hair and a tortoise little symbol <laughs> and that controls your speed um, but if you want to take it right down to minimum go to your balance wheel and then like you say needle you're in, in and you're in control so we're just going to use a straight stitch I'm just going to show how let me just get my foot pedal away from the counter that's it <laughs> okay so we're just going to go round now I've got this on a medium stitch if you think oh gosh it's going too fast foot off the pedal do a couple of stitches and you think, no, I just need to pick up my presser foot, turn it round, okay? Now, with raw edge applique, you're going to go quite close to the edge, but you don't have to be accurate at all. It's not like quilting, it's not like patchwork, and where you need those perfect seams like dressmaking. Um, you can go as mad so as you want. So if it went slightly want. off course, it really doesn't, doesn't, matter. doesn't matter. And if you look at that design, I'm just going to carry on sewing while you show. Yeah, of course. But I've gone round two or three actually, times. Even as well, oh, well, I can just show here, but it's not even necessarily that it has to be cut perfectly as nope. well. You know, there are, there are slightly jaggedy edges exactly. that have been cut here. It's not just completely smooth, perfect petals. And then you create those different raw edges, so you can just see it has that lift at the side. But it's lovely how when you take, it It also teaches me, I think, how 
much thought those designers have put into every little section of those designs because you can lift a really small section like a petal or a flower and put it on its own in isolation on a plain fabric and it still says a lot and it's it still it you know it's still very um really bold and eye-catching and and that is because there's so much thought has gone into creating yeah. it it isn't just a simple pattern no, it's you're right and and also i think it gives sewers and crafters the confidence that if you aren't very good at drawing like you have mentioned or maybe you're not very good at thinking does that shape go with that or does that i'm not really sure um you don't have to worry because you're going to come out with something spectacular purely yeah, because the design because of done the fabric that. and the, yeah. yeah exactly so i've gone round now the third time and actually i've added almost like um, a double edge on the end of my if i just stop there can you see how i've gone off the edge like deliberately that. Okay, so I'm going to go on to the next leaf now, okay. and I'm just going to carry on round. So I just... Now, I'm not worried about the mess underneath my flower. It's going to be covered. Okay, so you don't need to have this bit in the middle. I'm just going to take my pin out, because it goes back to my school days. I just can't sew with pins. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> no, going over pins. I have pins. my teacher on my <laughs> shoulder. Take the pins out, take the pins out. Now... The thing I'm going to say as well, if you haven't got your fabric pinned down with Bonderweb, with the fusible, fusible interfacing or a pin, as you sew, this fabric is going to move around. For me, I love that because mm. sometimes um, a design evolves by itself um, just by moving out of sort of, you know, the, the area that I was going to be working on. You can see these two, if I just do that to camera a bit, am I? Oh, it's my hand in the way, sorry. <laughs> Where these have just shifted over a bit, we've got a bigger gap here yes, and a closer and gap, and it's together. moved over. So I'm not going to try and move it back. That's where it's gone. I'm just going to go with the flow. That kind of sums me up pretty much. Oh, don't resist it. Just no. let, it, let it do its thing. Just go. And as you go around the corner, I'm deliberately going quite fast because can you see how it's bobbling underneath? Yep. Take my hand away again. Okay, I'm going to do it with the balance wheel just so that you can see. The more I go round in the curve... Because that extra piece of fabric on top is not pinned down, you're getting this little... Let me put my scissors and show the viewers. Okay, I can get my scissors in there because that's not sitting flat. Mm. Okay, but by letting that go around... So let me just finish stitching. Do a couple more. Okay. Okay, so if I just put my foot up... I don't know if the camera can pick this up. I've now got a pucker here. Yep. But it right. just adds but that 3D. Adds texture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You it, know it, where I'm coming sudden, from. It, it looks, it's <laughs> coming off the fabric, it's lifted. You've got it, you've got it. Okay, so let's whiz round. But isn't it funny how so often I think you can get wrapped up in wanting something to be right? Too perfect. So, you know, you get, I, I could be a bit like that, a bit of a perfectionist. You? you want things to be, you know, you, you have things a certain way in your head. But what, you, what that doesn't allow is for things that might just evolve quite naturally and how, so that fabric just shifted, it's, it's actually created an element of 3D, like lift within the flower. It's it lovely that you might not have known you could create. No. Um, no, and actually because of the design, because you've got this... Um, natural uh, part of the design where it's puckered it's actually lending itself to it looks to the as vein if of you've the actually, it looks yeah. like you've meant you were meant to do it yeah yeah you just got to go with the flow that's yeah. my philosophy right i'm going to stop in the middle because i'm just going to show you how we add some texture around here and then i can zip around here if you um, need to go back on the other way so We've got our little vein that you were mentioning here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go up either side. So if we look at our little design on here. Oh, yes. Okay. Can you see how I've gone on to the actual vein? Just from here. Yeah. And then I've gone either side. So I'm just, just using the same technique. So I haven't changed any of my stitching. I'm still on straight stitch. So I've gone to about halfway foot down, uh, sorry, needle down in the fabric, my presser foot comes up and then I turn the whole thing round. You could do it with the reverse button, but I like to do it this way. Um, and then I'm just coming back the same way. Oh, yes. So if you wanted to add even more texture at this point, you could put some wadding in between. Oh, yes, okay. Yeah, you could, you could do idea. that one. So what would you, once this is complete, in your mind, what yep. sort of projects would you incorporate these into? Okay, so it could go onto a cushion panel, it could go onto the pocket of a bag, you could make um, an actual floral collage and have that um, as part of, um, depending on the background, you could have patchwork background and that, you know, be a, a picture. Off the front. If, I, if I show you something like this, where we've added the stems with the zigzag, so I'm going to show you how to do that in a second. 
um, you can see that you could then build up your picture. Yes. But equally, you could make that into a panel for a patchwork quilt. Cut out your panel, and then you could do your log cabin around it or other blocks you start and to build incorporate a whole picture. it. Yeah, you could. You could. You could make a whole field of flowers if you wanted to. There's nothing you to stop could. you building. No. Nope. So I'm going to do this one slightly different to what we've just done on the main design. I've taken my line of stitching right the way to the end this time. Okay. okay. We're going to come back on ourselves. Yeah, we're going to come back on ourselves. Okay, and I'm just then going to manoeuvre around. So this is uh, because we haven't dropped the feed dogs. There's that resistance when you sew. Um, Obviously, the feed dogs are there to grip your fabric to make sure that you, you know it's it's going to stay stable as you go through. And you add, added bonus with stitch and tear on there. Um, so I will say, if you haven't done this technique before, um, it will feel a little bit odd at first if you think actually it feels a bit tight. Um, if you're going too fast with the machine, slow it down with your balance wheel or take your foot off the pedal and just you know do it at your own pace. But once you've got over that, because um, it's a very different technique to free motion embroidery. Um, free motion embroidery, where I'm keeping the needle in and I'm sort of turning my fabric, free motion embroidery, you would just do this. You would glide. Yes. Yeah? Um, so you're having to work around your fabric. So you're having to guide it a bit more yes. without those feed dogs. But then it's a good project it's a good technique um if you maybe you've just learnt sewing um, and you want to add a little more uh, design into your um, creations um it's also good for younger sewers because actually you know a few uh, fabric stash a few scraps in their fabric stash and they can create their own pictures that are brilliant with younger sewers and it's a good thing for generation what i say generation so and it's like mum or grandma yeah, or granddad with a, can with sit a child or grandchild and, and they can build a picture or they could they could pick out and one could cut and one could sew and Precisely. you can start to especially when when you think about uh, fussy cutting we you know we were just talking about the deer with yes. the tilda um you know they they can build their own picture and once you've got the fabric and also with picture, scraps as well from yes, this, it doesn't got, take a lot. You only no. need this will stop you throwing anything away because it you will. just keep a tiny, you'll keep tiny little sections. And you think, oh, I could incorporate that into, it, yeah, because you can sort of see fabric in a very different way. Right, how are we doing for time? Um, we've got about twenty minutes. 15, okay, 20 minutes, have so I got time to just go around? Yeah, you're just two? going to yeah. carry those. Do you want to carry on with those? Yeah, two? I'll look at the fabric. Yeah, and we'll okay, cool. That's, That's good. Okay, I'll meet you back. Sounds here. good. <laughs> So, and we just mentioned Tilda. We had that oh dear fabric, which is a really lovely one for fussy cutting, um, because it's got um, it's a beautiful little deer in a forest. So let's oh I've taken oh no it's here. Um, so this is the fat quarter bundle with the oh dear fabric in it. So you get three fat quarters in this bundle from Tilda, um, and this is from the autumn tree collection. So to start with, you've got this um, dusty purple there with a nice whimsical flower print. These are all 100% cotton. Then you've got that oh dear, let's turn the deer right, the right way around. So that, as you can see, this is what we were saying that would be great for fussy cutting. You could just add um, a deer or a little duck to your picture. That's on an avocado green. And then you've got this lovely classic spot there in a denim blue on a cream background. And these are all 50 centimetres by 55 centimetres, so three fat quarters in that pack. QZGQ63 is your item number for that one. Now, also, in terms of Tilda, we've got a fat eighth bundle. So there's this one here, which is, this is giving you much more of a taster of that collection with a few more fabrics. So I'll open a couple of these out so you can see. So if you don't know, a fat eighth is half of a fat quarter. So this is the size of each fabric that you'd be getting. So you've still got a nice sizable piece of fabric there for, for fussy cutting. As we were saying, when you have a half meter cut, there is so much fabric. Fat eighths are perfect if you just want to take small sections from the collection. But in this bundle, there are 14 different designs in here and you've got all different floral prints. There's that oh dear fabric again. You've got your flowers. A really nice way to incorporate some tilde into your stash. Nice vintage roses there on that green. That's almost like a shell with your baby blues and creams. Some more florals. You've got your stripes. 
but the color palette here are just all working really well together in that collection and there are 14 so there's 14 different patterns within that bundle um 34.95 for that one fwgq02 that's your autumn tree fat eighth bundle let's have a look Now, we've also got a fat quarter pack here at the front of the desk, which I've not got to yet. This is from Dashwood. Now, the designer was inspired here by um, a trip to New Zealand. So this was taken from, he found some prints in a paper shop. And the prints that he saw, he then incorporated those into the design of the, of the fabrics. And you can really see that almost stamp-like element in some of these prints. So you've got a lovely fat quarter pack here. I'll show you some of the fabrics. And the colour palette here, um, your corals, navies, mustards and peaches so there are eight different pieces in this fat quarter bundle you, that's where you can start to see that stamp sort of um inspiration your lovely different angular shapes here and you've got your a nice floral You've got that, and again, another one where you can see that stamp inspiration on that strong mustard print background. And you've got a more playful one there with your clouds and flowers. And finally, you've got your polka dot on navy and your different square sections there. So that's from... Um, Dashwood Studios. That's the Flyaway Bundle, 19.95 for that one, and eight pieces in that collection. F R A D 93 is your item number for that one. Let's go back to Tilly and see where we're up to. Are you ready with our flower? Okay. We've finished the petals. Yeah, sure. Lovely. Okay, so what I want to show you is before I put this on, this is messy underneath. Yes. All right. It doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things. This is going to be covered. Just all right. So you can see. <laughs> Because I've gone round in a continuous flow, you could, if you wanted to, do each leaf individually and snip off, uh, keep it perfect. Um, but you're going to cover it. So in the so grand scheme of things, it really doesn't matter. Okay, so all I've done is actually cut out. Now, I'm, I've deliberately cut it out if I hold it here. This, obviously, is a very odd shape. I haven't got perfect um, pink edges around the corner. I'm not fussed. I'm really not worried about it. What I'm going to do is actually I'm going to go over it like um, we've got here and on the main one with a zigzag now. So on the edges, it doesn't matter. That's going to form our flower with the stitching. Well, also, as we said, those petals, if they've shifted, they're not perfectly nope. placed anyway. So it doesn't matter that the shape's nope, not. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. I have to say, this must be a more enjoyable way of sewing when you're not, if you're not, you know, strictly trying to make sure everything, you've not got a ruler out. There's a time and a place for that. Exactly. And it's not for everybody. No, you know, Not everybody feels comfortable to kind of go off free flow that, you know, some sewers like that precision. Um, and, that, and that's fine. We all find our own comfort zone, yeah. don't we? But if you want to play with thread and, and cloth uh, in a different way to the you know normal way of sewing, this is a it's lovely a nice way to into try that, it to is. Try that out. It is because once you've done something like this, um, you know, home decor, it's really expensive to keep changing curtains and cushions and things. And sometimes, you know, different seasons, you might think, I just want a pop of bright colour. It's kind of a dull winter, and An you know, you want, or a, yeah, yeah, but you don't want to spend a lot of money. Make yourself a cushion panel um, and using your bright fabrics in your stash and then just even, uh, so turn your edges in, once you, you were saying about a panel, turn your edges in and hand stitch that onto the front of a cushion, an existing cushion. That's totally transformed it. It's transformed it with your colour. Then come the winter, you just unpick it and you've got your cushion back again, <laughs> you know. It's just really quick idea. tips like that. Um, or if you're on a budget, you know, you might not want to actually spend a lot of well, money. Well, like you said, you know. you've just used this on a piece of old curtain. Yes. So, you, you know, yeah. keep things. Yeah. Don't, don't yeah. throw things no. away. So on the machine, we were talking earlier on about how we can just zip from one stitch to another. So um, I'm on straight stitch now. This is yeah. what I've been using. I've just changed to a different colour. And I've got to say, these threads, are so, I love Gutterman threads. They're so beautiful. This is the... Um, Oh, now what uh, bright th I bright think this is the bright thread collection fab because this matches beautifully with this color palette it really does i know we've got other threads on there and they match with the fabric but the one i'm using is, is this and it's just really lovely so i've changed to the purple thread and there's no purple actually in the design but what i want is add another element to the design so again using color into that um finish just introducing it somewhere yeah. else in the other color uh, so i'm on straight stitch i'm just going to zip across here onto the front of our machine. So this is our number one for our straight stitch. 
If we press number 10, you can see at the top here where the display, that went to number 10 um, with the zigzag, and it's on a preset. Um, so if we, um, if obviously do a little check, and if the zigzag is too wide or too narrow, whatever, you know, to your design, you have these little buttons underneath. Uh, this is for the width. So you look at the zero to 50, which refers to the one at the top. If we press it, we've got the light on at the number. Oh, so now we top. know we're dealing with that part That's of the machine. Exactly, yeah, so at the minute it's telling us we're on stitch number 10. Okay. We want to change, uh, go down and change the width. So if we press the little button underneath, you can see it's automatically set at five. Okay. So we could perhaps change it down to four. Um, in the, uh, the length of our stitch, again, press this little button. We're on number two. So let's try it, say one five. Um, we'll just have a test and see what that looks like. So um, what we're going to do is we're actually going to work around the flower, but not on the edge. We're going to go in quite a random manner. So we're, we're creating raw threader. edges. That's yes, the whole, exactly. that's the, the technique. You'll pass your exam. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. I get a sticker. You do. <laughs> okay, are we on a zigzag now? That's it. Okay. Okay. So what we're doing, now that's quite wide. So if I just take that down where I was doing it, so I want it to do a little bit less. Let's go down to three. Okay, so let's see what happens then. And I'm gonna slow it right down. We need slow that down as well. Okay, so you should see, now I'm just using the um, all-purpose foot for this, but you do have a satin stitch foot. And if you, um, you can change again, because that's obviously for applique as well, and, and the style of applique we talked about with Bondweb. Yes, that um, traditional sort. Yeah, but you yeah. don't need to uh, change. You can do it with the, the all-purpose foot. Now, if um, as we're turning it round, you can see, if I do it quite slowly, let's turn this slow right down. I've gone really slow now, just mm -hmm. so that you can see. Flip it up a bit. Okay, so I'm going to come off the edge, press the footer up, and then turn it. Now where we were playing about with the stitching, if I'd use the scissors to show, this is what the preset is. Okay, now that's too wide for what I wanted. I love this tighter one when we get to so this here. let's just snip that away. Yeah, this is where we've changed, and you can see that then mirrors the, the sort of design on the here. The zigzag, yeah. the shape. So what we're going to do now, we're going to turn it in, and I'm going to make a scallop. Now you have got some stitches on here in a scallop design. You might want to just set it to that and let it yeah. do it all for you. Yeah, number yeah. 25. But this is, you know, you're in charge doing it this way. So let's go. We've got about five minutes, four or five Okay, minutes. I'm going to zip along. <laughs> just a heads up. No, it's no, not, not to rush do. you. But. No, no, no. Okay, so we just turn it round again. Make sure your needle's down every single time we turn it around. Now you can see where I'm just zigzagging it all around, there's no sort of rhyme or reason to what I'm doing. No. And I'm actually coming in on the green now. I'm not even going to go on the edge. I'm going around the pink. Okay. Now that's just puckered up, so pop it under the, the, under the foot. Raw Edge definitely has a homemade feel, which I think is, it has that rustic yeah, it does. sort of um, yeah. feel, doesn't it? It does. Now I'm going over the stitching right at the beginning where we started. Can you see? I don't, oh, yes. I don't want that. Um, so I'm just going to go over. And then I'm going to do a double row. So now I've gone all the way around. I'm adding my own. So you know in flowers where you get that shading and all I'm doing, look, is actually just, <laughs> I'm just playing really. It's a good job, isn't it? Yeah. You get paid for playing. Just, it's lovely. Just shimmy the fabric around. So you can see. The machine is so smooth to use, it's just a delight. Okay, so let's go all the way around. I just want to make sure I've covered everything that I said. So viewers are going to go, you didn't finish. <laughs> okay, so let's take it out and I can show everybody. Snip, and I can snip. Okay, let's bring right. it down. So what we've done, you can see it's so random. But by adding that extra zigzag um, element, you've now got in the centre, we've got the pink, the green, the lime, the purple. purple which we've added. Yeah. And, uh, and then obviously the jade green. Now, if you wanted to, 
How many minutes have I got left? Can I do About it really quickly? Three minutes will be okay. Okay, let's see if three I can do it really minutes. quickly. Okay, I'm going to add but just one quickly. No, because of that amount of stitches, there's no fear, although you haven't gone exactly around the edge of the applique, it's not going anywhere. It's firmly, you know, it's held in place by those stitches, even though, say, this edge here is... Yes, it's not going anywhere. attached. No. It isn't going to... No. You didn't, didn't need that bond web. It didn't need to be No. Smooth. Some sewers might prefer to do the bond web, um, purely because it takes away the fear of that fabric moving yes okay um and you know that's fine if people you know want to sew with that then i'll you know go with it if you're comfortable doing that i'm just sort of showcasing how i i do things um but you might find you do bond a web a couple of times and then think oh no i've got it i don't you know i'm all right with it sort of thing yeah. what i'm just doing in these last few minutes i won't do all the way around because i'm running out of time so i'm just going to finish off show all you lovelies out there <laughs> okay very very quickly that the stamen of the flower also. you've got it hmm. you've got it so if i was at home i would probably i'd go all the way around and then i'd either put a little french knot um if if you're yes. a hand embroider or you could put nice. a little bead or sequin or you know a blob of silk paint even yep. or you could put Anything. a button in the middle you could you've got it add, and yeah. then you start to embellish but at the end of the day that's your basic block and then when you're ready to put it in a project you just simply tear away your stitch and tear I love this. That I know. Go on, have a go. That, have that a go. Just so, that's just really satisfying. It is, isn't it? It is. Yeah, just tear it across. There we go. And like you said, we keep this for the yep. small pieces. Yeah, because uh, the times I've been in workshops and people have thrown things away, and look, you can have a tiny, tiny centre of a flower or yeah, just something, and you, and you don't bit. need a lot. Yeah. You know, you've got to keep it, it in your stash. I'm going to want to do the whole thing now. You shouldn't have started me on that's this. That's all right. Go, right, go further around if we've got time. And then in terms of this one, Yes, we, we didn't get around to, to doing this, but you would, this no, is, again, so is that tight stitch that we yes, just looked at, that so tight zigzag that's stitch. That's the same technique as the centre of our flower, but all I've done is a line of stitching with our zigzag uh, to create the stem. And but I've used the threads. The, these look slightly thicker. Uh -huh. Aha, so where I was going, uh, so I was coming down, doing a row, and then turning my work round. I was just going over, so you could ah, do it on a so reverse you if up. you want, but I just went over and then carried on down for the stem. Lovely. Yeah, that's really beautiful. I love those. Thank I think you. in a bag, I think particularly in a bag, these would look really nice as a panel yeah, in a section they would. in the middle of a bag. They or would, they really would. Lots of different options. Well, thank you very much, Tilly. Thank We've you. Had a nice, we've lots of new things yeah. this morning. Silk painting, I Alan Moore, Red Deplique. Yeah. So, full of tips and a hint. Thank so, you. No, it's great. I'm going to look at those fabrics now, but okay. we'll, I'll see you in a moment. All right, done. Thank you, Silly. So, um, just looking at those fabrics that we've had in today's show, loads of different fabric options for you. Um, so, we've had those Amy Butler fabrics. This is the one we've been working with that you've probably seen uh, the most this morning, which is the Coco Bloom from Amy Butler. So, it really is perfect for those um, fussy cutting, full fussy cutting, because you can take those flowers, you can take different elements of the leaves and the stems. And we're not reordering this, we won't be having this back in stock. So we've only, we only had 10 metres of this left at the beginning of the show. Um, ZKRW31 is your item number for that one. And that's 6 95 per half metre. That also looks really lovely in a dress. We've done a vintage tea dress in that before. And it's, it was a really feminine, um, a feminine print that just lends itself to dresses. Then you've also got the same design, but in pine. So it's a different colourway where you've got um, a turquoise background and lots of lovely bright vivid greens and blues there. And actually, you can see they work really well together, where you've got those different colours. Yeah, you could alternate. From, you could take different pieces. And then your final one from Amy Butler was this more vintage feel. Um, and as Tilly was saying before, you could incorporate these. There's nothing to stop you taking, you know, that more um, vintage type flower and incorporating it with those contemporary ones from the other prints. So that wine burgundy background in the back of this fabric there, TMRW24, again, 6.95. So those are all in half meter in increments and cut to measure. So you can order those. If you wanted two meters, it's four units and you can just order as much or as little as you like. Now, the most popular is the design rolls in this hour. So is it the Tilda or is it the Amy Butler one? The Amy Butler. So there's an Amy Butler design roll. So this is perfect for your um, for quilting. Save you doing all that cutting with all your strips and your rotary cutter. So you've got lots of beautiful uh, different colourways of polka dots here, with pastels and lime greens. You get 30 pieces in this. Just want to show you as many as possible. It's just beautifully wrapped up. I daren't open it because it will never look like this again. <laughs> 
but you've got oranges and reds and nice coral colours here. All different options. So that one there, UFRW53, that's the um, Amy Butler design role. Now we've also got a Tula pink option, which is a slightly different, obviously different designs, different colours. This is um, a larger design roll, so there's more pieces in this one. There are 40 in this design roll. Look at that pinwheel of colour. So let's show you some of those. Those lovely ladybirds. This is what we were saying would be that you could add these would look great on some of those floor, some of those flowers, um, if you wanted to sort of build up your picture. But let's just start around here so we can look at different ones. Just showing you some of those different colours. You could have a whole family of ladybirds in different colours. WCRW54 for that 40 piece Tula Pink design roll. Then we also had the Tildas. So you've got a three piece fat quarter bundle from Tilda from the Autumn Tree collection. So you've got that whimsical floral on a dusty purple there. You've got Oh Dear, if I turn them the right way up, with some ducks, which is a beautiful print and then your blue polka dots on cream. That's, the, that's what Tilly used actually in her, one of her prints. And our last Tilda is the Fat Eighth bundle. So you've got lots of different pieces in here, 14 pieces in this Fat Quarter bundle, and a lovely way to get a taster of the collection in your stash. This one is 34.95, but those lovely paisley, different florals, and that with that, your avocado greens, rosy pinks, and some darker dusty pinks as well. FWGQ02 for that Fat Eighth bundle. And tomorrow, I'm back. So let's have a look at what we've got coming up on tomorrow's show. So at eight o'clock, we have got fabulous, fabulously K Facet. So the king of colour, we've got lots of fabrics in that hour. Then at nine o'clock, we've got marvellous monochrome quilt. That's with Victoria Pete at nine o'clock. Then at 10 o'clock, we've got some hot new fabric finds. So some premier fabrics. And at 11 a.m., we're back with Victoria for a crossback apron, which is going to be a nice little project, perhaps if you've got some, um, some cooking to do or some making to do that you need an apron for. So we've got a lovely show planned for tomorrow morning. Thank you for your company today. It's been lovely to have you here with me. And we'll see you tomorrow. Myself and Victoria, Pete, I'm looking forward to cracking on with that apron and also those beautiful new fabrics at 11 o'clock. So we'll see you in the morning. Did you Bye. know there are multiple ways you can contact us, even if it's just to ask a question? Our friendly team are always on standby. You can call our customer service team at 0800 112 4433, email us at help at .com. visit our Facebook page, follow us on Instagram, follow us on Twitter at Sewing Quarter and even message us through our website and our presenters will answer your questions live on air.